It's 13 days since the start of fall, the harvest season, and you find yourself standing on a frozen ocean channel in the middle of nowhere. The bitter wind blows gently southwest. What kind of wind? Carrying tiny snow crystals that sparkle and glint in all directions. There is a light gray overcast, but enough brightness in the air that you can plainly see the old ship, the moribound, jutting upwards from the packed ice. Like a frozen seabird erupting from the water after diving for its meal, the caravel ship projects upward at a steep angle. Its forecastle, bow, and figurehead of a winged woman flying forward points sharply up to the clouds as though the ship is itself trying to flee this forbidding territory. A makeshift camp of sculpted snow, wood, ropes, and canvas tarps can be seen strewn about the ship's perimeter, in disarray. Seemingly abandoned, save for a single motionless cadaver wreathed in violence. The five of you stand similarly motionless, staring unblinking at this ominous sight. Beyond, the clouds stretch to the horizon in all directions. It is a sight you'll remember for the rest of your lives. What happens next is up to you. Did you say we actually see a body? Because you mentioned cadaver. Yeah. Just one body, or is it like bodies littered around? I'd say you're far enough away that you can see that um, there's a slumped figure. Um, It does appear to be one body. Um, and it's sort of haloed by this now sort of almost like reddish but light pink because it's been snowed on. Uh, it's, it's easy to see against the white snow, but um, it's, uh, uh, it's, it's been here for a while. Uh, oh my god, what, 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 what happened? Uh, how could this happen? It's been two weeks. It's unlikely that <clears throat> the men are well. Wait, there, there should have been enough provisions for more than how long we've been gone. Is, is, is that blood? Well, let's take a look, shall we? No, 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 we, we can't get any closer. I mean, it's, it's, this is horrific. We have to get in and see if we can help out any of the rest of the crew. I only see one here. That, 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 that's way too much blood for, for it to only have been one person. They, they're probably all dead. Then what are you worried about? I'm worried about whatever did that. You know, it was probably the dragon that did it. Y- you think? Well, you know, it's been two weeks, and how much gold could have possibly been on the ship, so if they stopped giving it gold, maybe it just ate them. You saw what it did to the captain. Or an easier explanation perhaps could be once the captain was gone, chain of command being weak, some sea lawyer gets a little antsy, riling up the crew, mutiny, leaderless chaos turning on each other, no rationing of the rations, run out of food in a week, turn on each other. Hungry men do desperate things. Either way, I intend to make it to the mainland. So do we go to the ship, or do we head to land? We go to the ship. I'm not going to to not check on our ship until we are certain, now that our captain is dead, we are certain that there's no crew. We have to see if there's anyone we can help. I'm I'm thinking at the very least we might be able to scavenge some rations. I don't know what happened to all ours. That is fair, we can use some supplies. Let us go. Oh, God. And okay. I'll start hobbling. And I'm going to, like, very, like, skittishly follow behind you. Forward. Very clearly <laughs> behind you, hiding behind you. <laughs> you feel the um, snow crunch under your feet, um, and it's, it's unbelievably quiet, save for the soft sound of the blowing um, wind uh, that strikes your face, chilling it. Um, but staying moving does seem to, to certainly help and warm you, and you cross the distance between you getting to the settlement here. You can see that this is uh, was put together hastily and uh, has been... Um, 
it, it's in disarray very much in the sense that they're uh, the what tarps might have been stood up by by simple wood and 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 poles and stuff like that. Uh, one may have fallen to the side. The tarp is you know flapping in the in the gentle breeze. Um, it it seems to be uh, not well kept, so to speak. Um, and if as we look, as I look to horizon to horizon, is there any sea that I can see? Or is it entirely ice? Make a perception check. Ooh. My first roll of the night. But not good. Let me see, let me see. Oh, your perception, eh? Uh, that would be a 12. With a 12, um, and your nautical background, uh, you look out at the horizon, um, you can see the uh, this ice sheet seemingly go off into the distance forever in all directions, meeting the sky, this overcast uh, gray cloud. Uh, uh, gray cloud. You would look just at the horizon to see if there's any reflection against those clouds of blue, perhaps, and you see nothing. We're icebound, at least until spring, if we're lucky. And I'll take my pipe and I'll flip it. We're not on the sea anymore. And I'll go and I'll try to um, try to inspect the first body that I see. You approach the body and um, you... Uh, I, I won't be careful about it. I'll, I'll, I'll be gentle, but I'm not going to be like, Oh, God, is it a zombie? I'm not... Yeah, I'm not going to... You, you, yeah. <laughs> you grab the clothing um, yeah. at, the, at the shoulder and you pull it over and you can see... Um, the uh, very um, dead body of Fenton. Fenton who? Fenton was he the... Person, was he? He's one of the members of One Direction. <laughs> yeah. Um, he's also the dog in that hilarious viral video from like 13 years ago. Um, Fenton, let me just look it up so that I give you the exact role so that we have yeah, a sense of consistency. Roles. I want to say the bosun. Um, it was either... One... I, I want to say he was the bosun too, but I just want I just wanted to be certain. Yeah. yeah I agree. And was there a quartermaster on the ship? <clears throat> I will tell you both of yes, that yes. information yeah. as soon as I find my Ah, he was the bosun, yeah. Fenton Armstead, Mr. Armstead, yeah. you would have called him. And there was a quartermaster, uh, he was Walker Clemens. Uh, he was the other gentleman who was yelling into Tai Shen's ear when it was unclear mm. whether or not we should go directly into the ice or slide against it very rudely. And who was the first mate? The first mate was uh, uh, Mylan, the gentleman who fucked off on the mm. cockpit. Oh, that's right. With the cat? Uh, no, Fenton was the one with the cat. Oh, Fenton <laughs> the cat. Damn. <laughs> Is the cat there? It's Mr. Armstead. <sighs> Mr. Yornier, you mind taking a look to see how he met his end? I'll just sort of slowly nod, and I'll approach his body, and I'll start to kind of just examine him and try to check any signs of wounds or look at his eyes, try to see if I can determine how he was killed. Make a medicine check. Ooh, that's no good. <laughs> eleven. With an eleven, um, you can see uh, very plainly he has is drenched in blood, and it looks like he's been stabbed multiple times. Uh, even with an eleven, um, there are deep, deep gouges um, from what appear to be like one of the short swords or the scimitars that they would have had uh, amongst the crew. And um, it, at the very end, you can see that there's quite a deep gash right here in the, oh. in, the in the neck. Uh, all of it is congealed and frozen. Can I tell how long ago Ooh. it was? Make another medicine check if you're so inclined. That's better. Uh, Twenty-two. Oh, with a Damn. twenty, with a twenty-two. <laughs> yeah, it's a little bit better. Uh, based on how out. pale and um, uh, covered in uh, snow this is, uh, you would guess it would be anywhere between ten and fifteen days that it's been lying here. It was no dragon. He was killed by a man. Desperate men do dark things. If if it was only as if it was as long ago as you say, that 
That's not too long after we just left the ship. That is right. It was a handful of days. You find Mr. Clemens. Any survivors. We, we arrive at the ship, and the first man we see dead is an officer. There's, there is mutiny <clears throat> immediately. Are you ready to fight? I'm always ready to fight, Mr. Ewing. I, I draw the brutal blade and it's like shaking in my hand. You can like see that I'm not steady. If they've turned to madness, you put them down. I'll nod and I'll look at you and I'll say, I'll see your, your shaking hand and I'm saying, uh, I'm sorry to say, M- Mr. Uh, Staviscotch, if we get in that ship, if there's any supplies left, it won't be the brandy. Oh, <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> I wish you hadn't brought that up. <laughs> I'm just trying to set your expectations, lad. Okay, let us leave. Cer- certainly we, we wouldn't have to kill them. We sailed with these men for months. Just talk to them. Do you see what they were capable of doing to their fellow crewmates that they also sailed with for months? We encountered an object on this island that took two weeks from us. We have no idea what happened here. Something weird could have come across this place. It's the violence and hatred of men. This does not surprise me, and I've seen it before. Mr. Fire Blossom, I have sworn to fulfill my duty as a cook and an officer on this ship. But I have seen what hunger and cold can do. A good friend of mine got wintered on an island north off the coast of Mamut. All they found were pieces of them. All of them. Now, I don't want to pretend like I know anything about ships, because I don't. I'm from Prairie Mountainous Area, so this is not my forte, but I don't think we should be hopping to any conclusions. What I'm going to say is, for all we know, Mr. Boson here was the one that started the trouble. We don't know. Maybe he's the bad guy in all this. Maybe he's not. But we gotta ask questions and we gotta investigate and see what we can find out. But I'm, you know, I'm I'm with Tasha here. I don't think we can just assume we know what's going on until we talk to someone. And all we've seen so far is one dead body and we we're missing two weeks, so. I didn't sign up for any of this. <laughs> Speaking of missing two weeks, do you think this means we have to go back to prison? What? What? Prison? You, 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 look at where we are! Well, Tyson, the- you're, you, you're crazy! Well, we're stuck here! I, I almost prefer the, the Golden Egg compared to this! Well, but the, that's what I'm saying. There's no way we're getting to where we were going now. We're gonna so- starve to death! And you're worried about getting where we need to go? I'll make well, sure you don't starve to death. As long as there's animals roaming around, I'll find them. I'll hunt them down, and I'll... Well, Barnabas will cook you food. Have you ever thought about changing your name to Barnabas? I know it's kind of weird, but it's a thing I like to do sometimes where you take a name and you change the way it sounds just to make it interesting for a while, especially if you're getting bored. I like anyway, my name. now's not the time. We'll make sure you've got food. I can't get you a drink, though. <sighs> I start. You hear the sound of wood creaking. This ominous, huge ship shape, pointing at maybe a fifty-degree angle, straight Jeez. up uh, into the sky above you, and uh, it helps. Uh, uh, it just interrupts your 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 hyperventilating a little bit. <laughs> all right, let's all calm our nerves. We're going to go see if there's survivors. Save who we can. If there are mutineers, we'll be ready to fight, but not jump to conclusions. And we'll see what supplies are left, and we'll see the integrity of the hull if it's not sm- smashed to splinters below the ice line already. See if there's any hope to salvage this thing. Then you lead the way. All right, I'm with you. And I'll, uh, with this, I'll actually grab the, my anchor and, and just hold it ready for anything. 
or at least calm down. <clears throat> so you are getting onto the ship and into the ship. Yeah, my intention is that finding the bosun, we need to basically survey the area and then deal with whoever's dead. Okay. Once we're, we we see survey the area and, and and make sure that it's safe. I would say you smartly go around the perimeter and you yeah. can see that the um the ship was obviously when it was icebound only at a a slight angle and so. Seemingly in the time that you had left with the captain, a perimeter had been created. Um, now, uh, a good section of the perimeter is um, uh, dug down a little bit, where you would be able to jump onto the surface of the ship oh, if wow. uh, you needed to climb aboard. Um, wow. It's that low uh, at this much more extreme angle, having been had so much time. Uh, but there's no bodies around. You don't find any additional bodies. You find um, more of the same. Uh, just uh, rooms to stretch legs, um, just perimeters. Uh, some some snow's been like bunched up, what appear to be being used for seats. Uh, you can see what would have remained of some campfires and stuff like that, but there don't seem to be very many uh, instruments or anything like that. It seems that the structures that they put up, these um, uh, uh, haphazard tents and and coverings and stuff like that uh were um left to fall apart do we do we see anything that looks like uh looks like a, a scuffle may have broken out like maybe any kind of like cut in the wood or like like rope that was cut like cracked anywhere that looked, like maybe if it was distinguishable from like crash damage make an investigation check <clears throat> That's what you meant by. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I got this four, um, <laughs> five. It's been seemingly more than two weeks since you left the ship here, and so it's impossible to find anything like tracks. The only footprints you see are the ones being made by your friends and your companions. Mm -hmm. Um, <clears throat> the Exterior of the ship looks surprisingly unmarked. Uh, you don't see any arrows sticking out or anything like that. There aren't any gashes as if somebody, you know, hit the wood and uh, intent to hit somebody and then pulled it out and continued. Mm -hmm. um, there's no, like, large or even small-scale battle marks that you find. Um, but maybe you're not looking for the right thing. Mm -hmm. All right. Let's get aboard, shall we? And I'll, I'll fall behind my most. I would ask that you simulate this with your um, pieces. So, <coughs> where's the, um, so this one, right? this, the? I'm gonna pull up the rear. The easiest way, because so this is now very down and that is now very up so we'd be at this extreme right? angle, is that you would jump on to either this platform or this platform here. Probably quarter deck. Quarter deck. Yeah. Battle map. Battle map. Here we go. This is for context. It's the whole ship here. And this is the top deck map. So for it, we start climbing. I, I think this is an important point, uh, Henhanska, that I would mention to the audience in general, is that none of these adventurers have arcane focuses at this time. Um, so they are running entirely via material components. You make your way into the surface of the ship, and that same creaking... Uh, 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 it happens under your feet before finally settling. Uh, it's slippery, and because of the verticality of this ship, between the fact that and the 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 moisture that has frozen to the surface of all of this wood, it would be considered difficult terrain. Uh, let's stop for just a moment. I want to right. check something, if y'all don't mind. And I'm going to have my bees swarm around me, Ooh. and I'm going to like crouch down and listen. I'm gonna, I want to use primeval awareness. Ooh. And I Whoa. want to, it will let me know whether there are any aberrations, celestials, drag dragons, elementals, fey fiends, or undead present within a mile of us. Ooh, within a mile. Within a mile. Oh. <clears throat> you um, focus on 
uh, the magical energy within you, and uh, bees from out of nowhere suddenly emerge. The, oh, my suddenly pot. skipping. Oh, they come from the honey yeah. pot. Okay, they 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 crawl out and up out of the mouth of this pot. You're all witnessing these uh, uh, bees. These appear to be um, thick, big, fat carpenter bees, and thick, they immediately. Big, fat. I love it. Yeah. They immediately, uh, uh, and it can be different bees depending on your needs, um, flavor, flavor wise. But these bumbles uh, immediately bumble zip. Um, some go uh, uh, around and over out the the the, the ship's uh, sides here. Um, some seem to go down and in. Uh, others travel off to the horizon and search for you. And you stretch out with your magical energy. What are the varieties again? They are basically everything Let besides humanoid right beasts and monstrosities. Aberration, celestials, dragons, elementals, fays, fiends, or undead. You all stand for thirty seconds, forty seconds, watching Queenie concentrate and seem to be getting data points from her magical spirits in the form of these bees. Your eyes flutter and you realize you've detected nothing. There does not seem to be any of those variety of monsters or creatures in uh, the ship or within a mile. And I would even go to so far to say it's like it's a sphere, right? So beneath you in the sky, mm-hmm. all, all of them. All right. <laughs> well, the bees say it's all right, at least against some things. So you can continue, Barnabas, if you want. All right. Thank you. Bees, and I will. Uh, <laughs> I'll, uh, I'll let them all go back into my honey pot, and I'll stop. I'll them. raise my You, you say thank you, and it's sort of. <laughs> they spell. You're welcome. <laughs> and then fly into my honey pot. Oh, yeah, that's mighty impressive. Uh, all right, let's keep your wits about you, lads and lady. Where do you go? What oh. do you do? So, um, I think I would basically, if we look and we see that basically on the top deck everything is good, we would go to uh, the lower deck. Make a group perception check real quick. And I would like to, while we're looking, I want to look for uh, any arrows lying about or any bits of rations. I want to keep my eyes open for those. You said perception? Seventeen. Twenty two. Eight. Uh twenty four. Twenty four. Oof, not good. Uh low. Probably ten, but let me check. Perception? Yep, ten. You all start making your way towards the entrances, these steep stairs coming down. Um which I can't see because of uh, yeah, the, uh, the camera queen, queen being where she is. No, 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 that, that, that's fine. Uh, yeah. I can use the, the screen. So, oh, it's because it's there inside, right? So yeah, you, you start, you have to start making your way up. Um, but you you glance behind you, uh, and you see that there appears to be in the uh, captain's door um, at the very top, at the base, exactly right. You see in the captain's door there appears to be a knife and a flapping piece of paper gently fluttering in the wind. Wait, wait, there, and I'll point. You all turn and it's plain as day. There does appear to be some sort of parchment uh, uh, dug right into the door face itself. I believe perhaps some sort of note for us or other crew. I mean, to be fair, it wasn't really a wise decision for the captain to leave the ship and the crew out here in the snow just to travel with us, but I didn't want to be the one to say it. Let us check. Could be them leaving a note for us to find them. We will see. We can only be so lucky. We'll grab it. Um, we'll climb up here. Yeah. Okay, uh, so which one of you grabs it? Uh, I guess I'll, yeah, I guess I set up. All right, so, uh, and when, up. Do you, when you do, do you pull it down free, or do you actually pull it, uh, uh, the, the knife I would have, out? I would have grabbed the knife, pulled it out, and then and then read the letter. Oh, shit. <gasps> oh! Yes! I love props! Yeah, hell yeah. And you got a lot of listening to that dagger hole in it. Oh. I'll uh, look at the knife. Oh, he wants his dagger. It's yeah. like a steak knife. It's a dinner knife. I'll just throw it on the deck. <laughs> Cat, Captain. You want me to read that for you, Barbos? N- n- 
<laughs> Not at all. You've got those cook size. <laughs> Captain, no reward is worth this. The ship is gone. You're gone. We're gone. Five days. Fuck off! It's sorry. Right. It's all caps and underlined. <laughs> We're headed north to find safe passage. Don't follow. See you in the nine hills. Well, I mean, that sounds like they're not all dead. Is it sign by anyone? No. I mean, I don't know why they would have killed someone before they left, but I mean, clearly we know where they're headed. I mean, who knows if they made it or or, or how far they got. But, you know, I mean, that's why they're not here. And, you know, it could just be that Tashi was right and we don't really know what's going on. And the bosun put up a fight and said, no, we should stay and wait for the captain. And they didn't want to. And I don't blame them. The captain just left. I'd have no faith in him either. Perhaps the bosun felt that it was mutiny and chose honor over living. That's awesome. Well, do we do we try and follow them? Um, they're looking for passage to the north. Where I mean, that sounds like survival. Here. Well, that is the direction we are going. Our, so our best bet of surviving is more people. More people to hunt, more people to help build shelter, more people to, you know, travel and scout and do all the things that we're going to need to do. More mouths to feed, though. They are none of my concern. Are we some of your concern? Yes. All right. If they... If they executed a mutiny, killed the bosun, a man who was trying to keep the order of the ship and they are far gone they're all implicit all right <laughs> well, what are you suggesting I'm saying that they are no longer our crewmates well I think you have to think about it from a different perspective though Barnabas the captain left them to fend for themselves and went off into the darkness. The captain shouldn't leave a ship, right? I don't know much about shipping or seeing or whatever, but shouldn't the captain have stayed here to make sure that he was captaining for his crew? After two weeks, you can't trust the captain's ever going to come back. The boy murder Mr. Armstead. You don't know what You happened. don't know if Mr. Armstead was the one who was trying to murder one of them. They might have been true. they might have been defending themselves just like they was when they left. Keep working through this mystery, I'll be right back. No, oh, I was just gonna ask you a question. I'm sorry. It's fine. <laughs> All I'm trying to say is we're trying to solve a problem, but we ain't even got half the clues. You guys might have the answer. Was this note pinned to the captain's door? Yeah. Yes. To his quarters. Okay. Well while this conversation is happening, I'm gonna try the door and I'll wait for Derek to get back. I'll I'll take this because I'll, I'll, I'll grab it from Scrim. I'm going for his private stock. I want to see if there's any booze <laughs> left in there. Amazing. While well, you guys are talking, I'm just gonna like try the door. But five. So is there go? Is there any reason we need to go after them? Or I guess Please. what's next now? I don't think we have to go after them. I think that that's just the way that we need to go to survive. I'm. With your near, they're not really my concern. But if that's the direction we have to go to survive, we have to do it. And if we see them, we see them. But we shouldn't get involved. They're not our problem anymore. Uh, did we know... I feel like we know of a dwarven kingdom that's around here. Is that true? Am I misremembering that? There's something like a dwarven there, kingdom in the northwest? There, there is a dwarven region to the north west, but we are on the northeast side of Drakkar, I believe. No, we're are on we the southwest side. Yeah, we're on the right. we're on the bottom of the oh. We crashed on the bottom of the Oh, island. yeah. We are... If you, I think uh, we're just on the southern tip. But there, like, it's far north, is what I recall. Um, yeah, I can kind of draw it based on my... Didn't Derek draw it? Is, is the drawing... I think well, he's not, let's I not think go he, behind his yeah, DMs. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, DMs take What's he got class. over there? A map of yeah. everything? But my understanding of what Trapar is like, right, is that it's sort of like this, with some islands there. There's like two islands here. So it's kind of like, I don't yeah. see this. Yeah. But sort of 
we sailed down this way, right? And then we went through this strait here. Oh, and so we're I think in we're somewhere strait. here. Oh yeah, they're strait. literally crossing the entire continent. And so yeah, if I you want to, if here. you want to show people, oh no, they're on the northeast side. Trying to show my not, I'm, sure I'm, I'm trying to show. They're on the northwest sure side. They're on the northeast. Apologies. Put your hand behind. I didn't. It. I didn't understand. Here. I didn't so see my cardinal directions. The dwarves are to the north. Anyway, like this is the shape of the of the continent, yeah. and then we kind of came down here, <clears> yeah. and we're I think we're somewhere down here. How do I know that? Was that was that in the session? Was that in like the first session? What are you asking? There's a. Remember, at some point, it coming up that there's a dwarven kingdom on Drakkar, like in the north, or a, a oh, dwarven. I think that in casual conversation, it's well known that there's on the eastern side, eastern. northeastern, there's uh, an archipelago that that tails up slightly from the actual landmass mm. that is Drakkar, and that there is indeed a sizable kingdom of dwarves there. Mm. While uh, my companions are debating what to do over this note. Uh, I seemingly forget my fear, uh, realizing that this note was on the captain's door, and I attempt to walk into the captain's uh, bedchambers to see if his private stock is still there. You open the door, it's unlocked, and you are able to, holding on to things to not to keep from slipping, uh, you're able to swing around and get in through the uh, captain's door, uh, which also appears to be unlocked. Mm. And sure enough, there appears to be Almost no bottles in this room, save for two in the bottom right corner. Oh, done. Uh, I go through my uh, belongings, and I, I notice that uh, these two bottles very conveniently fit where my missing rations used to be. <laughs> sure, sure. Uh, they're two small items, so they each take a slot. And uh, it, it appears to be, you can't quite make out the, it's written in some Wuzayan script, uh, but it's some clear spirit or alcohol. Uh, this will have to do, and then I will just continue to like loot his bedchambers, just just tearing everything apart the best I can. Make an investigation, and seeing check. what I can find. Sorry, you're good. Oh, Natty twenty. Hey. Oh, uh, so my investigation is gonna be pretty good. Just kidding. That's uh, twenty-one total. Uh, 21. <laughs> uh, you start to it's lift up bad. mattresses, you're pulling sheets aside. Everything was very much in disarray, as if somebody had combed through here before. Um, clearly, uh, there's a lot of uh, uh, disrespect going around for the captain at this point. Yeah, and, fuck that guy. Um, chairs are turned over, but you do open uh, uh, the captain's drawer just to see what's in there, and you find a few navigational instruments, like a sextant, that sort of thing. And Ew. <laughs> yes, uh, it's bastard. when you you can look through it and you can judge from where the sky the the Does star it have is, a label on it? Uh, and then you can bang while you. While you <laughs> Does, he, Does he have vibrating <laughs> gloves in the, in the drawer? <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. All what the about places we go. Uh, tossing, tossing aside the vibrating gloves uh, and, the, and the ring of the rooster. Yeah. Uh, underneath the sextant, you find uh, five Ew. pieces of parchment and. And uh, a quick glance at the title, uh, these are the contracts that the ship took, uh, the ship captain took out uh, on each of your names. This appears to be the Wuzayan prison agreement um, that he would have had to sign and turn over in order to get you back into prison or to free you at the end of this journey. Does it appear, if I scan them very quickly, does the legal language to me sound like if I burn them, we're free? Hold on. Make an intelligence check. Zach says vibrating a movable rod. <laughs> that's pretty good. How, that's a little bit of a contradiction. Yeah, that's not that possible. Well, you can't move it back and forth, but it stays there and it just vibrates. With a 13. With a 13, eh, you claws, claws, it's getting smaller and smaller, fine in print. Party the first part. Yeah, you, you think that probably if you burn these, you'd be free? I shred them. I tear them up in my hands, I shred them, I, I absolutely destroy them, and I start maniacally cackling as I do it. <laughs> <laughs> yes! We're free! We're free! How I've done it! How would you make that noise? <laughs> So this is a trick every day. Is this know. fucking magic? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and, I'm, and I'm tossing the confetti in the air as I'm, as I'm shredding these parchments. Yes, and we're free! Uh, tiny, small little bits of paper float no, down. No, answer me. I will, I've I done will. it. I've saved every, us. Anyone can do this, so take a piece of paper if you want to. You I hold, you hold the both these pieces of paper close to your mouth, and then you blow down so that the air gets split between the two. 
like that. Oh. And then if the if you hit it at the, just the right angle and do this at the same time, it's extremely convincing. <laughs> I just, I can't. Isn't that great? Like, this is freaking me out. I feel like I'm watching a wizard. Thank you. He is a wizard. That's so cool. The um, bird flies away. <laughs> God. Uh, no, as best I can do with the angle that I'm at, I'm dancing in a circle and I'm, I've made confetti. You're like running in place because you're like at a 45 degree <laughs> angle and uh, you do a little Fortnite back and forth and then you join your friends. <laughs> <laughs> ah, ah, I saved us. We're saved. We're free. What do you mean? You found a way out of here. No, even better. I found the contracts that the captain took out on us to get us out of prison. I destroyed them. We're free. We're never going back to that awful place ever again. Oh, that's great news. <sighs> and I found some booze. Wow. Is it good? I don't know. I, I figured I'd save it in case things get really grim. Well, I guess there's a reason why they didn't take it. I guess you're right, but it's better than nothing. Well, it'll be good to have if one of us breaks a leg or we get a massive wound or something, we need to clean it. Hmm. Yeah, that's that's good too, I guess. <laughs> well, I, I suppose that even if we do find our way back to civilization and don't die out here in this frozen waste, then we can return to Wuze. No problems, no questions asked. We can go anywhere. Why just Wuze? We can just... We can go anywhere. We need to survive this first, though. Right. Is there anything else of value? Any other clues that you found, Mr. Stabuscoach? There were some navigation tools that I don't know how to use. I don't know if that would be useful to either of you or any of you. Honestly. <laughs> Not to me. Not to me. I just steer the boat. No. I use these stars. I use bees. Downstairs? That's what you use? In <laughs> <laughs> a matter of speaking! In a matter of speaking! And uh, I'll, I'll continue on. <laughs> it's about, it's about mid-morning. Um... And uh, you start to make your way finally now down these uh, st uh, steep stairs. It's it's extremely difficult, uh, given how slippery they are. They are you you constantly have to find yourself making sure that you have all four of your feet and hands on uh, a, a, a solid surface before continuing on. You're you're extremely slowed down by this strange thing, but you are able to get down uh, an additional level. Thank you, Agent Gimbal. Thank you. We hey. got a hey. 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 Thank also you. 166 hey. bits. Thank you for the bits, everybody. Thank you. Thank you, Thank Thank you, you guys. Thank you. Yeah. Um, I'm not done with Um, <laughs> Let's do it. Let's let's moan on camera. Oh, I like that. <laughs> Just rim it. Ah. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for the tweet. Where, so what's on the second level again? Would this be where the galley is, or is that all the way down? I don't remember. Galley's on the second is. level. Or, yeah, is on the... Uh, but, yeah, there's an eatery here. It's on the lower deck. Um, there's stairs up and down. Uh, this used to be a bunch of um, uh, hand Oh, wait, no. And... The galley's here, right? No, that's the... Oh. That's the... Um, that's like the party That's an additional room, eating right? area. Yeah. The, gal the, the galley was back there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, somewhere. So there's there's actually three eating areas, hmm. um, and one of them was for cooking. I think this one was cooking. This was for cooking. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, you make so your way down below, here. below us. And uh, hammocks are missing. Um, the ropes that had tied down so many barrels uh, are uh, loosely thrown down onto the floor. Most of the barrels are gone. You can see that there are four barrels that have rolled to the back. Uh, uh, left haphazardly. Um, it, it looks like this place has been looted. What do you think? We should split up. We can cover more ground that way. I'll check our supplies. I think I know what we had when we left. We'll see if there's anything salvageable left. Oh, let me know if you find any hot peppers. I'm looking to try a new tea recipe for tea. And a, and a, and a hot I'm not sure if there were hot peppers on this ship, 
there you you're from Yulong. There were uh, uh, and these were Yulong Wuzeans. Is ghost peppers. Yeah, you've got you you would have had if you can check the space where that you remember them being. Um, there would have been these very uh, uh, long, angry looking um, yellow peppers that That's were exactly extremely the kind I'm extremely looking for. Spicy. I will keep an eye out for those, Mister Flyer Blossom. Of course, the 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 peppers I've been using in my cooking this entire time. <laughs> <laughs> when they asked for it spicy, you knew it. Exactly. Exactly uh, right. Leave the seeds in, exactly leave right. the ribs. Yep. Um, you you want us to split up? Uh, where, where, where do you want us to go? I, I mean, yeah, chances are good we're all alone here, so I, I could probably be all right by myself. But it seems kind of foolish, don't you think? <laughs> are you afraid of of a starving, shivering crewman, a human? Yes, yes, I am. Did you see the corpse out there? Well, they said they went north. That's what I'm hoping. Well, I think that all that's left here is 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 corpses and the rats. It is unlikely anyone is left. We are alone. Are we going to sleep here tonight? I don't think we have a choice. Okay, good. <laughs> I will check my surgery room. And I will <clears throat> see if you can find any medicine. Continue downstairs. I already know you're going to send me all the way down into the pit. (laughs) Should I just go down there now? (laughs) No, Mr. Yornier is coldest down there. Why don't you go? Oh, thank God. (laughs) Why don't you go on up to the bucket and see what you can see out on the horizon, since that's what you're familiar with doing. See if you can see any tracks through the ice. See where they are. Is it too late for me to take the bottom of the boat? (laughs) Yes. (laughs) Okay. I will start to make my way back up top. <laughs> uh, and I'm like dragging my feet as I go, very dejected. Put yourself where you want to investigate. Yeah, where, I guess somewhere, I don't know. Uh, somewhere here, yeah, the bucket's like here. And I'll start, when it's my turn, I will start climbing. I will, you know. I just be where the most. I guess if these would be the most of the foods. The foodstuffs would be in the. There, down here. there would have. You remember that uh, large. This was like more than precious number. cargo, right? And, uh, and yeah, more precious cargo, trade goods, that sort of thing. Yeah. In the in the um, room where the folks slept, uh, there uh, were four barrels that you could find on this particular floor, um, uninvestigated so far. And then uh, if you go down there, you can see that crates have been taken, hogsheads have been taken. There are very few items, but there are a few. And so if you're investigating, yep. make an investigation. Yep. Tweety, where are you going? Um, I'm just basically going to hop all over the ship and I'm looking for a handful of things. I'm looking for arrows or like uh, excess wood that I can use to make arrows. Um, I'm looking for rats that I can kill in case we don't find food and we need to eat rats. Um, and I'm looking for anything that looks like it could be used to make blankets or coats or tents or basically fabric-y things. Okay. Um, and I'm gonna pile them all together, probably, uh, near, probably in this area. This is where I'll bring it all back, if that's not underwater. Yeah. Okay. Uh, position yourself there. You start going through and looking for things. Make your own investigation check. All right, I will. Well, I'm not going to find shit. Barnabas, what do you find? Investigation. That'll be an 18. With an 18, um, you immediately go over, to, and, and you're familiar with these barrels now, having having spent so much time on the on the ship, yeah. uh, and and you have a, a, a nautical memory for this sort of thing. Uh, you pull open a hogshead barrel, and you see that it is uh, entirely oil. It's very cold, so it's almost totally congealed. Um, but this appears to be like fat for cooking. Uh, you've got another mm. ba- barrel. You open it up. Um, oh, yeah, this is. This is the vinegar uh, that you that you might use for various purposes. Um, as you're lifting up uh, things and just sort of moving them around, it's slow work, but you are able to find uh, four fish in the corner, uh, uh, red herring. You find one hardtack biscuit. Oh my god, that's one. You find a bag of flour. Oh, okay. Uh, there's salt, and you do in fact find. One Yulongi's yellow pepper. This is Tomb Raider music, isn't it? No. It sounds Dun like Moro it. from World of Warcraft. Oh, Elwyn Forest. So, so this oh, is Forest? this is the thing that that general area yes. literally sounds like they ripped off Tomb Raider from the first and second game. Mm. I love those games. Um, 
You do find one is this uh, angry looking pepper. It looks like a witch's nose, like a caricature of a witch's nose. Uh, and I, as I'm doing that, I'll, I'll just basically be kind of grumbling to myself and like, cursing the mutineers who stole everything while everyone else searches. Twelve. Twelve. Well, you do remember where the wood was because you were working on the sleds with mm. Ellis. The wiener boat. The, the <laughs> cock boats. Um, and not a, not a cock boat, sleds. Uh, and you were originally going, when you open the door, um, your heart sinks in terms of, oh, I remember now that there, there, there were going to be sleds. Most of the wood seems to have been used to build perhaps many sleds. Mm. And there's a lot of scraps. You can find quite a significant chunk, a, a bundle of, yes. of of wood. In fact, nice. another arm's worth of bu- bundle of wood. You find you find. Uh, where I have it written down. I totally. Well, thank you for down. the follow, Shaka Flocka. Thank you, Shaka Flocka. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome. Uh, you find enough wood for uh, what, five nights of worth of campfires or for the purposes of making arrows. Perfect. How many slots of inventory would this take up for me? Each of them would be... Can I... Like one bundle of wood? Uh, well, the way that we were thinking about it, like if you ever go to uh, like a campsite and they, they give you that like orange netting yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, thing, yeah. uh, it's not a small item. Each one is medium. Each one would take two slots. Okay. I'm going to just drag them to the communal area where I'm hoarding all of my stuff. Okay. Uh, as you're dragging, uh, Taishan, what are you doing? Uh, no I'm s- I'm searching the... Let's, uh, not with the 12. Not not right away with the 12. I'm searching the, the bottom section. Oh, you're all the way down, down, down. Yeah. yeah. Okay, oh, make yeah. a perception check. Mm-hmm. What am I if I do? <laughs> Oh, I thought that was a one. No, you're good. <laughs> so did I. <laughs> uh, ten. Uh, with a ten, it's uh, plainly obvious this is just as free and clear and empty as it has always been. Um, uh, even when uh, you guys were on board, uh, there were those times when you were checking down looking for that invisible monster creature, and uh, it's, 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 it's free and clear. But it's very obvious at the very base, the side of this ship has been burst through, like punched through mm. by ice. Uh, there's splintered planks and wood and logs in all directions, pieces of metal that have been bent by the sheer force of these ice flows that have pushed their way into the bottom. And you imagine it's been this that has kicked it up into the verticality that you now find the ship in. Mm. Oh, right. So this whole time we're on like slanted. Yeah. The entire mm-hmm. time that you guys are doing this, you're slipping, you're holding onto door frames, maybe you're grabbing onto the rafters, you you hold onto the wall. I mean, as a ship, there would be plenty of handholds and even like ropes that you specifically have for stormy mm-hmm. weather. So it's, it's climbable, but you're moving at half speed, mechanically speaking. I would begin to climb up into the bucket. <laughs> Very <laughs> disgruntled about it. I mean, you're you're climbing something that's like this. So you like scoot your butt, and then grab the next stair. Scoot your butt, grab the next stair. Scoot your butt, scoot your butt, and you start to make your way up to the bucket. Uh, it takes you quite a while, but you are able to climb and fall in there, and then you're able to get a good look from a vantage point. I will just try to take in as much as I can and, and see what I can see. I don't know what the visibility I is. I need you to roll for initiative. Ah, look, it's a mimic! <laughs> it's an attack seagull. It's always been a mimic. For for more than three months or yeah. two months, you've been it's it's played the sitting long in a mimic. Yeah. very yeah. patient. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, you rubbed your butt all over it. It's angry. <laughs> um, make it a uh, general per- perception check to look all around. Swingly. Thank you, Muffin Bunny, for the follow. Hey, what a cute oh, name. I was going to say, what a Muffin cute name. Bunny. I got a 17. It was almost a 1. I love both of those things. Uh, 17 plus anything? 17 total. Oh. 17 total. You're looking around, uh, and you see very much what I described to Barnabas earlier. There's this expanse of white, snowy sea that seems to be stretching off in all directions to the um, uh, the northwest, to the west, to the southwest, to the south, and then you can almost barely see... Uh, that tower, that tip of the tower that initially compelled every, uh, the journey that you uh, went on and averting your eyes. Is it actually hard to look at? Or it's, is it just like still, I'm just... It still fills you with 
like I don't want to look at this strip. <laughs> oh God! Um, and uh, you try to push that thought out of your mind, and then you focus uh, on what is the mainland, and you can see this massive, massive, massive cliff comes to uh, a peak um, just here on the southwesternmost point of the uh, of the of the land. It, it's shaded and carved in in blues and whites, and on the side there's a gentle sloping glacier that seems to be pouring out towards the sea. Um, it smiles away. The visibility is clear on this morning, it, it, it would seem. And it's, it's brisk up here. But uh, yeah, you get a good sense that um, if you're going to make your way north, that seems to be the ramp that you would take into okay, the car. Okay, that, that was going to be my question, is I wanted to look where we need to go and try to determine the best course forward. So that's perfect. You're in here. Uh, I go into the surgery room to see if there's anything left, any of the medicine or... Uh, bottles or anything. Make an investigation check. And I think we're all keeping an eye out for dead bodies. <laughs> <laughs> I think that goes without saying. Uh, real bad. Uh, I think that is a... Investigation is a three. Um, you look through the different bins. You're not, like, checking under anything or doing anything super, um, uh, uh, like depthful, but you know where the things that you had in your room were, and you open up the the chest where there had been healing potions, and they have been taken. You open up the bin where there is um, a uh, there was a herbalism kit, and there is a herbalism kit still in there. And you uh, also there's a pot in the corner. Um, you remember that you deposited the body of this weird invisible creature inside. Do you open that? Oh <laughs> uh, yeah, sure. You open it, make a constitution saving throw. Con, you say. You're a big feller. Uh, 12. With a 12? It nearly makes you throw up the smell. (laughs) It hits you in the face like a gas, and you can see inside it's just like this lime green jello mold. The parts of it that are decaying have stopped becoming invisible and and, and creates this intricate lattice work of disgusting matter. Just looking at it and getting hit by the smell, it's almost impossible to understand what this creature could have looked like after all of this rot, and it's nearly frozen. I try to touch it to see if I can still feel the invisible pieces. You put your finger into it, and sure enough, there's a, there's a gooey center. Uh, you can put your hit finger in it. It's, it's like a, uh, like one of those mouse pad surfaces. Oh, oh like a booby no. mouse pad? Yeah, like yeah. a booby mouse pad. Yes! <laughs> Save that! Uh, I'll, put the, I'll put the lid on, and I'll put it back. Like, <laughs> there's vial. Uh, yeah, I guess I, there's, I already have an herbalism kit my, for myself, so I'll just leave the one that's, that's there there. Um, and I'll come and, you know, come to the main area. Um, as you are starting to leave, feeling satisfied with your search and leaving the surgeon's room, I need everyone to make a dexterity saving throw. Uh-oh. Ooh. Ooh, not bad. Ooh. Yeah, my dex isn't terrible. Uh, Dungeon Master, is this oh. something I can see or hear? Let's go. No. 21. Oh, I can see. Uh, so it's not a bad man. Dexterity. Eighteen. Twelve. Seventeen. Twelve. Twelve. Sorry, if you if you get a twelve or higher, actually, oh, um, then you take half of a uh, uh. a d four. So roll a d four yeah. in bludgeoning damage. Roll up, uh, round it up or down. Round it down. I take none. That's exactly right. One. Exactly right, and that would actually make sense. I got what you take none if you get a one? You, you, if, you, you, if you succeeded, then it would be half of one, which is 0. 0.5, which is nothing. So you take no oh, damage. Okay. Okay. Cool. I take one damage. Same. Um, uh, as you are uh, in the um, top of the, the mask, you are horrified at the height that you find yourself no. to find the entire ship Oh, God. Shift. Ah, and all screamed. of a sudden starts waving uh, uh, like this. You can feel the, 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 the mast uh, almost break under this strange shift. All, all four of you who are in the interior of this ship uh, feel the ship slide for a second. Oh. And it's such a violent um, um, pull for, 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 or drop for just a moment uh, that you um, fall, lose your, 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 your footing or, or don't, but just hit, hit something against a, a hard um, you know, door frame or, or against a wall or something along those lines. Um, and 
Taishan, you're the first person to see yeah. it. You turn, and you can see Arctic water rushing into the area that you find yourself in now, and it's surging. It just starts to flow and bubble in immediate direction. I need everyone to roll for initiative. Oh, what? I just watched Titanic! If anybody is on the uh, first lower deck, you can hear me very clearly shouting, Fuck! 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 Fuck you! <laughs> fuck! <laughs> I got a nine. Uh, yeah, mine's a 15. Not bad. 27. Oh, uh, let's do 20, 27? <coughs> yeah, I rolled a natural 20 plus 7 Sweet for initiative. Let's go! Let's Sweet hoops. Christmas. All right, Queenie. That's you. Big money. And uh, 20. 20, to, 20 to 25. Power man. 15 for me. Uh, 15 to 20. Ah, hi, Mary Rachel. 15. Hello. Ten. Oh, Hello. Good to see you. It's good to see you. Long time no see. Five for you. 12. 12. Sorry. Uh, and you are your near? A nine. A nine. So this is the order that we will be uh, enjoying our turns on. Um, Queenie, you uh, find yourself where your uh, uh, token is, and uh, you were just, uh, you think that you saw a tail to skip back uh, behind a a crate when all of a sudden, ah, you get knocked back, and you can hear the bubbling and frothing. You can hear the scraping of ice against the side of the ship. You can hear, it it, it is easy and evident to come to the conclusion that this ship is being pulled further down into the ice. I am going to take two bundles of wood, fill up my inventory completely, throw them over my shoulders, and I'm going to use my full movement to try and get off this ship. Okay, remember that it is difficult terrain and move yourself accordingly. Holy shit. And I'm going to call out, I hope y'all can hear me, but there's someone pulling us under, so get off! (laughs) <laughs> you, while, as you're screaming this, you're also hearing the muffled voice. No, no, fuck, fuck! From, uh... <laughs> <laughs> fuck you, fuck, fuck, no! I'd also be, like, trying to shout out from the bottom. I don't, I don't know how close. I mean, maybe maybe just I your near, just but did. just... Yeah, yeah I'm instantly be blast. I've been hydro-pumped <laughs> against the so... wall. My body's rended in half. <laughs> Let's do this. Um, we knew you well. Excuse me. I'm gonna move your oh, eternal yeah, for a moment. You're excused. Um... That's gonna happen, and that's gonna happen. All right. Oh um, so boy. how Uh-oh. how do I get off of the ship? You just go up here, and you're so at. What Derek just did was okay. he drew water lines, and this is now totally. Oh smart. no. So can you, whoever has access to the token, because my arms are short, Rich. um, okay. thirty feet, feet, so it's fifteen, but an extra five because my bees can carry me five feet. So oh, 20, 20 so feet of movement. Cool. Ride the bees. Yeah. So you I'm take like move. a little hop, and they. <laughs> yeah. Bees. So I'm gonna move. I'm gonna move. I'm gonna move 15 feet, uh, the okay. terrain wise. Yeah. My bees are going to come up out of my thing and they're gonna carry me five feet uh, because that's no action and I can do it every turn. Um, and then I am going to use my rabbit hop as my bonus action um, and I'm gonna jump 10 feet. Damn, you're fast. Yeah. <laughs> She's a bunny. <laughs> Just like a bunny. <laughs> elevated in a helicopter, and you land on your feet, and you uh, jump uh, uh, that uh, additional ten feet, uh, despite the in verticality the in this. Of this thing, instead of going towards the edge, should I be jumping? Oh, off oh the you're edge? trying to jump off. off. I'm trying to get off the oh, ship. Then you when you said fifteen, twenty so total. Fifteen, then twenty. 50, you're 20, okay. 30, you're 30 feet. Okay. So wow. you, you actually, yeah. kick you you actually like jump off and you can turn and you can see that the ship is actually moving down at an extremely fast rate. It is, it is literally the Titanic it at the end of the movie. It is literally the Titanic. Oh, no. I can't um, save anybody. I have to save myself. <laughs> Uh, Gee, what is that uh, Barnabas. Just, just dragon kick that flies forward <laughs> off the ship? The, oh, the flying dragon yeah. kick? Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's just like bees. Ah! It's bees instead of, uh, yeah. instead of smoke. Yeah. Yeah. Flashing tail kick. Um, Damn. What are you doing, Barnabas? I'm going to call out, Mr. Fireblossom, are you all right down there? No. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for asking, though. It's very kind of you. <laughs> Hold on, I'm coming. And I'm going to go uh, try to get uh, Tai Shem. Move yourself. I uh, wouldn't come down here. This looks really bad. <laughs> <laughs> uh, in fact, I'll come to you. Uh, with it, do I have all of the things that I found? Uh, yeah, you would have had them on your person. Yeah, and- I'm just gonna carry as much as I can, and I think I, I don't know if you're encumbered or not. Oh, um, could I have yelled something else to my friends? You could have yelled one more thing during the hop. Great, I would have yelled out. You're near. I left some wood in the room. I was just in. Can you pick up a couple bundles for me, please? 
<laughs> and they're in a pile. So as I'm thinking whether you'll do it. The ship is sinking. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna need to make fires. <laughs> I am going to. Uh, I'll I, after, could, after, I could create fire. After <laughs> listening to uh, to Ty Shad, I'll say, "All right, lad. I hope you're fast." And I'm going to heave the barrel of the uh, fat of the cooking lard. And then with all the other stuff is like it's not much at all. Some uh, some of it would be tiny. Other yeah, would be small. yeah. I don't know how much room you have left. Uh, but I don't have any rations, so I actually have. Oh, you've, you've 12 you've, slots. You've left. got yeah, it. You've yeah. got it. So I'm going to heave the barrel and leave the vinegar uh, behind, I guess. And I'm going to uh, make my way, um, I guess, just uh, spread. And so, Rich, could you? So I'm 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. You can put it there. And then spread. Difficult terrain? Oh, yeah, yeah that's so it. That's so the sprinting, yeah. yeah. Oh, boy. <gasps> Okay, uh, that is uh, to scrim now. So in the bucket <laughs> is is the ladder. So the way let's say the the let's say that it's it's tilted this way. Mm-hmm. Is the ladder on this side? It was on the on the um, upward side. Yes. So okay, so I'm not like climbing down back. So basically, what I would do is like try to position myself in a way where I can like slide down the ladder, no matter how bad it hurts my ass as I'm hitting every step, and just try to slide down the, this as quick as I can, because okay. I think it would take me too long to try to go. You're, you're terrified, and you can feel the mast as this thing is like shuddering and shaking and vibrating down into the into the ocean below, through this ice flow, and I would say you're going to need to make a dexterity check. Yeah, that's fine. I'm so scared I can't think straight. So I'm like, get me off this goddamn boat. Uh-oh. Oh, no. Dex saving throw or just a dex check? Check. Actually, I think it's the same thing. Uh, if I, It's seven. Or an eight. Sorry. It's an eight. Plus, plus four. Uh, you have this idea. Okay, I can slide down it. I can sort of use the thing, and it gets away from you, and you tumble off the side of the of the mask Shit. and start to fall uh, uh, straight, <laughs> straight down. Oh. You take... <laughs> Oh, wow. Uh, you take five bludgeoning damage. Land <laughs> 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 against the, the back of the, the wall right here. Uh, how how much of my movement you would have used? Um, that, that wouldn't I wouldn't have called that a difficult terrain, but I would say that it's consumed ten of your feet. And I so I can still dash because yes. that's what I was you intending can still to dash. do. You can still dash. Uh, then I've got uh, forty left. Yep. Uh, so 20 total now that it's difficult terrain yeah. up top, and I need to get like over there, 15, 20. And I'm like <laughs> sucking wind as I'm like yeah, trying to get to the You're struggling, but uh, you, you, your fear of being pulled into the icy de- unknown depths, uh, it pushes you through that paralysis, and Taishan, you're up. Uh, I, I would just... <laughs> I mean, I guess this is just where I leave, right? I, uh... Uh... I would try and just get out of here to the stairs. I have 30 feet, so I need to move 5, 10, 15. That's it. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> 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 you sprint? Oh, okay, sprint? So double your movement and just use all of it. If you dash. As a bonus action. Or no, as an action, because you're not a robot. Sorry. All right, I get, I get just get in front the, of the base of the, of the stairs. stairs, and you're looking up, and you're like trying not to slip. There's yeah. very few handholds here, but you manage to make your way, and you've got your your you're nearly attached to the thing. Uh, you're near. You're up. You hear uh, Queenie scream out at you. <laughs> Give me those bundles, you're near, please. And I, am I still in the, in the surgeon's room? Please, I'll do anything hmm? you want except for most things. So I'm still in the surgeon's room. You were just walking out the door, so I would say you were the space in front of the door. Okay. Uh, Mason, you help me out. Yeah, here. yeah, yeah. Where are, you, where are we going? So I'm in the space right here? outside the door. Oh, this is, oh, I yeah, left yeah. the bundles literally right here. Did you? Yeah, that's where it was, and then I hopped, or I guess it was down over, over by here. the thing. What? Yeah. I didn't hear what you were saying. <laughs> <laughs> not, my ears are not as big as yours. <laughs> Mikey, can that's you move um, Queenie's token Where are we going? Here? Oh, uh, Thank you, I mean, Andy. Do I feel like I have time to, to like go all the way down here, get bundles of wood, and then come up? I'm coming that way. 
And I, I'm well, a I don't know that. that. Yeah, that's true. But I also don't think that I would stop for a couple bundles of wood. Make a perception or intelligence choice, player's perception. choice. Perception. Please. God, please. Ten? That was that's a pretty. That's a very shiny die. Yeah. yeah. Like you can one. hear the bubbling of of water coming through. It sounds like a a, a crashing wave. <laughs> <laughs> it is uh, uh, also apparent from the vibrations and the sounds that things are moving quickly. You can hear the stress shouting voices all around you, but you have no idea if you've got six seconds or six minutes before this thing finally enters its uh, final resting place. Um. <clears throat> You say minutes? Six minutes? I it said it could be six seconds, it could be six minutes. I, I misunderstood. Thank you. Oh no! I'm so excited to have like two more bundles of wood. <laughs> uh, You're just outside now, Detroit. <laughs> I just gotta so wait. Is the floor is typical really terrain pay, just because it it's slanted, or is there also like ice and stuff? As it's, well? Everything has been sort of frozen. Um, the, it, there's been. It, for what is an Arctic environment, it is surprisingly humid and wet. So that's where these storms are coming from, mm. and the surface of all the wood is 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 covered in like a very thin veil of uh, frost. So it's slick. Um, You're pretty slick. Thank you. Mm. Okay. And, <laughs> no, I'm like, God, I love that. <laughs> so good. I'll just Do it again. <laughs> and I'll just go one and a half, which is three. I'll just do one and a half, uh, two, which goes up here. He's not getting my fucking one. I just have a feeling. Uh, <laughs> all of a sudden, I just feel dread. All of a sudden. All of a sudden, I just uh, feel like he's four, ignoring everything I ask. I tell you five what. Five and a half. So that's about as far as I can get. Is uh is right there. You make it to the railing. It's been hard uh, to pull yourself up with you know an herbalism kit under one arm. You know that you're you're ignoring the wood that Queenie requested, but uh, you can see as once you get to the morning uh, light, uh, this this ship is going down much faster than even you anticipated. <laughs> um, that's the top of the rail. I'll scream, everyone, get off the ship! And how far we go? We go there. <clears throat> Thanks, Lone. Oh, God. Ah! You the best, Lone. Ooh, look at this. Look at this. The ship Water is sinking. surging in to the ship. Uh, it continues to start to fill the next uh, uh, floors of this ship. Uh, it is um, uh, creeping and p- pushing its way through the floor and uh, uh, its aggression as it as it um, the weight of this ship is pulling it down. I will say, um, Yornir, I, for, I neglected to mention, as you looked at the bundles of sticks and then turned and then decided to go up the ladder, you noticed that some of those barrels that had been had rolled down to the bottom side of that particular floor, uh, had busted open from the jolt that you all mm-hmm. had experienced, and you could see quite a bit of gold had spilled out of the one side. It looks like the one of them, at least, is, to your knowledge, was a gold barrel. Wow. Queenie, Damn. you're up. Oh, it's my turn. Yeah. I'm just gonna stand here and wait for my friends to get off the ship. <laughs> that real sucks. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> we were gonna sleep there tonight. Uh, it, the, t- you Pass your turn. Uh, Barnabas. Uh, I am soon. going that to uh, make my way up. Uh, I'll say, how are you doing, Mr. Fire Blossom? As I'm going to try to shout if he can hear me, and I'm just going to make my way up the oh, stair. Rich. Uh, one, two, two. And that goes to here. Three. Three. Uh, will I see a piece? Will I see a bundle of wood? <laughs> they were like right here, so. Yep. Yeah, they'd be right in front yep, of you. Yep, there's there's wood right in front of you. As you, I, as you, I bundled them up to look like actual bundles. They would look pretty good. I was like, oh, this might come in handy. And I'll grab them, right? There are three of them. Did you say three? There were five total. There were five total, total bundles. Okay. She took, took two. two with I her. took two. So, yes, there are so three. So, there are three left. bundles. Uh, I should probably do my. So, how, would a barrel count as a uh, large each item? Bundle, it would count as medium, so it would take up two slots per And each oh. bundle takes up two as well. Okay. So, one bundle of wood takes up as much space as a barrel of oil. And would you say like, the bag of flour and everything else would be one? Uh, yeah, the <laughs> rule of thumb that I'm using, especially, okay. we'll need this as we like right. improv, okay, improvise Budside. items, is it's tiny if you can hold many of it in one hand. Yeah. It's small if you can hold it in one hand. 
it's medium if it's up to an arm's length, but Which you can still hold it with one hand. Is. And long uh, or large is when it's larger than your arm, requires at least two hands to handle, uh, hands to hold. Okay, so, hold so it, six, I would say I would say that seven, you can carry eight, it with one hand, but it's not something eight, that can be carried nine, in a in a palm. Like a basketball. So it's not like a jo- I was thinking like a huge barrel, like taller than yeah, probably it's got like it over a little, shoulder. But it's probably yeah. like, oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, well, I mean, that scooping up like the, 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 bundle, like like the, the bundles of sticks? No, I was trying to have the barrel because I was trying to figure <laughs> out why this picture you like I was picturing like a like giant a barrel. barrel. I'm like, how is that only medium? <laughs> so hogshead would be medium. Are, what barrel are you trying to pick up? The fat. oil barrel. Oh, that's a hogshead. That's yeah. medium too. Okay, yeah, yeah. Okay. I can only carry two of them. It's like a, a cord tree. or is this like a cut of wood? No, a cord of wood is like enough for the winter. It's like a, it's a massive amount of wood. Hmm? I don't know the uh, actual uh, measurement, but you can look it up. Like so, if you so like my dad ordered cord. a half cord one right. year, yeah, cord. and it was like. I, I don't fuck wait that was seriously. I thought it was an actual amount though. Like it, it's a large amount of wood. I don't think it's one small bundle. According to this, cord as a unit is. Oh, a quarter of wood is like a truck's worth. Like yeah. a truck's worth. <laughs> it's, it's, yeah. it's, it's literally like a ice truck. It's literally like a truck. Yes, this it's like is enough a for the winter. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going. <laughs> okay, that's not what I meant. Yeah. So you can order like a half quart if you don't burn that much over the winter, you know, or a quart. Oh. Yeah. So yeah. that's what I have. I, I'm, I'm grabbing two bundles. I need bundles. you to pick up a quart of wood, that quart of wood I left. Oh, I'm no. grabbing two bundles of, of wood. Okay, uh, you scoop them up. They were yeah. really nicely tied uh, by Queenie's expertise in, in knotting. And I so, guess, let's say. how much movement do I have left? Uh, so that would be. You went. Uh, I can't recall. That's probably. I have to go there to get it, and then I think I have. I could easily carry eight feet away. And I would say <laughs> you are only able to pick up two items on your turn because you're using one free object interaction. And I think that's action. about all I can go. Okay. Good job. Thanks uh, for the follow. It's blue. Or er, it's scrim. V- it's Bijou. 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 Uh, holding, oh, Bijou. Holding my side and my face, it, my, my cheek has begun to swell up because I, I landed on my fucking face. <laughs> uh, I'm going to dash the rest of the way, which will be 30 feet, and hope to join Queenie. You jump off the side. Um. <laughs> you all right? I think yeah, I just like for the purposes um. of this. We're going to need to start, because some folks are taking longer, we're going to need to start indicating where oh, no. it would be too far to jump off. So I would say it's just there now. So if you're here, you're looking at a wall of ice because it's actually so deep down. Oh, fuck. So you might have to, depending on which way you're coming, you might have you to You might go. have to make your way farther up the ship because now it's actually okay. starting to dip down into the ice sheet. I'm um, so glad I don't have to worry about that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, things are getting rough. Uh, Tai Chen, you're up. Okay. I would uh, I would respond to Barnabas uh, and just say, Barnabas, friend, I'm doing swimmingly. Oh, no. <laughs> um, and then, wh- so, question. Uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, bit of a pickle here. Um, what, so the what? So I saw like the wound of the ship mm-hmm. on the ice. So theoretically, I would presume everything, like where I'm standing, the water's coming in from beneath me. Everything currently that I'm in is above the ice because we're on an angle. Where you are this far forward, yes, I would say that that's a reasonable conclusion. Okay, is there? From that perimeter search we did earlier, is there anywhere of the ship from where I'm standing that I would assume is, like, not as thick? There's no way to know how thick or deep the ice flows are. And I'm oh, I think so. We're going to thank <laughs> a filthy lot of rain. <laughs> thank you so much. Hey, you so much. much appreciated. We're going to be here a while. Yeah. Which is nice. <laughs> yeah. Hope you Put had a great up. stream. Yeah, yeah we'll oh, get a great oh, stream. Man. Give, give filthy friends love. of the stream. Yeah, yeah. Share, share the love. I love say. that emote. That's fantastic. Mm-hmm. We're trying to escape from a horribly sinking ship into the... It's into the, the Titanic. Into the icy yeah. waters For of the purposes of context, they're on a 45 degree ship that is being pulled into the ice. Uh, uh, because they needed supplies because they've been icebound for some time they're out of food uh, it's very cold and things are only getting worse so I guess my question would be if I'm standing like right up here mm-hmm. at the very top of this thing and I'm looking at this wall 
Would it be reasonable to assume that this is above the ice from the outside of the ship? Why are you asking? I, well, <laughs> so, so I, can make I would like to try an elemental blast it and see if I can blast my way out of the side of the ship and leap out. Whoa. Love that idea. Okay. Clever thing. Let's go. Yeah. Oh, I'm not getting up the stairs. With you're 15 making. Feet of you're movement, making a so. guess. Uh, you're holding on to uh, the 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 surface, and you're like, maybe I can just blast this through. Make an attack roll. Okay. Oh, this is like the Titanic. <sighs> <laughs> this exactly oh happened. To the Does Titanic. he need to make a dexterity saving throw to see if he gets if he hits the propeller? I was just gonna say that. God damn, damn it! it. <laughs> Sorry, oh Darren. no, there's a propeller. <laughs> Thank you for the bits, Gray Morta. Oh, so oh, oh that's that you! Wow. Thank you. That brings us to our twist, right? Yes, it yeah. does. Oh, oh, hey, wow. Wow. Twist. Hey. This is how we twist the fate. Oh, oh, my God. Twist to you. Twist to you. Chef Cars. Chef Cars. Thank you so much. Thank you. My God. I'm getting ready to use that. Thank you. Walk them all. Wow. All right, let's do the thing. Yeah, put them in before I roll to shoot the ship. Thank you. Okay, I would like to. Let me see what my biggest damaging attack is. What? How much damage is this? Do uh, transmute wood to <laughs> yeah, wood cinders. to water. Uh, yeah, cinders. cinders. That will cinders. take six hours to cast. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, transmutation so, spells. As long as the ship doesn't sink for six hours, <clears throat> you'll be all right. The Titanic uh, needed two. Yep. Can't. Uh, Almost three. Uh, I can I I would like to shoot it with burning hands, which is a deck save. But I think it's also touch. Any it creature. would automatically fail. Make sure it's not touch. You have uh, to check the range. The burning hands is this yeah. one. It's a it's Where self. This, it's a fifteen shoot, foot cone. Oh, then yeah. you should be good. Yeah, that's very uh, right. named. Okay, yeah. so you, are you? Is this a spell? Yeah, it's a spell. So okay. it's a, it's a deck save mechanic. You know, I I. Take a deep breath, like exhale out, steam would swirl about my hands, and I'd fire out a blast of, like, a cone blast of fire, okay. and try and blast out the side of the ship. It automatically fails. Okay. Um, well, that's great. I, a, a wall of wood cannot make a dexterity saving throw. Okay. Even better news. Um, I really just bad at aiming. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, and then I could also have, like, object rules for AC, which is, like... It's a wall. <laughs> okay. Um, I'll do it at the second spell level, just because I'm really oh, yeah. scared. And I have a second spell level now. I need one more. Easy ass. Oh, well. Not bad. Not bad. Mm, uh, ten? That, okay. wasn't, that wasn't in it. That wasn't in it. Is it ten? Ten. Um, you steam rises around you, and you push forward with this uh, 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 blast of, of fire, and it <laughs> scorches against the side of this wall, and, and you can see the wood uh, char and crisp and actually uh, 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 push in, but you do not see through the other side of these thick beams that make the, uh, that make the side of this ship. It's very charred, and some of it is still on fire and rising up to the the short ceiling of the space that you find yourself in. You feel like maybe you could try again, or you could run. It's up to you. Oh, I've really got to learn that polymorph spell Scrim's always talking about. <laughs> it's a winner. Dang. Yeah, so I'm. I would be here because I I shot the ship, so I can't I dash. Shot the ship. So I only have 15 movement. Yeah. You're moving, you're moving, and uh, you slip a little bit, you continue to pull yourself up, you pull yourself up out of, out of the Thank hole, you, Hannah, grab the yeah. next ladder, start to do the same. Uh, it's hard to be, uh, you're used to being able to di dart around and be able to, to dive and roll and tumble. It, it, it's an extremely difficult thing on a frozen ship that is cons being consumed by the sea, but you make it up to that ladder. Uh, you're near, what do you got? Uh, I will uh, just jump off the ship. Or you know, walk, you know, somehow get over if it's not too far. You can see, oh, you can ankle. see the um, the the surface of the ice <laughs> emerging, uh, uh, literally coming up to you. The distance shrinking as you jump off, and you land oof, uh, with a loud thump. But you are safe and fine. Uh, that's the top of the round, Queenie. Your grim, did you get my bundle of sticks? <laughs> no. 
the ship is sinking. I asked you to get him. I was him. nowhere near it. Which climbing down there would have taken me at least You have seconds. legs longer than I am tall times two. Well, our mechanical <laughs> speeds are exactly the same. I'm not quite sure what that means. I don't know what we're going to do without that wood. Are the rest of our friends going to die? <laughs> I don't know. I'm sure they'll be fine. Barnabas can swim and tie Shen. That's my turn. Part of us. You see, so you turn and you and watch. Tai Shen. You turn and you watch. There, uh, it's it's just like that long uh, dolly shot going through the hallway of Titanic, where like doors are getting pushed off by the flowing oh, yeah, water yeah, yeah. and it's swimming and surging down. I just you turn watched look... Titanic on Thanksgiving, so I I'm love very Titanic. familiar. Thank with you for what sharing. I love Titanic, <laughs> except Leonardo DiCaprio. When you said you were on top of the world, you were literally at the ocean, which is the lowest possible level elevation. That's fucking horseshit, you dumbass. And I'm sure he wrote that line. <laughs> <laughs> so is Leonardo DiCaprio your arch nemesis? Yeah. yeah. Uh, I don't think I can What's tell that story. I, I, met, I met Leonardo DiCaprio once, and we'll end that story right there because I can't complete that story. Uh, Barbos, you're up. Uh, I'm. Uh, I, I will. I will probably have heard Tai Shen climbing up the ladder, and I will say. Uh, I'll say, keep on climbing, boy! And I'm just going to, to sprint up, heaving the wood. The wood. <laughs> How do you get this hype high on oh, oh my it's, gosh. it's from the train. But it's, <laughs> but it's limited time. It'll only last like oh, oh, it's so good. Limited time only person. a mode. I need him. There's a pug emote in chat. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, I'll run it. So uh, I'm going to sprint. Thank you so much, everybody. Uh, five, ten. And I'm here, 15, right? Look right here. Yeah. 15, 20, 25, 30. I'm still on the ship. Oh, you're actually going to have to get over to this direction. Oh, yeah. So you yeah, probably yeah. don't want to run. You, oh, yeah. As you want to go like this way. Yeah. As you emerge yeah. from underneath the covered area, you see that you're not staring at the side of the ship. The railing is actually up against an ice wall at I'm this point. I'm climbing and hobbling. And you pull yourself by the railing. You know you've got a little farther to go to catch up to hopefully make your way. I'll, um, I'll, as I see my friends, I'll say, Hey lads, I found wood! <laughs> Thank God someone's paying attention. It's grim. <clears throat> oh. Um. I am happy to see Barnabas. Uh, I'm, I'm sitting in the snow, holding my side, and, and I'm actually, I packed some snow and I'm putting it on my, my face that's swollen and holding it there, and then I go into my pack and I open up one of the bottles and I begin to drink it. Oh, the liquor bottles. Okay, um, it is not a great flavor. Let's uh. say. <laughs> um, you, Rug. This is a, a spirit made from sorghum. It's, <laughs> Do I want to know what that is? Uh, it's very. It's the most popular spirit in China in the real world, uh, called baijiu. Uh, but this is very cheaply made. Um, it tastes like. It tastes like if you put pure distilled alcohol, like rubbing alcohol, mm -hmm. into a glass, mm, up to a, like a finger's worth. Mm -hmm. Sure. And then you chewed an entire thing of um, like that baseball gum that like comes in shreds. Big that you chew? Like, <laughs> like big chew. Oh, big but big every chew. time you went to spit, oh, you spit chew. into the glass. <laughs> And then you drink it. It's like bubblegummy and harsh alcohol okay. flavor. I'm a disgusting, nasty trash goblin, so I enjoy it. <laughs> and then I take a swig, like a deep swig, and I let out a sigh, and I'm like, this is delightful. <laughs> oh, they love the good stuff, the suckers. <laughs> I love that. Good night, Crash. Thank you so much for being here. Let's find out if you're going to live, Tyson. Sweet dreams. Yeah. Oh, believe me. <laughs> no, I'm not. Uh, no, um, no pressure, but if you you die, Reed just takes your place. Yeah. <laughs> Reed, queue up, man. That's Get why he's here. We rolled, yeah. we rolled him up. <laughs> um. All right. Uh. I. Well. Okay. These stairs would bring me to these stairs. No, they bring you in, like just inside these doors, like there, like here. Yes. Yeah, and then you come out there. So okay. you're on the lower Oop. level. Yep. Yeah. So that would be two. Uh, and I'll just dash. Three, 15, 4, 5, 
Or do I have to get like, what, what are we no, talking about? You have to get here? the six, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And you're higher, on the line, so you, you could jump off and get to oh, your friends. How, like, Would he you know, break his it... leg, though? Almost certainly. I've got a pencil ready. <laughs> well, I'm, just, I'm just asking, is this like a cool Jack Sparrow sure. moment? Like, do I just take the step and the ship goes down and I actually just step straight onto the land, or do I just like fall down to the ground? Oh, I mean, that's actually up to you. That's very charming. If you wanted to hold the rest of your movement, I would allow it so that you could just be like, dun 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 There's a very good chance that that's a trap. Just so you know. I'm just call I would love to see you do it. Don't be surprised if yeah. it kills you. All right, I'll do it. I'll do it. And I hold my movement for Andy's amusement. Okay, okay you put out one finger, yeah. uh, one one foot, and you put your foot onto the actual ice sheet as it's starting to submerge, but you realize that your other leg is still caught on the ship, <laughs> and then you just get... <laughs> <laughs> You are ripped in two <laughs> as you're pulled in half. For the second you're, time, I got hydro pumped and split in two. And... Derek, for my birthday next year, which is the entire month of April, <laughs> would you run a paper tearing one shot for me? <laughs> Absolutely. Would you just stand in a section of the room and do that repeatedly for like three hours? Uh, and now a, a Patreon exclusive. <laughs> if you want your voicemail to be me doing this for three minutes, that'll be it. <laughs> Oh. Uh, it is above Tarask tier, though. Yeah. You have to pay us a thousand dollars a month. No, that's that's part of the three million. Yeah, yeah. No, you have to pay Sarah Derek's Alton. medical bills. This is the bear out. This is like Alton. the secret. This is like the secret menu at any restaurant where you're like, I'd like the three minute voicemail of paper ripping, please. <laughs> how, how did you know you could ask for that? <laughs> Who told you, sir? This is a Wendy's. <laughs> they sell quesadillas at Chipotle. That's all I'm saying. Uh, you're here. You're you're up. Uh, I'll, I'll look around. And it, is it, can I see Barnabas like right there on the ship? Yeah. Come on, we need to get away from the ship. Yeah, I'm let away. us go. I'm, I'm, I'm fuck all twenty. And feet so away. I'm gonna start like trying to lead everybody towards east the north. Like, well, I guess straight away from the ship, and then I would start to kind of. Get you're my you're surrounded still north. by this like makeshift camp, okay. so you could start making your way out and away from the the ship. At this point, you're seeing like geysers of water spraying up from like released pressure as it's cutting through the wood, yeah. uh, uh, cutting through the wood because this is a very abruptly moving ship as it as it collapses, and that brings us to the top of the round, which means that I could do my next trick. Oh, oh God! What do you mean trick? I told you! I told you, Mace. <laughs> this, this, this. Oh no! Oh, oh no! Right, right at the foot. I would say that you are. You feel your heels get a little wet there, Barbara. You should have just sunk him. <laughs> I mean, seawater. It would just be cold. Yeah, you do yeah. cold resistance. I'm just yes, curious. I do. So you'd be able to deal with it better than the rest of us. Yes. Yeah. Um, we'll I talk be, about that mechanically yeah. on our break next because I'm, I'm very curious. Yeah. Uh, it's and now we're back to the top of the round. Queenie, you pass. Barnabas, you're up. Hey, I didn't get to say anything. You can say something if you no, want to. I don't to. need to say anything. <laughs> <laughs> you see, you see the bundles of wood, and you're like, oh. I feel, I feel much more calm now that I see Barnabas carrying those sticks. I have a feeling I'm going. Do I need to like get further up because of this ice line? What is this line? Oh, I forgot to move the uh, the ice line. Yeah. The ice line is now Oops. where Taishen is. So, oh, so you gotta keep what does going. That mean? You're running. You have to this, keep going. This, everything beneath you, it's the, below the shelf. Ice. It means that so the if, boat's if my down arm is the ship, ice. you're standing here and Taishen is standing here. The ice floor, like so the top of the ice floor, him? is right here. I did. You need to run up here, otherwise you'd be trying to climb the inside of the ice flow. Oh, it's a and, shelf, and the ship's like sinking down. It's like a shelf. So we just got hit in the face with ice, no, and now no. his head's gone. It's difficult to articulate the phys yeah. the physics of this. Yeah. So am I getting like no? It's, it, no, no, it's no, no. Not, no, no. Imagine it still be like a, like a spot where the ship was. Okay. Right? okay, okay, so okay, there'd okay. Be like this huge. This is the ice. Yeah. This is where we are all waiting for yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. The boat is here. And doing this, but this would all be so, cleared because the ship was there anyway. So the right? idea so no is oh. that you just have to get higher up the ship I see, to I get see, over I see, the shelf. But you yes. don't have a head anymore. And there's sea walls. <laughs> okay, 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 okay. So mechanically, how would that affect Barnum Boos's skull turn? Skull. <laughs> uh, it, it just means that either you you turn to your right and there's five feet of ice in front of you, or you can try to run up the deck in order to get to the the floor uh, level. Is the ice at how 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 thick is the is the sea below the ice? 
How deep is the sea below? So, like, where's the sea level compared to, like, where my friends are standing? Um, you don't know how deep this ice sheet is. Um, but it has been many weeks since you were able to, like, try to push a hole into it, for example. So, so what I'm asking is, can I just step sure? into the ocean and then just swim and climb out? If you wanted to. How, how You've spent a lot of time on boats, though, right? Yeah. You would know that, like, There's gonna it's going to create a vacuum. That's true. That's oh, true. So I don't that's want actually you to die. a myth. That doesn't happen. Really? Look, Derek, it yeah. happened in the film. I'm sorry, but boats don't create vacuum hey, suction man, you're the that DM. pull people down. You're the DM. I looked it up okay. because I thought that that would be a really cool thing to add onto this encounter <laughs> because I just watched Titanic. <laughs> It's Leonardo DiCaprio, <laughs> fuck you! <laughs> I love that our streams just turn out to us telling the celebrities to go fuck themselves. Yeah. Um, yeah, you're the DM, man. Call it. I love Do that. you have like a Nautilus move? Can you use the anchor? Yeah, I would like to, since I'm right here, mm -hmm. I would like basically to run this way, or this way and this way, and basically leap up and just try to get the top of the ice with my anchor. Okay. And pull myself up. You um, uh, are just about to pull the ice anchor up over your head and slam it into this thing so that you might be able to pull it uh, to the top of this ice sheet when you hear a whisper behind so, you. So, quite the contrary to the suction, escaping <laughs> air from the Titanic created a wave that served to push people and objects out from the ship, so the which caused a lot of people to drown. Well, what do you know? That's sad. I'm sure that. So the, you heard a whisper. I'm sure, <laughs> I'm sure that the drowning was more like, "Oh my gosh, we're." Uh, anyways, whatever the fuck is you hear a whisper, all right? Yeah, <laughs> from behind you, and it's a voice you recognize instantly. Oh God! It's a female voice. It's my oh. feminine voice. A whisper in your ear. Oh. Would you learn the secrets of the sea? Sometimes in the waves of change, we find our true direction. You turn and look at that rising sea level coming towards you, and you hesitate for a moment. I would, my lover, and I just, I let go, and I what? just plunge into the ocean. You turn and you, oh, start, to, you start to walk into the God. ocean. Uh, oh, the use man. the rest of your movement for that purpose I if you would, want. So yeah, I would drop down and land and just look at my friends and then just uh, dive in, so that would be one. Barnabas, what are you doing? You changes, hit the, you hit the water, water, and it is freezing cold. You're resistant to cold, but even you can recognize as it gets into your boots and start to uh, and, and and goes over your knees and over your waist. Even you would recognize that this, it, it, if it weren't for the the salts uh, content, it would be frozen solid. And you are walking now into sub zero uh, 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 water and taking a deep breath with your tr wonderful Triton legs and knowing you'll be able to breathe. You start to submerge. Taishan, you're up. It's my turn. Sc scrim, you're up. I, well, now I feel weird about I, it. I, I'm sorry, I skipped it because I didn't see it. Well, it's okay. So I immediately, I guess, do I see Barnabas' uh, anchor disappear? You are now looking down uh, five, ten feet at him, and he, you see the anchor get pulled out, and you didn't hear anything. But you see him turn, and he starts to walk down with the ship as it is being pulled down into the sea. Oh my gosh, has he lost his mind? And in my paranoid state, uh, even though I am not a ship guy at all, I would like to, I have, I have a feeling or I want to try to discern whether or not the ship is just sinking or if something is actively pulling it down. Oh, oh it's a sea creature. Um, make he, an intelligence or a perception a show, uh, check. Did we see a flare? Yeah, oh. yeah I thought he was saying. Tail. I thought he was saying that was a rat tail. Oh, fuck. What? I totally missed uh, that. Yeah. You said perception? Mm hmm. Okay, I will try. You want some coffee, Mace? Oh, uh, sure. 21. Wow, I'm glad Mace is Outstanding. Not bad. Matt, 20s. Uh, with a 21. Like um, this does appear to be. Um, a natural glide. You okay. think that if it was being pulled down, it would go. Okay. But it seems to just. Oh, thanks, uh, it was like uh, on a, uh, a razor's edge about to be pulled down into the sea, and five jostling bodies were just walking enough. on top of it was just the camel straw. Uh, having uh, exclaimed uh, about uh, Barnabas, I begin to back up farther from the boat, like 
I, I can't help him. There's nothing I can do. And I'm just, I'm backing up even so farther away. So what was away. the tail that I saw? Tai Shen, you're up. Uh, I... Be a rat. I I didn't like hear anything. Right? No, you didn't. I, but you do just turn. Him. You do turn, and you saw um, Barnabas uh, carrying all of this gear and throw his anchor up, and then freeze, turn and look at the water, and then steadily and with great gravity start to walk down. And he's now almost up to his shoulders in in this consuming seawater. How heavy is he? Extremely. Very. Are you considered Probably large, twice. or no. are you? You're no. still I'm just a very large Triton. I'm not. I'm not like. Hundreds of pounds. Oh yeah, I'm hundreds of pounds. Yeah. You're bigger. Than, are you? Are you the tallest, or is he the no, biggest? No, no. He's he's literally a giant. Okay. So I'm just like a really big dude. Okay. Like. You also uh, see that you can now just step off of the ship and be with your friends. You better step off that ship. <laughs> If brains were leather, he wouldn't have enough to settle a June bug. I've told you that before. <laughs> I hadn't given you inspiration already. That shit's fucking great. Ain't that the truth? You know what I'm saying? You better step uh. up that shit. <laughs> Thank you for the follow, Green 1976. I, I know that gunpowder doesn't exist in Avantra, so my favorite version of that would be if brains were dynamite, you wouldn't have enough to blow your nose. <laughs> <laughs> I thought gunpowder existed. Uh, Shep, how does? Oh, it's, uh, it's arcane. It's arcane. arcane. Yeah. It's arcane. Magic, magic pistols. No, no, there is no, uh, there is no gunpowder dynamite of interest. We're gonna need to talk about that. That's really sexy. Yeah, happy sex time. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, they're like, basically, they're like Lucian pistols. Okay. Or I don't know actually. I don't. I don't. We talked. I don't know, I don't know yeah. how Lucian's pistols work, but I just know that he they're fucking like, wrecks me in Jesus lanes, man. so I don't want to talk about yeah. it. Oh really? Yeah, it's more like. Oh, that's fucking arcane awesome. Energy, right? Yeah. It's like magic energy. Damn. Decision. All right, plan. I. How far down is he from? Like so, so if I'm here and the water's here, is it is it like a is this all like a twenty foot drop towards the water line? No, 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 no. This is a flat surface. It's a vertical. It's a, it's at an angle, but like this would be the water line, and it's coming up very rapidly. He's almost totally submerged into this water line at this point. If you walked up to it, it would be like walking down a very steep beach into the ocean, uh, an icy beach into frigid cold water in the middle of nowhere. That would surely kill you. All right. Okay. All right. <laughs> I get it. This I'm is like one you, of those moments. Well, I'm telling you, Tashi, you get off that boat the right sun, now. The sun, whatever. All right, I'll leap off the boat. I'll leap off the boat, all right? You can certainly try. I don't try a damn thing. I just get off the boat. (laughs) All right, move yourself. Here and here. Barnabas, what are you doing? Are you okay? Barnabas, hold on, Barnabas. Barnabas, we gotta go, Barnabas. My Leo, Leo Barnabas. 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 Um, yeah, so I'm trying to fucking watch Titanic, and it's the end part of the movie when oh, it's all no. sad and shit. And every single time that Leonardo DiCaprio says Rose, Rich goes, Rose. Why does he say Rose? He so says much? Rose at the beginning and the end of every single line of dialogue that he has. He wants to make sure you know what her name is. Rose, we gotta go, Rose. Rose, hurry up, Rose. I'm like, fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> Derek's trying to win me over. You might get a place on my list of people that I want to fight. It's fine. Yeah. In my okay, what is in my yeah, in my in is I'll turn to the rest of everybody and I'll say, <clears throat> he's always been mad. Let's not end our lives for his sake. Let us go. I mean, I don't want to leave him, but that's absolutely nothing that I can do. He's enormous. This is his choice. Let him go. And I'm going to turn. I'm going to start walking away from the ship. So... I'll walk my full movement. Okay. You cool. you start to move, move away, and you're all moving away. You can see the masts of this thing hit the back of the ice sheet and just crack and snap. The entire thing is 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 just being consumed by the water. This, uh, the the balance of whatever had been keeping it upright finally having turned and and falling. Um, Barnabas, you are now completely. It's my turn. I'm going to end combat, and we're going to enter. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. I didn't have anything to do. <laughs> you, I'm throwing an unnecessary tantrum. You I find yourself... Uh, uh, I would like to pass my turn, Derek. <laughs> yes, thank you. You're holding onto the, the, the wood of this ship as it starts to go down, and uh, the light <coughs> shimmering from this ship-shaped hole 
uh, above you, uh, uh, shimming down in in great rays. Uh, You can look behind you. You hear the same voice. Only those who brave its dangers comprehend its mysteries. You hear the same voice. It will be some time until we can embrace again. Does he have a boner? (laughs) (laughs) Am I able to respond? Uh, you as a Triton know how to speak underwater. You're breathing comfortably. It's yeah. cold. And uh, the ship is faster than you because it's heavier. <laughs> so it's, it. it's starting it's starting to really, really like move away from you and you're almost being left behind, but you're 20, 30, 40, 60 feet under, 100 feet. You, you've, you've gone deeper in the ocean by, by many leagues, but uh, you're now very, very far away and it's quiet aside from this voice. You can feel like you can speak back. As... <clears throat> As I float, as the ship, I'll, I'll look at the shape of the ship as it as it shrinks beneath me, and I'll just kind of stare into the darkness, and I'll say, "Oh, how I have missed your embrace, my lover. I am brave enough, brave for you, for your mysteries, for your change. Just let the waters embrace you, and you turn." And there's a creature. There's a, a, a warm ocean fish. A, a fish that has no rightly place being in this Arctic ocean uh, where, where, you, where you find yourself. It should be hundreds, if not thousands of miles in, in, in warmer climes. Uh, blue, long, silvery body shaped like a torpedo. And you can see two long, translucent fins extend out from its body on its side. Like wings. The sea does not wish to be restrained, the voice whispers again in your ear, and it's from the other side, almost as if the first voice was from that fish, and then turning, you see now a small slug-like creature floating in front of you, the size of a teacup. Strange tentacles, gills, a club-shaped growth all over its body, vibrantly colored. And you feel the voice is coming from that direction. And then behind you, you're now still just floating in water. A smooth sea never made a skillful sailor. This third creature is even more alien still. A strange fern-like creature with many long slender feather-like arms that undulate and turn. A feather star. Again, these creatures have no right to be here, but they appear before you as real as anything you've ever seen. Are you all her? Choose, 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 choose. You hear this swelling sound. Shit. I should have written down what I got are. you. I got you. No, just describe it again. My notes are bad. <laughs> you look, and you can turn. They're still there. There's what appears to be a winged fish. There pe- appears to be uh, a teacup slug. And there appears to be a feather. And they start to move together, standing before you almost yeah, like an audience. Yeah, like creature. I wrote down, Barnabas is losing his fucking mind. <laughs> <laughs> and you take a deep inhale, and you get the really oxygen from the water. From the water. I think I would go for a winged fish. That sounds like the most Barnabas thing to me. I would see a beautiful winged fish and I will just swim towards it. It will be some time before we can embrace again. The fish. I have waited this long, my lover. I can wait to the end of time for you. You don't even notice on the side of your eyes, the periphery, those other two creatures simply vanish. They don't, they don't fade away. They, don't, they weren't spirits. You, you, were you imagining them? It doesn't matter because there's a flying fish standing right in front of you, swimming like this, and starts to swim forward, and you feel as if a gift has been bestowed. 
I'll pull out my shell from my person, realizing that I've trapped all of the goods to my person. Hopefully. You've never seen it glow brighter. I'll look in and I will say, you are with me even in this icy place. I thank you. I will miss you and your salty kiss. I would uh, take a moment to see what's happening on the surface of the ice sheet. Uh, You are all uh, looking down and minutes are passing. The ship has disappeared. It's again dead quiet. Dead quiet in uh, on the surface of uh, the this ice sheet, and you are staring um, in into a black hole. Uh, the, the 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 depths of uh, this ocean, I- impossible to see. Even Barnabas, the ship having faded from view. Um, I know you said you were like starting to walk off. I would plead with you to just wait a few minutes to try to like we we we, ha- we have to see if he he might come up. We 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 need every help that we can get. You can't walk off just yet. Just give him a couple minutes. I had anticipated something like this our entire trip. He might not be dead. You anticipated he was going to just cling his anchor onto an ice sheet and then retract it and drop into the frozen icy depths for no reason No, I would anticipated that he would fully lose his mind. He would do something irrational. He would do something that would endanger himself or us. Hasn't he been doing that the entire time we've known him? Yes, exactly right. That is why I anticipated this moment. You don't know that's the case, Yornir. He's a man of the sea. He may have thought he had a better chance of getting off that boat by choosing the water. He could be swimming around looking for us to drop a rope so he can climb out. Fine. I will wait. But I do not trust his action. Just a few minutes. That's all. That's all I'm asking. Have you ever seen a stellar sea cow? Stellar sea cow? Yeah. I don't know why they're called that. Maybe because they're cool? Because they're cool? Yeah, like, wow, that's stellar. I don't know this. Oh, I was just hoping maybe you knew if they were around here or something because you're, you know, from ass places. I've seen a dugong. Oh my gosh, I've always wanted to see one of those. Well, I just figured we should talk about something while we wait for his dead body to pop up out of the depths. Type of sea cow. <laughs> but you know, the good thing is, if he does die, but he floats back up to the surface, we can get that wood back off of him. I will wait. You guys want to talk about anything? Blub. You see, you see suddenly <laughs> air pockets, bubbles emerge. Blub, 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 blub. And 15, 20 feet, just barely visible, Barnabas is swimming back to the surface. Well, that's another one of the books for Tashi. I will. The books? Yeah, you know, you were right about that, you know, them not murderating that one guy out there, more than likely. Oh! And now you're right about Barnabas just swimming back up to the surface because he's doing his thing and jumping off a ship when he only had like 15 feet to go, but I... I don't want to question it. I've never been so right in such a short period of time. I know, I'm proud of you. Well, Barnabas's head just uh, uh, crosses the threshold of the water. We should throw him some rope. Barnabas, are you okay? I will. I don't know how like how much. I will just. You now know <laughs> that the sheet of ice is ten feet thick. Wow. I will emerge. I'll hear the splash as my head uh, will pop out of the water, and I'll be treading uh, effortlessly because I guess I am a sea creature uh, natively. And I'll say, <laughs> Icy's still with us, lads! I have a good feeling about this now. We aren't going to die here. We aren't going to starve. Oh, she's here. We're uh, only ten feet above you. You don't need to scream. Maybe, hey, Yorna, don't come over this way. We can get him up. Yeah, I think Taishi and I got this one. You got any rope on you? Ah, uh, yeah. Well, <clears throat> I let out a large sigh of relief. Oh, I do have Hearing it. your voice. All right. Yeah. Well, why don't you let it down? I think the two of us can carry him out. Uh, cool. 
Yeah, I'll lower some rope to him. See if I we can grab him. If we can hang on. Oh, like, yeah, no, I up. appreciate. It. I think I might stick to the ice a little bit ah, as I like climb up as my like, the ice completely dreads. <laughs> ah. But you take no damage. Eventually, you're able to pull yourself up, and that's when you it hits you. All all five of you are free of the ship. There are no more supplies. There's perhaps a few canvas tarps and wood and uh, stuck in the snow uh, in this perimeter around this ship. Uh, and you are all alone, and the sun is directly above you. It's midday. And uh, so that being said, uh, what happened when you were underwater? So I received the fo- uh, so form of the beast. I get an additional option, uh, which is the flying fish, two translucent pectoral fins emerging your upper back. Whoa! Um, letting you make powerful self-propelled leaps. Whenever you reduce a creature to zero, uh, to zero hit points, you may use a bonus action to move a distance up to half your speed, regardless of how much movement you've used so far on your turn. So you, like, kill some motherfucker and then close distance on the next yeah. one. That's tight yeah, as fuck! Really um, that is cool. And, uh, for those of you who are subs and enjoy Vantress and Chill, there are two other options. Oh! oh. I knew it. I or we think gonna see what they were? You probably should have picked the teacup slug. Yeah, yeah, agreed. Why? Just you just have a, a feeling. It's a fucking teacup size slug. <laughs> I don't know. That when you kill something, you actually lose half your speed. Oh no! <laughs> oh, you know, I bet it was that fish that's an Animal Crossing that you can catch, the sea butterfly. Is that what it was? I love it. Uh, it was a sea slug. Um, oh. Which have, uh, if you look up on Google Image Search or something along those lines, if you look up Sea Slug, they have this these radically alien bodies where they like are are totally yeah. totally like orange red, and then they have these like weird growths on them that like come to like blue tips and stuff. There are yellow ones. There are ones with like uh, uh, blue and uh, white stripes and stuff. They're one of the most radical and insane ocean creatures. And I just had to find something really fun that would be bestial and 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 that you could. Try Transform into. Well, thank you. Uh, That's to awesome. expand upon your subclass. Immediately made me think of Bioshock when he said Sea Slug. I was like, oh, this is oh, yeah. Bioshock. Shit. Well, would you kindly like to continue playing? <laughs> yes. 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 <laughs> would you kindly? Would you kindly? Oh. Would you kindly? Right. This is the sound of the wind as it makes its way southwest across the ice sheet, staring into this hole, uh, a few chunks of ice floating around the perimeter. Uh, this makeshift settlement abandoned camp uh, all around you. You can hear the occasional flapping of a tarp, um, but it is still quite quiet. And the five of you are standing. It's probably noon, noon 30. And what happens next is up to you. <laughs> I'm gonna, I thought you lost it for a second there. I'm really glad you're alive, Barnabas. Oh, of course uh, I'm alive. I've never felt so alive, Mr. Sabbath God. I, I'd offer you a drink, but I know you quit. So I take another deep pull as I'm just glad to see that my friend is alive. You're alive, but are you well? I'm feeling very well. We will not be seeing this water of the sea for a long time. Our path is on land. Yes. And I swear I will get back here. And I'll, I'll step to the, the I guess probably the splat, still churning waters as the ship is sinking. They're reasonably still, but yes, they do occasionally. And I'll uh, reach in, and I'll pull out one of the red herrings, and I'll throw it into the sea. Oh. Wait, we get a... Oh, shit. Well, my apologies. Let me hit the rewind button. Before Barnabas emerged, oh. just as you saw the flying lady who was at the very tip bow of the ship uh, thrust off, a rat... Made its way up the top of the sword <laughs> that it was holding and jumped off and started to scurry away. I would like to shoot that rat, please. Will you take an attack roll, please? I would love to take... You are such a benevolent DM. What, what could a rat's AC be, really? That's, uh, I think, that's the question. I All right. sure hope it is. All right. Um, sorry, I don't know where my attacks that's how are. That's shots it make, it though. Could, I was going to say... Well, We're not getting that arrow back. 14. <laughs> 14 okay. hits? Oh, okay. Holy smokes. Okay. I forgot that my, yeah. because I'm uh, me, it's plus nine for me to hit. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, that's pretty Rangers good. have crazy Rangers have crazy you aim. You pull true. one of the existing arrows that you have, uh, uh, not, not obviously the uncrafted one, but you pull it, you feather it, you pull back, 
sticks the rat right in its side. It stops uh, and uh, gives a little squeak and a twitch, and uh, you're able to pull it out. You now have a rat on a stick. I am so sorry, little rat, but times is tough. <laughs> I'm going to pull my hair out, put it back in my pack, and then I'm just going to hang from his little tail onto my outfit. So with the rat hanging now, we return to present. Yes, thank you, Darren. <laughs> I'll, I'll throw the red snap, or not the red snapper. Um, herring. The, the red, red herring. herring. And then I'll watch the, the sea reclaim and I'll say, one last offering to you until we meet again, my lover. So is that what that was all about? This, 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 this person that you keep referring to? Hi, yes. Well, and what was the point of all that? She is with us. She granted me her gift. She granted me her power. A little tiny bit of it, I know, but she is with us. She is her her blessing. He's on this quest. He's on this voyage, and our voyage isn't over. She said we would meet again, so we will be landlocked for far too long, I fear, but then I know I will see the sea again afterwards. There are many coasts, no doubt, up this line. I know, but I don't think we're to be heading for the coast. We have to head inland, as much as it pains me to say. I would not question her judgment. It's worth mentioning before the whole thing went down that I was able to see pretty far when I was up in the bucket. I saw some pathways that we might take uh, it's through some snow and some snow drifts and things like that, but, uh, I mean, it's a, it's a path north if that's the direction we want to go. Yes, we are headed north. I can point it out as we walk. Uh, we can just kind of head that way, and, you know, after that, we'll just have to wait and see. Show it to me when we arrive, and I can lead us. Boy, I think that that might be where uh, my usefulness will end, except for this hammer. If you need some fishing, we don't know much about Mountains, trees, except the ones that get cut down and cut apart and built in the ships. Let us take what wood we can. We need to... Oh, I found these, this wood, this extra wood. <laughs> yeah, I'm really glad you picked up those. I told Yornir to grab them and he didn't do it. It is wet. We will need to oh, start thinking. They're already starting to, like, crystallize and form into, like, blocks of ice, even as uh, uh, Barnabas is talking. It's quite cold. Uh, help you break down some of these uh, structure. I'm gonna point to the um, oh yeah to the rest of this sort of camp that was. Is, is there presumably wood pieces that are building some of this kind of makeshift yeah, camp? Yeah, yeah, cheap wood, uh, uh, like square logs and timber and that sort of thing, all uh, dug roughly shorn into, or shoved into the into the snow and and then tied. So I'll pull out my hatchet and I'll just start kind of breaking down the wood and try to collect as much firewood as I can in three slots. Um, what you have done there. Okay. I would say that if you filled the three slots and you took uh, an hour to do so, um, you could break it all apart and find a bundle and a half worth of additional um, fuel. I'll uh, dump all of the wet uh, pipe weed out of my, <laughs> out of my pipe. And I'll, yeah, and I'll get some fresh ones and put it in and have... Uh, the first smoke after our, our ship has uh, it's that wrecked. same it's that same fall smoke I can't remember the name I gave it off the top of my head but uh, it's never tasted sweeter to you that maple uh, uh, flavor hint um, uh, uh, in the long evolution of this uh, combined with the salty wet uh, uh, that you were unable to cl- clean from the pipe it, it's delicious it's even better uh, as an aside, do we have a copy of the Icebound rule set somewhere here in the studio? Absolutely, yeah. and I, sh- I really I should just print out a copy every single time oh, I come out. <laughs> you got it immediately. Uh, this is perfect. I'm going to recalculate my inventory you I was as we kiss play. You. I okay. wasn't. Uh, because I've made a lot of changes and I've dumped a lot of stuff. Yep. So I, I know that I have extra space. And it's going to be extreme, perhaps the most important that it's ever been in this session. Yeah, yeah I figured. Okay. I'm full um, up, I think. Yeah. Yeah, so then, I would say that I would help. Uh, I would help your uh, your near mm. uh, with what he's asked of me, um, and then whatever I need to help carry, I will calculate what I could help carry, and when we're ready to go, I would basically point your near 
just the direction that I saw and try to explain it to him the best that I can. It's not difficult uh, uh, pointing out. It, it, it would be hard to see at this level, but as Scrim is describing um, what, what he saw at the top of the mast, um, you can kind of get a sense of it. There's this very thin cliff line uh, that looks miles and miles away, but where he points out, yeah, there's, there's a bit of an indent. It looks like, uh, uh, it looks like the, the cliff face has fallen or, or been shoved out. Um, you would know this very specifically from Mammut that there's um, sometimes ice that just slow moving like a glacier uh, can push out into the sea or, or, or onto the land like that. And it looks just like that. From this far distance, it's very difficult to tell how hard that would be to scale, but uh, you see what Scrim is describing. Uh, yes, I do see it, and I believe that is our best way to get up the cliffs and onto the mainland. But let's go. And I'll just turn and I'll start walking. I hate to delay us. Should we give Mr. Armstead proper burial at sea? If you wish. I don't want to be disrespectful. It certainly seems like a waste of time. I think that maybe if there was one man with any honor here, it may have been him. Well, God knows I can't stop you. <laughs> what do you need us to do? Just help me drag him. And I'll just quick... I'll, I'm not going to take more than ten minutes. Basically to get him, get his body kind of cleaned up a little bit. And then uh, just say... Boy lover, reclaim a good sailor, a good man. Stayed by his captain and his ship. To the depths. And I'll keep him. Um, you would this time would be absorbed by it doesn't cost additional because Jornier are spending an hour scavenging oh, yeah. the rest of yeah, the thing. So that do, while that's happening, um, you Tai Shen standing at the uh, edge of this hole, um, Queenie doing whatever Queenie is doing. Uh, you um, perhaps take one of the canvas tarps Skinny and right. cinch him up uh, <laughs> so that he's not totally loose in the water, and he plunges into the surface of the sea and. Uh, five, ten feet down, he's completely invisible, fading into an unknown depth. Fair winds. Mr. Armstead? I'm ready. I'm ready. Yeah, I got my rat. Oh! We able to find any peppers? Mr. Fire Blossom? Yes? Would you... Be very happy to learn that I didn't find anything else. Oh, well, Except for this one. <laughs> That's exactly right. Exactly. Exactly. First rule of what I need. morale on the ship. Oh, Surprise and delight. Wow. What a magical journey. You know, I'm very glad you got to have that moment with your lover. And that you found so this pepper. I. I'm glad that you are happy with your pepper i don't know i am you were always fond of it in in my cooking i suppose you always asked for it extra spicy this entire mm -hmm. time we've been traveling so <laughs> i've made it extra spicy for you yeah the have whole you ever time. had frank's red hot it's not quite as hot as i like it on the it's my dragon favorite. scale of heat it's good though flavor wise you ever met frank no I knew a friend. I come from once. a very secluded island. I haven't met many people at all, yeah. really. All right. You ready to go? You've, you've yeah. not Your come across this last year. <laughs> <laughs> Queenie's referring, of course, to uh, Francisco's Red Hot, Red Hot uh, which is a uh, Yulongi's hot sauce maker of some renown. Um, Francisco's Rojo Caliente. I like to put it all over my wings. <laughs> <laughs> I put that shit on everything. Um, is there, so just before we head off, is there anything that you need me to help carry? Because I have a lot of space. So if things like sure. firewood. Or I have seven slots. I would be like just basically breaking down wood into like burnable pieces and just handing I also it to have seven slots. Mm. So I'll just I'll give it you I seven slots of wood. Is so unencumbered and I'm literally. I like... ditched my armor because I have mage armor. I will. Yes, yeah, as a hex but that was huge. That'll, yeah, it's three spots. Yeah. So, I have my survival. And then I lost so all my rations. Yeah. Right, no rations. 
Yeah, and, that's my only ration is my rat. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, okay, then, so each bundle is medium size, so I can own three bundles, one extra thing left yes. over. Yes, so I will give you three bundles. I will give you however many bundles you'd like to carry. Whatever, yeah. I, I mean, it's it's one slot for a bundle or two? No, two. two. Um, yeah, I but can it's take a decent two amount or three. Of I can take, Would yeah. you like to take two of my... Mm, can I give you one of these bundles? <laughs> yes, I'd be happy to carry a bundle. Okay, thanks. Oh, and then and I'm I, pass it over to I forgot you. about the money. Shit. I'm going to have uh, to dump some cash. I think you have two item slots worth of money at this point. I think, I think it's more than that. It's 100 coins per slot, right? Yeah, so yeah. you have like 251, so... I'm gonna three, dump. three slots. I gotta dump some gold. That sucks because I didn't ask for it in platinum. I wasn't very forward thinking. Say that. It, it, you wouldn't have gotten it in platinum. You can't just convert it because you say it. it <laughs> I asked. For he it. got it. Literally, gold. So he, he, he literally asked for it in platinum. I didn't think to. Yeah. Yeah, that, that's that was saying, smart. I'm stupid. He's smart. So I've got a hundred coins on I me. I can now always I'm... rely. I know this from when we played Witness. I can always rely on Rich to be like, and here's the skeleton key. <laughs> <and a fucking laughs> yeah. 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 All right, I'm holding a hundred gold pieces, uh, and that's it. So I'm. I'm You're full. holding a hundred and one gold pieces, one of which does not count against your inventory. That's true. I wasn't even th- I wasn't even counting that, but thank you. That's a good point. Uh, I like just want to make sure we're all doing the same thing. That's a great That's a great point. All right, I'm I'm all I'm all folded up, but I'm you not. You want me to uh, carry encumbered. some of your money? I mean, it's literally just a pile on the ground. Yeah, I mean, yeah. If you want it, I I, <laughs> I don't know if it's going to be any good out here. I don't want to part with all of it, obviously, but uh, you know. It's, all right, we can just leave it. It kills me to just watch it sit there. Well, why don't I carry it for you? Because I just gave Tashi some of my wood. <laughs> So why don't I care for you, and then once you free up on some space, I can give it back to you. Out here, what wood is far more valuable than that pile. We're not leaving anything. I just wanted to free up some space because I'm a dainty old rabbit. The more food and wood you can carry, the better. All right. It's it's fine. I'll just hold on to this little bit, and then hopefully I don't have to get rid of this. If you'd like to take it, you can, but. I'm saying for now, at least, until we have to drop. Was there anything else that on your person that I could carry for you so you can take your gold? No, I, I appreciate the offer. I think I have to keep everything. It's all right. All right. Uh, it's, it's fine. It's He's fine. clearly having a hard time no. with this. He is no. emotionally attached to that gold. No, no, I'm not He's worried about crying. it at all. Look am, at I'm him. I'm crying a little. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm crying a little. It's frozen on your cheeks. The icicles are hard. We got to do something about this. We can't let Scrim cry like this out in the middle of the frozen waste. Scrim, are you okay? I'm not sobbing, even though you can see the tears running down my face, and I just slowly turn and start to follow uh, your near. <laughs> I scoop up how much gold is it? Uh, I dropped like a hundred and change. Hundred and twelve slots. It's a lot. That's what I I'm will Don't worry scoop about it. up the one hundred and twelve gold, and I will be encumbered again. No, it's not worth being encumbered over. Like Queenie, you can do what you want. Not like to see Scrim cry. Well, okay, <laughs> that's not good. <laughs> <laughs> It's difficult to catch up with Yornir uh, while also keeping pace with Queenie, but eventually you all coalesce, and it being early afternoon, midday, mid-afternoon at this point, uh, you start to make the long trek to the actual coast coast of Drakkar, mm. um, and you can see those cliffs rising up. I mean, you've been sailing uh, in open waters along this coast for some time, and you remember it... Uh, started off uh, like a normal um, beach and then eventually started to rise up rockier cliffs, rockier cliffs, and then just pure cliffs of ice. Uh, you would have heard from Scrim, especially descriptions of uh, this rising cliff face over the many, many, many miles that you guys uh, voyaged before eventually getting caught in the ice. And uh, in half a day's travel's worth of time, I would say that you make it about halfway to the glacier ramp that will allow you to get... Thank you! Plus, uh, I don't want to be that guy, but if you are encumbered, we are going to move at half speed. I tossed 12 gold yeah, into the yeah. snow. Yeah, it's worth it. It's worth it. <laughs> right. I, I, I wait until you're not hey, looking and I reach in and toss 12 gold out to this place. Like is like Skyrim, Skyrim where you take in one additional fork and then all of a sudden you're just like... Fuck this fork. Stop. You have violated the law. <laughs> 
Uh, so carrying your gold, all, all, all five of you together, eventually you realize that night is coming and uh, it requires the, uh, the making of a camp. Um, there, unless you want to push through the night, I'm not going to stop you, but uh, it, it seems like a good place to rest on this completely flat uh, ice uh, flow that you find yourself on. And you start to make yourself into a camp. This is a good. Uh, we we found like a relatively flat place to. Yeah, to, there there are lumps and curves and and what have you, but there's a nice flat area. Seems as good as any. It's easy enough to um, wipe away from some snow. Start to make a campfire if that's what you're interested in doing, and. Um. All right. Well, uh, if you could help me pack down the snow so that we can sleep on the area and. Uh, you can start building a fire, and I'll start putting the the wood down. Do we all know how to make a fire? Oh yeah, heck in yes, these I do. Conditions. Oh, oh well, I can make fire. I'm not sure about in these conditions. I'm used to doing it in the forests, or prairie, or in a mountain range, or even in the desert. Well, um, you make the fire, and I would. Is there there's fresh snow that I could kind of manipulate? Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a surface of two, three inches of snow on uh, everything that you've walked so far. So as you were walking, you'd be hearing the crunching underneath your feet. Um, and then underneath that is like the hard pack that had crushed together as, as the ocean froze and as it was pushed by the currents. I would try to like build up a little mound, almost like a little wall against where the wind's coming from. Just to try to sort of help the, the, mm. the fire and so mm. that we're not so cold while we sleep. Presumably, so. Yes, um, that's meaningfully important. My question would be, if we are keeping a fire going for the duration of the long rest, how much, how many, how much of the bundles of wood would we burn through? Uh, one bundle per night. Perfect. Okay, no. so it'll last okay. a while because it's a good amount of wood if it's yeah, taken up yeah, two yeah. slots. Yes. Perfect. You have right now. You have six and a half bundles. So you have six mm-hmm. nights worth of, of campfire. I can only speak for my three. I have two. I have, I have two. two. I have a one. I have, no, I have, what do I have? No, I have one. I have one I have and a half bundles. I have one. So that's two and a half. I have two. Four and a half. Two. Six and a half. Nine and a half. Nine and a half. So we've got a buttload of wood. Okay. Yeah. So you've Nine got nice. one load of butts in wood. That's and true. I will be using mine tonight, though. Um, I love that. And I'm making uh, the sun starts to set. Because I'm where it's going to be hard to get wood. Nikki, you're the sun. Can you set the sun? <gasps> oh. Oh. Oh, so who, who wants oh, to. Oh, you're going to play some like thematic music? Oh, yeah. Who wants to remove the bundle of wood from their inventory for the fire? That's my question. I, I didn't remove it. No. I'll tell you. Because uh, I'm happy to free up slots, tell me. So, trust me. <laughs> I mean, you can free it up if you need. Yeah, I saw I'm just teasing. I'm just teasing. And then say say something Maybe. really awesome to me. Yes! I Once the forgot. music's going. I'm going to grab two. <clears throat> oh. The sun oh. reaches the horizon, one. and this brilliant display of orange and blue fades and gradients across the, the, the um, sea. Uh, it, it reflects against all of the um, ice particles floating in the air, swimming with this gentle breeze that's coming. And you would suspect that if you weren't able to huddle next to the warmth of this fire, that you might not have been able to weather such bitter cold throughout the day. But being within five, ten feet of this fire and sitting down there, it nourishes you, it warms you, it prevents you from mechanically taking a constitution saving throw against exhaustion and you uh find yourselves now in the the staring up at a starry sky um the overcast uh clouds of the morning having having blown through it's it, it's visible and clear in all directions and as quiet as it's ever been when it comes to the wind just the five of you sitting around the campfire smelling that um sweet, the sweet smell and choosing to do what you might Oh, cool. So you're the roasting a rat. Sweet, sweet smell of a roasted rat. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's just delicious for Scrum. <laughs> oh, my God. So I have, and I'll like basically have my I, my skillet and my mess kit all laid out, and I'll have my, my pan, 
And so I will th- I will basically have on the snow three red herring, um, one ship's biscuit, and then I'll have the barrel of of uh, of lard. Basically, I'll I'll see that you're putting that out, and I'll just toss the rat over there next to the fish. All right. It's already skipped. Oh, perfect. This will make good eat. So I think. We should be economical about how we do this. Could we could we make a stew or something? I was just about to say that. I, I knew that staying with you inside of that that kitchen or whatever in that ship was gonna do we are like Smart, smart thinking, people who think the same thing. Oh you think that we can make a stew with these with all of this and dollop of the I I got something else for you. And I rummage around in my bag and I pull out some of the um, some of the bones that I had scavenged from the wolves. Ooh. And I toss them to you. There will bone yeah. <gasps> This will last us. Does anyone have any uh <coughs> every time. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I'm the worst. The house is on fire! Um, how much in Minecraft. How much would I have to, how, how, like, so if it's a cooking lard and it's very nutritionally dense, right? It's a ton of fat. Lots mm-hmm. of sure. calories. Lots of calories. How many uh, yeah. servings would be in this barrel? That's why a medium sized barrel? In a medium sized barrel. We can come back to it. I just wanted to kind of ask. Yeah, plant the seed. Think about it. Yeah. I hadn't thought about just consuming the lard. Give me one minute. Scrim thinks about that every day. <laughs> <laughs> it's a delicacy in the gut. I'm actually shocked it hasn't come up yet. Because <laughs> Scrim actually dumpster dives for lard on a usual <laughs> basis. Because <laughs> Barnabas's thought is that the barrel There's can at least get us you. to where we'll be able to hunt. Something game. very wrong. With mm. <laughs> so to answer your calculus question, oh yeah, Thank uh, you. I just learned that hogshead barrels are much bigger than what I anticipated. Uh, thinking of <laughs> so uh, what we're going to say is that you have a, a calorie dense product in a barrel uh, not this size apparently yeah, hogshead are actually bigger than like barrels uh, oh. they're like mega barrels yeah whatever uh, yeah so a hogshead carries 300 liters of that Whoa! So, holy smokes <laughs> which is not what I was picturing That's a little I was picturing hard. like anyways yeah. um, like a cask yeah portable cask, cask. So, uh, uh, this smaller cask uh, carries 50 rations worth of lard. Okay. Wow. And so if you guys want to drink a mug of lard a night, then that'll keep you from starving, and you would be able to enjoy that for 10 days. Because there are five of us. Mm. Just had to do that math real quick. Um, I would also offer up the the opened bottle of booze to whomever would like to partake while while Barnabas is cooking. I plan on finishing. <laughs> so if anyone would like to help me, they may. You need it more than I do. I, I would I would accept uh, I would accept a sip and gladly offer a little tea in return. I would take you up on that. There you are. All right. Make a hot toddy. <laughs> I will gladly accept a mug of lard. I think we're just doing stew for tonight, and then we're going to do lard. He will gladly <laughs> accept will gladly a mug of lard. It's a fish and rat stew. <laughs> if, if you're using some of the lard and you're making a stew, I'll have some stew. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, okay. it's, got, it's got some chunks of hardtack. Uh, oh, and you got flour, top. too, didn't you? Oh, yeah, yeah. So we use the lard to make, like, biscuits. Yeah. So, so, yeah, we can make ship's biscuits, basically. We can make plenty of hardtack. What? So we oh. should make biscuits to go with our stew. I want to be on Dracar right now. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, really we got rice. biscuits and fish stew. Like, hell yeah. 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 Fish That's better than I eat on rat stew. Yeah, damn it. I got nothing here. Yeah. We, 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 damn. I give up. I want to move to Dracar. <laughs> While Barnabas is cooking, I would like yeah. to make arrows. Okay. Um, I would like to use the bundle of sticks that I because have. Because I have a handy spice box, the, it's fucking delicious because I get any seasoning that I want, basically. Mm. Any non magical seasoning. 
uh, one of your minor magical items yeah. from your backstory. Uh, he has him. the ability to salt it and decide whatever flavor he wants in That's the form of herbs. Please put uh, Tony Sacheries in there. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, no, I just... <laughs> the advanced version of Tony Sachery. I'll bend the spice container just like that. Just all of it. I once knew a lizard Ooh. fella. Yeah, Old Bay, because there's fish in it. Mm. Oh, yeah. So anyway, I, it will be very nicely seasoned. We'll just do a stew just to make the bones and all of that go, because I'm not sure how well it'll travel. Uh, so just for us to get it. While you're cooking and yeah. making arrows, I'll take a long pull from the bottle and I'll say, I hate to bring it up, but... It's kind of curious that our rations just went missing after we got close to that damn tower. I don't want to cause anybody any distress, but I can't stop thinking about it. I mean, presumably we did something with those two weeks. Perhaps we ourselves consumed our rations. I don't think they just disappeared. We were beset upon by wolves, and I think the rations were... Lightly buried. It's possible also they had just come back, drawn by our lightly doused fire, and took the rations. I think what Scrim's referring to is the rations we were carrying on our person. Oh. Two weeks. Just gone. What, what were we doing? Were we just standing there by a tower for two weeks? How did we not die? How are we here? How are we here? It doesn't make any sense. And I can't stop thinking about it. Do you think we're dead? No, we are not there to be sure. How do you know that this isn't one of the nine hells? Because this is not hell. Yeah, because this doesn't look anything like a DMV. This is the Arctic. <laughs> this is... <laughs> nothing but... Nature. Yeah, man. <laughs> this is the lion. What happened to those two weeks, I do not know. But... We know this is an L because my lover spoke to me, she embraced me, I felt her presence in the sea, and she is not a fiendish creature. I seem like I'm the only one who's freaked out by this. We lost time. Time was robbed from us, Graham. Our minds were perhaps not our own. It's very worrisome, and I wouldn't want to go back to that tower, but we have pressing concerns. Surviving the night. Last time we went to bed, we were woken up by a pack of hungry wolves. I knew of a, of a ship that saw ice out on a reef. approached it I found looked like some sort of strange pillar or statue of some slimy creatures and other abomination and when they came back their minds weren't their own like they, they were possessed they say it some just dove right into the sea right then and there minds left a good man family back home only a handful survived because they stayed away, fought them off, I'm not sure. Could all be tall tales. What have we gotten ourselves into? A lot of tall tales on the sea, you'll find, Mr. Stavisgott. Well, that is ours. You spend the next few hours talking about the tower, about your situation that you find yourself in. Queenie, you spend those hours and you were able to produce 20 arrows. Nice. Uh, consuming a full bundle. Uh, some of them weren't quite straight enough for the purposes of arrows, so they got tossed in the fire and uh, you were able to do that with the bone heads and uh, sinew that you still also have on your person. Yeah, well, I'm assuming all that's gone now. Yes, I would say that it'll require additional bone and sinew and feathers. So that was just three... You know, that was three wolves worth. And feathers. Um, and uh, do you make a, uh, a tent or do you just bedroll? Uh, I have a bedroll, so I would Cover yourself really... up in, in what blankets you have. Uh, 
I would say unless you and you specifically told me that we needed to build shelter, or yeah. you know, I wouldn't do it. I would just. I, would, I wouldn't either. I would spend a couple hours trying to build at least like a foot or two wall of snow, like packed snow, around our camp. I would help you with for sure mm. if that's what you were saying. And we then needed to do. Uh, I would help with that, and I would take the the three wolf pelts that we had, and should we use those to try and do anything with? Like maybe put them on the floor to keep us less wet? Well, I have a bedroll, but it would provide additional warmth as well. Could we fashion, use our rope to fashion uh, the wood together to make a little tent with your wolf skins? We've got three of them. Put our bedrolls down as a floor. We should all get naked and in the same bedroll. Right? That's what you do when it's real cold out. Is that what you do? You want to? We didn't have to do that where I was No, from. no. I can... We could fashion some kind of tent. I'm not sure how well it will hold, but I do have rope and we could use my walking stick to support it. Oh, it's a much better idea than tying this wood together. You notice that as soon as you said no, Scrim's pants were like already half. <laughs> and he stops and like sees that you said no and just like pulls his pants back up and like sits down without saying a word. <laughs> Fire there, we can lay in a row here, and I'll put my and I'll start to bury my my walking stick in the uh, in the snow. And um, you have do you have do we have any like, thread or anything to? I have I have my weaver's kit. Yeah, oh, that would go. be a weaver's so. kit is perfect. Holy shit, good call taking that. Um, I have rope too. I don't have any rope because I suck. I have rope as well. Rope rope would be easy to unspindle if you wanted to. Oh yeah. So we'll we'll use some rope to kind of fashion the the furs. Basically, it's just going to be sort of like a like a lead to right, where it's just sort of the, the pelts we can sew together, mm-hmm. and then we can kind of with the walking stick as the base, and then it'll sort of just it'll be open on one side, but it'll at least sort of cover us from the elements and the wind from. And it'll be like over us. Too. Did we did we build something when we were sheltering from the dragon? We had a tent from the something? captain, yeah. and then I think that that, yeah, that was like a fancy tent, wasn't it? Yeah. The yeah, dragon like finished. destroyed it. I think. Uh, yeah, it was like totally fucked by the by the wind from the dragon. Thanks, dragon. I mean, bad the dragon didn't need us, so I think we're okay with the dragon. I think we're cool. <laughs> yeah. With a night's worth of campfire and staying <laughs> within ten feet, in addition down. to the protections that you've taken, producing a perimeter and uh, an actual tent uh, in case it starts snowing overnight, that sort of thing, um, you're able to all get a very comfortable uh, night's sleep, even here on the surface of the frozen sea, and you all enjoy a long one. Mm. Oh, Thank you. Do you so, God. just as a question from a mechanical sense, are you only cooking enough stew for us to eat tonight because you don't think it will keep well? I know you'd mentioned that, like, you so kind of thought about I would all, I would say that basically Barnabas isn't, like, a survivalist, right? So okay. he's not, he, he'll try to be economical, but he's not, like, going to try to make it last. And okay. basically, if we have a whole thing of fat that's going to take us, we may as well just eat the good shit now. So and you just made enough stew for tonight? Yes. Okay, that's just so, all I was Because uh, I basically have, like, you know, one heart, and there's some hard tack as fucking, like, you know, croutons or whatever. Or not sure. croutons, but, like, uh, like, oyster crackers and shit yeah. in the soup. So I'm getting rid of all... I also want all that shit out of my inventory. Uh, I'm going to wake up early um, and spend the hour that I would need um, to make my Brutal Blade uh, my pack weapon. Oh. I have to perform a ritual to do it mechanically. Do you? Um, and I, I think that Scrim would just feel the need to do that. He wouldn't really understand why or... You know, he doesn't really understand the depths of his powers. Uh, but he would feel the need to imbue this weapon. You don't know the depth of what potential power you have in you, nor do you know its origins terribly right. well. So I, he he would just feel innately that this is something that he needs to do. It takes an hour, so I would do that uh, okay. in the morning. Um, you probably don't... You're probably not an early riser, so it's unusual that you wake up with a jolt and you feel this blade that you've been with you it just touching up against you uh, there's almost a feeling of trust companionship and uh, smoldering fire nearby you're looking around it's overcast again you see that the sun is definitely on the horizon and it's getting lighter 
and you were able to walk uh, a few feet away and find some privacy uh, on the other side of one of the uh, the perimeter that you helped Gornier build. And privately, I would uh, just lay the blade in the snow and innately do this ritual to to make it a pack weapon. But the entire time that I'm doing it, I'm scan. I'm like looking over my shoulder and I'm scanning the horizon and I'm very nervous. I'm I'm looking. I. Uh, just to see if anything's watching me or stalking me, I'm 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 nervous. Make a perception check. Natural twenty, so I got a twenty-four. I'm on fire tonight, baby. Yeah, really. Scrim really? is just always on fire. Yeah. It's these dice, the Kimba dice, <laughs> yeah. man. Three, I'm you. three nat twenties at least. You look around and your nerves calm. You feel very confident, and. Hmm concentrated as you look down at this weapon and start to go through a ritual unknown to you. You start to murmur words that you don't know the meaning of. You start to make hand gestures that you are unfamiliar with. They come to you naturally uh, as if if you were a master musician and you had amnesia and you picked up a guitar for the first time. That is a little bit like what it feels like where all of a sudden you're just naturally playing a beautiful song. That is the natural play of this ritual that falls in front of you. And before you know it, an hour is gone and you can hear there's some activity behind you, but you're so concentrated on what needs to happen. How does the ritual resolve? How does the weapon become your packed weapon? Um, are you asking me from like a mechanical sense? Or are you asking me to does it, describe? Does it, it like disappear? Does, is there some well, sort of magical flourish? Uh, so I would say that uh, there's definitely an aura of Mike. What color did we discuss? Purples and greens for my magic. <laughs> I think it was like grays and, and dark reds. Okay. And yeah. Or- so I wasn't oranges, sure which direction. Yeah. Right. Grays, so, oranges, and dark reds would be my. So I would say it's well. almost this magic that I'm casting. It almost and looks blocks. like the smoldering fire itself. Uh, in our campsite, it, mm-hmm. it's it's dark, it's smoky, it's and I, I would say that it's kind of growing as the, the ritual is happening, and then as the ritual finishes, the, the 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 color, the glow, it dies down, and I see if I can make the packed weapon disappear, and reappear, and disappear again. I try, I try it like again innately. I feel like I, it's something I can do. When you just finish the ritual, there's almost a plume of smoke that makes an outline around every little crevice and crag of this brutal blade and it looks red hot but with extreme confidence you feel you can hold it you grab the handle and you do one of these right around your Damn. finger I wish I could do that I can't yeah. what the hell and yeah, I can't show it I can't spit the pen it, evapor- <laughs> it so evaporates cool. as if as it was traveling behind your hand like one of those card tricks where you keep it between mm. your fingers it just disappears and you just you know it's there and it is and it's gone there isn't even a hint of, of arcane energy or, or smoke or anything when you don't want there to be. You can make it a little messier if you want to, and, 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 and the energies of that magic can slop out a little bit, but you feel like even if you needed to completely hide it, you'd be able to do that. Mm-hmm. I uh, smile to myself, but I'm also fearful. And, and once again, I, I look around because I'm looking for something, and I just want to make sure that I'm not being stalked. Well, keeping that roll, and it being the now early morning, you don't see what you're looking for. You feel alone and private with your ritual, but also you know that your friends are but 50 feet away. I would climb back into the, the campsite and just wait for everyone to wake up. And uh, ration tracking being what it is, um, I would say that the ration that you consume for a given day is what we'll do at the end of the of a, of a day's journey. Mm-hmm. Um, you can still RP that you're having a light breakfast, perhaps a leftover stew or something like that, but you're not going to consume yeah. the yeah, resource. Yeah, we'll finish the stew. We kept it probably... We, I'll wake up the fire, if that's even possible, on the snow, but, like, you know, if, if you can wake up the fire or whatever and get a little... We'll, re, we'll reboil it. 
And I read, I read a little bit about this because I tried to actually know what I was fucking talking about when it comes to survival. <laughs> and apparently you can just have fires right out on fucking ice like this. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. So, <laughs> um, yeah, you wake it up and it's not like submerging or creating a pool of water that it's like, I would assume that it would get consumed by melting the ice. But no, nope, you wake it up and you're able to cook, uh, cook on it without issue. I would not have looked that up if I was running this campaign. <laughs> I also, That's ridiculous. I that also wouldn't have known who the first mate or the bosun or where the bow of the ship was. My, my <laughs> campaign planning document is now 123 pages long. <laughs> That's insanity. <laughs> Very impressive. That's amazing. So. Uh, and also, we are you. on page... Like one of twelve for tonight, so <laughs> y'all y'all get fucked. Oh, oh god. Okay. Um, yeah, I would get up and I'd say, "All right, it is time to go. Let us not delay." Um, Are you okay? I think a bug just bit me on my leg. <laughs> In uh, no, like his actual Nikki got bit by a bug. It's <laughs> not good. Mm. Like a spider. Anyway, <laughs> it's in my pants. It's okay. crucially, it's crucially important to me. I'm sorry, Nikki, that you're experiencing this. Um, well, I know we're doing a lot of resource tracking. We're doing encumbrance. We're doing all these things. Know how long it would take you to starve. How I don't know. The rule is a character can go without food for a number of days equal to three plus his or her constitution modifier, a minimum of one. Three plus minimum of one. So okay. six days. Eight days or more. At the end oh, of each seven. At the end of each day beyond that, I was surprised by your constitution too. Uh, at the end of each day beyond that limit, a character automatically suffers one level of exhaustion. Okay. So if you add six to your total, that is the number of days that you could go without eating before just fucking dying. Go. Ah, right, because because um, the sixth level of exhaustion is death yep and really it's five because yeah, the fifth just, level of exhaustion you is your speed movement is zero you just lay down so and like die. <laughs> yeah you just lay down somebody's gonna carry you um welcome huffle so hello huffle welcome so huffle. 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 Uh, so with your lard and all of the other things that you are taking with you, uh, you make an additional day's travel, and you realize that uh, it, it, it really would take an additional eight, nine, ten hours of walking at a decent sp uh, speed in order to arrive at the bottom of this ramp, this glacier. And so an additional day goes by. I'm just going to mark that off on my little tracker right here. I'll mark, mark off the, uh, the barrel, the lard barrel. And arriving at this glacier, you now appreciate the epic scale of these cliffs. These cliffs of ice at this at this lowest point of, of Drakkar are not 100 feet tall or 500 feet tall. These are 1,000 foot tall ice shelves uh, on both sides. And it's only um, as you start to approach... I am so sorry what's happened I to you. I have no idea. You, there was some you kind got of really bug eaten. in my pants and it bit me right where my knee bends. Are, are you uh, sure it's a bug? Yeah, I just looked at it to see that there's like a welt now. What in the hell? So I don't know what kind of... I have a pants insect. <laughs> <laughs> a pants insect is actually a custom constitution over. saving I throw. I just reached my entire arm into my... Ow, into my pants. Like I think it's still biting me. Uh, an additional day has passed. You could choose not to create a campfire, or you could choose to have a campfire and enjoy a similar relax, but you it's its uh, an additional day to get to the foot of this glacier. It's cold as fuck. We're having another fire. Unless your grim, sorry, your near were to tell me <laughs> not to. This is I, fucked up. I know, it really is. The I, stone is so No, weird. it is really <laughs> fucked up. I hate that I made it. Uh, I'm like looking into a mirror. I'm really good about. I, today's the first time I fucked it up on stream, but uh, I fucked that up earlier. Uh, it pissed me off that I did that. So unless unless your near were to tell me not to, because I trust him as our survival guy, um, you said it was a half bundle per night or a full bundle. A full bundle. Per night? A full bundle. I okay, mean, I'm, I'm getting rid of mine. Honestly, stuff. when you go to a campsite and you buy one of those orange yeah. stretchy yeah. bags, is that enough for an eight-hour campfire? I'm being yeah. very generous. You are. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> I, 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 just, I wanted to make sure. I'm going to offer up mine this time as long as you're willing to have another fire. And as Scrim says we should have another fire, you and will say, uh, it is daylight. 
there's no. <laughs> no, he said a whole no, day no, pass. No, no, I, I, I fast forwarded this. Crazy. You, you guys just walked across the sea for eight hours, and, and we're now back it's at night. No, he's basically saying we're we're dealing with our inventory over the past day. We're now at the foot of the glacier. Yeah. We need to deal with whether we, have to stay we again. did. So it, it and was, it's nighttime, and we're settling down. To let sleep. me let me set the tone. So, on the twenty sixth day of the ninth month. You guys got to the ship and you guys had the adventure and it right. sank into the ocean. Yeah, yeah. Then we just simulated the evening of the 26th right. and you got a long rest. I'm fast forwarding us to the 28th. It's the morning of, so but we, we yeah, have, exactly. to, we have to spend bundles. the resources yes, of, of course, the... we will have a fire every night. Yeah. I thought you were saying we we're going to wake up now that this is no, no. and we'll have a fire. And Come on, give me a no. little, give me a little bit <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> It's daytime now. Okay, well, very quickly, quick, quick campfire. Very good. Hey! Now yeah, it's the right. 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 We're simulating everything. This is gonna turn into a rave real fast. Yeah. Do you have any fucking idea how many miles left you have to go? Holy shit! We've gotta blow this out. Relight it. Blow it. Blow it. Blow it. Uh, yeah, so I offer up my wood, if you know what I mean, and now I've got two extra free slots. Okay, yes, got it. And uh, it's oh, the thanks, morning. It takes you the morning to get to the top of the glacier. It is surprisingly easy to scale. Uh, it is just a long, slow, icy thing with various different crags and occasionally dead ends, but you're able to navigate it. And you walk two to four miles of glacier and a thousand feet of elevation to arrive at the top of this shelf, the shelf, the, the, the southwestern perch of Drakkar. And your heart uh, sinks when you see its more expanse of ice and snow. You can see the cliff edge on the western side of the coast, what, what is now the coast, and you can see very distant, very distant, the shimmering of what it looks like a mountain range to the east. And in front of you, a long, uh, not sheet of ice, because this is, now you're standing on a glacier, but uh, flat, rolling hills of permafrost. Are there any blood? <laughs> Are there any bloodhounds around? <laughs> I look for blood. Make a uh, perception check and an investigation check. What the fuck? Are, is there a joke I'm not getting? <laughs> yeah, he's looking for a material component. <laughs> oh, uh, it's a twelve and a uh, eighteen. Looking uh, in your immediate vicinity uh, for bloodhounds and looking all around the horizon, uh, you feel very confident that there are no bloodhounds. <laughs> what the hell component could you possibly be looking for? So I prepare to locate animals or plants. I'm like, God, that would be so useful. And then I read the material component is a bit of fur from a, from a bloodhound. <laughs> <laughs> Let me unprepare that. Kima, great fucking band. The Bloodhound game? Oh, okay. Never heard of them. Um, uh, here's what? Here yeah, you you and me, baby, ain't nothing but mammals, so let's that? do it like they do on the Discovery oh, I know Channel. That song. You've heard that yeah. song. That's the only one, though. Yeah. I couldn't name a single one. I can't. Th- or I who the band was. I would yeah. not have been able to name that. Uh, they do Learn a bunch of great today. stuff, but. Learn something today. They're not. That's not. That's not. I like bare naked ladies. <laughs> we continue onward. Yeah, we <laughs> continue onward. Oh, it is Bloodhound Gang. Okay, cool. Um, <laughs> anyways, uh, you, you do continue onward, and you realize that you have something of a choice to make. Do you continue north, dead directly through the this area? Do you follow the coast, the coastal cliffs? Or do you start to make your way towards the mountains and see what happens there? Um, what happens next is up to you. Out of character. Uh, is there, have you expressed or do we have a group understanding of why north is just what we think we need to go outside of the north? Isn't that what the dragon said? That's what I, if that's the Did case. the dragon tell us to go north? Yeah, the dragon told us to go somewhere. Because you seem to know we wanted to well, go north before the north. Yes, because the continent was to the north of us. That's, that's the reason why north was important. Now that we're on the continent, ah. north is much less relevant. Okay. Because uh, we're on land. But we know that they went north in the nose. 
Yes. Did the dragon tell us something about direction? So that's a great point. I'll be honest, I don't remember. Is there any is there any sign of, of the sledges that they may have made? Or... They were following the coast, though, right? Or they oh, were like... They just said so they went north. Presumably there might be sledge tr- tracks, or there might be... Um, hmm. You've had like two points. nights. You've had two nights to study the stars and the moon at this point, and you can say with extreme accuracy that it is indeed the twenty eighth of the ninth month, which means that when you were um, taken through time, there were it was two days travel to the basalt tower. You lost some time, and then two days traveled back in order to discover the ship where it was. Seventeen days. Seventeen. Okay. Right. So, uh, the what, what? What? Looking for tracks for a sled. Seventeen days. Well, they said five days in their letter. So twelve days ago, it, 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 snow and wind right. being what it's it was, totally, yeah. it's totally okay. destroyed. Oh, do we? Are we looking down? Or is the continent now level with us a thousand feet up? Now that you're a thousand feet up, it seems extremely flat, save for the peaks that you see on the horizon on the on your on your right to the east. Um, are there any stone cairns uh, across the the terrain where they may have left uh, notes? Make a perception check and an investigation check. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that is a uh, nineteen and a thirteen. Um, why didn't you ask that? In the terror, they that's how they like would give messages to each other. They would build these stone cairns that look like in a big flat Oh, with the, the like flat disks of stone yeah, and all like the stones the, built the, up, so this really, really cool cone and yeah, stuff like that. Miles away. Um, could, like, uh, no, messages. no. Within the the and visibility is is reasonable. It's a little hazy, um, but uh, you can almost see out to like the curvature of the earth, especially at the sea. <laughs> no. Uh. Well, at this point, I do not necessarily have a preference as far as where we go. I believe finding somewhere where there is more shelter than these flat snow plains is ideal. So, my vote is. So, all we see is basically flat and a mountain somewhere. To your left, a cliff edge. Maybe a day's walk away. Jesus. The sea. An endless expanse to the north of curved ice shape glacier. And what appears to be a very thin line to your right of mountain range. Very tall peaks in all directions. I mean, it doesn't really seem like we have much of a choice. What are you thinking? I think we go towards the mountains. Where the mountains are, we could at least find some shelter. Save ourselves some energy building, you know, snow walls or, or things like that. There's no sign of fuel, though, is the only concern that I have. Is that we only have so much wood. We the have mountains wood for... are barren? That's a good question. Do the mountains have trees on them? Can we see that part? I would say that you see the silhouette of the mountains. Um, it's what time? What time did I say that it was? It's it's you, you spent the morning Literally. finally traversing, yeah, morning so like it's there. midday. Yeah. So like the sun is straight up, but even so, at this angle, um, it would be impossible to tell whether or not so they are uh, green or slate. I don't wait. I think we head to the mountains and we make do. If we run out of fuel. Yeah, because in the mountains we could potentially find a cave which could make really good shelter. Exactly right. Mm. It seems reasonable to me. Uh, I guess even with a, a few days head start, I, I worry about what might happen if we run into the, the crew of the ship. I mean, they very, you know, explicitly said not to follow them. You think they'll be hostile? And I, that's not even to say that they went to the mountain range. I just, I'm just thinking about it. Well, to be fair, they told the captain not to follow him. None of us are the captain, so... Alright, uh, I trust you. <laughs> we should still operate under the presumption that they are our enemies, and they will cut our throats given the chance. That's very cheery of you, Barnabas. <laughs> very well, optimistic. The ship has sunk. The crew has... 
committed a mutiny. They're not our crewmates anymore. We are our own crew. Um, sorry, keep talking. I was gonna say, so, so we agree with the mountains. Then. You're uh, saying? I think, uh, I think the mountains. It's, it seems better than this unknown, cold expanse in front of us. Right. Mountains would be my vote. And for the crew, it seems like we're all just trying to survive out here. I would be on alert if they came around, but I wouldn't Im- immediately jump to calling them enemy. I hope not. I hope we can all be friends. Um, let me commune for a moment. Sure, go ahead. And I will, um, you'll see my eyes kind of flash blue, and, uh, I'll wave my, my staff around, and, um, from the staff, kind of this, like, bright blue... Uh, Arctic light will sort of shimmer and then materialize into a very large owl. And what? will then fly and then perch on top of my staff. And it's a, it looks like a large uh, Eurasian uh, eagle owl. And we'll say Omen, please lend me your eyes. And I will cast. I will use uh, my wild sheep ability to use the find familiar spell and summon an owl uh, named Omen, who will badass. Uh, I would like to have the owl fly up, and I believe I can at least a hundred feet up, and I can see through its eyes uh, as long as it stays within a hundred feet. So I'm going to send it as high up as it can, so it has a little bit more vision. Okay. Um, and then just see if it can see any sign of either the crew, or if it can get a better sense of, of our surroundings. 100 feet is a different story. Uh, none of you were aware of the glacier ramp until Scrim climbed a 100 plus foot mast, even at an angle. He was able to see what you weren't able to spy before. And you ascend your... Uh, one eye glowing particularly bright. The other one, a flash, but this one's sort of slowly kindling down and fading. Uh, you're able to see through the eyes of this owl, and yes, there does appear to be the mountain range. It's not uh, an illusion or a mirage or anything along those lines. Um, straight ahead of you, maybe... A four or five day walk at this angle you can already see that there is in fact some sort of a structure directly to the north and you don't see anything along the coast so reaffirming what you started to feel that perhaps the the mountains may provide shelter or this new piece of information which is there there may be something just dead north just like the crew said that they would travel uh, the owl continues to circle. Would you like to look for anything else, or, um... Um, I would just keep it as long as it lasts, uh, I think it's an hour. Let me just make sure I understand. Wild Companion, uh, don't need to use material components. Uh, it's fey instead of beast, and it disappears after one hour. So basically... I would just have it stay up there for an hour, just flying a hundred feet up, and um, I'll turn to the group and I'll say, uh, "Straight north, there are some kind of structure. It's hard to see, but perhaps some sort of makeshift camp that the crew left." As long as it's not one another one of those towers. It's a four to five day journey uh, compared to how many days do I think it would take to get to the mountains? Five or six which is about similar distance to the mountains. Does it look like it could be shelter? It looks like some kind of structure. We could probably use it uh, for shelter, yes. Well, I mean, if we go all the way out to the mountain range and we're wrong about the trees, and that could be disastrous. 
at least we think that we might be able to use something of, of the structure. I, I just don't know. If, if it's similar, I, I don't have any experience with this. Oh, yeah, we can ship it for parts. If it's made of wood, we can burn it. We can always head to the mountain range after, right? It's made of stone, at least. It's built in st- structure. Mountains, it's hard to say. It's more of a risk. The structure is going to be a secondary concern to food if we can't find somewhere to get food. <laughs> Very astute. Speaking of that, does anyone happen to have a clump of bloodhound fur on them? <laughs> what? If what? so, Why? I could locate... Wait, what a coincidence of <laughs> this whole time. Are, I'm you, at this. are you being serious? Yeah, well, sort of. I mean, I dogs just, are bad luck on a ship. Is this your idea of a joke? No, it's if we had some, I could help us find something to hunt. Unfortunately, I don't believe we do. So. Bloodhound fur. Yes, bloodhound fur. And you think Barnabas is mad? Yeah, this is how the... Natural magics work. You know what? I do not decide. I'm not going to ask. You That's fine. You know me. Hey, you know what? So be it. Everybody, well, everybody has their own thing. Well, let's make it onward towards the structure. So we are saying to travel north. We can't know which path is correct. We can't know what lies at the end of it. We can only choose. We only know mm-hmm. the only civilization is those islands to the north east. We have to walk across the entire God's damned continent to do it. That's our only lead. I'm fine heading north. Eventually we'll run into something. You're right. Seems sound. Let us head north. And I will keep Omen for at least two hours. So I'm just going to use my, my both wild shapes um, to keep Omen up there for two hours as we Damn. march north. Alright. Okay. <clears throat> um... Because of how much time you have to travel for the sake of brevity, I'm going to say that we're just going to subtract rations for each day and make sure that you're eating or not eating. Let me know. We have to walk through that mechanically. So how many days are we going? Uh, You guys will be traveling for four days. We'll just have a cup of lard. We need need four volunteers for removing wood from inventories. I can uh, get rid of mine. I can tell you that. That's two. I can get one rid of one. That's three. I'll get rid of two. I don't have any wood. I have two wood, so I'm good. Okay. So, yeah. That's four. Mall and then I've wood. still got two I'm left. I'm out of wood. So, I've got two left. So you need to figure out how many, because you're one, he's two. I can get rid of two. I'm one. Okay. That's four. So, so that's four. four. So you're protecting yourself against, and it's getting colder, the freezing cold weather uh, that it is in the um, uh, most southwestern area of Drakkar. Over the four days, I would like to try and track for animals, mm. um, and especially birds. So could I do that? You may. Just one moment. Because I'm a rangy rangy. Yeah, you're a rangy ranger. rangy. Make, make a ranger roll. What do you want me to make? Just one or four for each day? Uh, we'll take them day by day. Uh, I think I'll actually I'll, I'll do one. Otherwise, because we're going to have to compress some time here. Let me just make sure that I know what I'm fucking what doing. my first day roll stops? And my fourth day roll would have been awesome. Now it's fine. <laughs> no, that's cool. It's cool. That's cool. You're gonna have to be your like food fun. tracker guy. Um, we'll let it run. Yeah. You know, I'm, like, I'm assuming nature rations. or yeah. survival. Dorike. Say again. Uh, survival. Yes. Uh, so that would be 24. Uh, with a 24 of survival, uh, I will say that on the second day you will glimpse what appear to be some sort of a winged beast on the coast as you look westward. You do see that there are some two birds doing a little diving before dipping down behind what you assume is the edge of the cliff uh, face. Are are we close enough for me to shoot them out of the air? You are like a two days walk away from from the cliff edge. Oh. So if you can shoot... (laughs) So no. So if you can shoot... Well, thanks for that 18. If you can shoot, you know, like... 19 miles, then <laughs> you're golden. <laughs> um, we're heading north. I'm trying to 
figure out how to articulate this. As you are moving forward for however many miles and then settling and enjoying a campfire and then going to rest, the rest feels very hollow. Uh, you do not enjoy mechanically a long rest, even though you sleep for eight hours, starting with your arrival in Dracar. Your first yeah. night is a little restless. Your second night, all right, we've walked all day, we've eaten. Your head hits the bedroll. Again, you would only enjoy mechanically the benefits of a short rest. It feels dry. It feels, you're not haunted, you don't dream, or perhaps you even have dreams that are of the usual sort, but you're not being nourished magically the way that you're used to your entire lives, all of you, any of you who are familiar with magic in that way. You are starting to realize that there's some block or barrier, third night. You really take the energy to focus and think through what it takes to have a, a real sleep. And you sleep, and you feel like if you were exhausted, you'd wake up with energy, like physical energy, but your magical reserves are not restored for whatever reason. Or at least if you used a cantrip or, or, or a first level spell, that spell doesn't seem like it would get back to you. So what you're holding on to, for whatever reason, you have no idea what will unlock this or how to prevent it but it's on the fourth morning that you uh, know that you're a day's walk away uh, with this new knowledge that Drakkar may have additional mysteries to share with you. What the hell? Do we feel like short rests are? Short rests are absolutely a thing. Uh, a, if you take a short rest, it's a short rest. If it's a long rest, it's a short rest. Oh my god. So every rest that we would take I would send up Omen into the sky to just kind of keep a perimeter, just so that we have that eye that can see a little further than we can. Uh, so you can... It's two wild shapes per short rest. So yeah, yeah, yeah. You've got, you've got plenty of Omen. To, uh, uh, it, 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 for cantrips and those kinds of uh, short rest restorables, you're able to uh, get back to where you need to be. Those kinds of magical reserves, you're at least able to... But they don't take the same kind of energy as something like a real spell spell, certainly. Oh, so, no. Omen, you snap your fingers, lands down, you give him a little instruction, you're able to share your vision, and you're able to swoop around. Um, it's silent. It's amazing how quiet this space is, uh, especially without the crew around. You've been used to weeks and weeks and weeks with a, a busy, claustrophobic, confined ship being what it is, and you are... Uh, now in the open expanse, uh, um, breathing in the nature, drinking mug after mug of lard in order to keep your body moving, and we're running out. Too. Are yeah. we? Yeah. We have one more day. Or no, no, no. We have four more days. Four more days. Mm. As you are using Omen, you are starting to see this uh, structure that you spotted, this dot that has gotten bigger and bigger. And uh, from uh, the few distances that you spy, you're not able to see any creatures in any direction, uh, nor uh, are you, Queenie, able to find any tracks or anything along those lines. The weather remains remarkably stable, though it is getting colder. The only thing keeping you warm are the nightly campfires, uh, uh, staving off the, the terrible cold where you sort of recharge those batteries at least and you are able to see more and more that this looks like a pillar wedged in the snow with perhaps a few other items screwed about and uh, on your how many days did I say? Fourth day? Fourth day. I, I don't like the description of a pillar. <laughs> I'm not a fan. It's trundle. Uh, you're yeah. all finally able to see what it is that uh, Yornir has been describing. Uh, it is indeed a uh, stone obelisk uh, jutting out, um, but jagged cuts at the top, and you can see the tip of which has fallen down uh, uh, to its side. You're now 500, 300 feet away, and you're able to uh, uh, approach this site. Uh, 
S I T E and S I G H T, and uh, it it looks like a it looks like what I just described a, a, a stone a stone thing does in, the, in the middle of no. It does not appear to be a basalt. It appears to be uh, smooth stone, um, very uh, like andesite uh, in in quality. I don't know what that word means, mm. but I trust mm. you that it's safe. Uh, <laughs> it's a it's a it's a um, uh, a brighter stone color than b- basalt by a, by a mile. It's it's a light gray. Gotcha. Okay. Um, does it look in the same exact shape as the one that we saw on the island? No, it is not. It does not have um, uh, six sides. Uh, it has uh, four sides. And as you start to get closer and closer, uh, you start to see that it, it, it's 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 wedged deep into um, this permafrost that you've been walking on this entire time, your shoes still crunching against the snow that you've been walking on. This is not what I expected. Is it another track? It is different from the first pillar. It's intrigued by the power of this place. Yeah, yeah, I gotta be honest, I'm not so keen on getting closer to it. Perhaps we have a way to assess the danger. Would someone like to go first? I think I heard Tai Shen volunteer. <laughs> I was gonna say. All um, right, I'll go. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Queenie, the the bravest among you, uh, you start to walk forward, and um, it's just what was written on the tin. Um, there's a large. A uh, column of stone jutting up, and then it is clearly been sundered, broken, and what appears to be the tip lies about eight feet away from it on its side, um, eventually tapering to a point, and uh, you get thirty feet away, fifteen feet, ten, walking all around it. Um, you can see a that there seems to be some sort of a marking on the two sides of the tip that you can see and um, also that this this obelisk uh, it goes deep down into the ice um, it doesn't appear to be sitting on the ice this is not a stone that's just on the top of it it appears to be that the ice is formed all around it you don't know how deep it could potentially go I touch it you walk up and you touch it and it's very cold to the cut touch stone cold um, you don't stick to it, but uh, you're able to sort of wipe it a little bit. Uh, you don't experience any terrible explosion or anything along those lines. There's no danger. It's, it seems threat-free from what you can tell. Y'all, this is just an obelisk. Is there anything around it besides of just the stone and the cracked piece? As you approach and hearing Queenie's words, you're now all starting to gather around. You can see it's just those two pieces, the the upward, uh, what may be the top of an obelisk going perhaps dozens of feet down, and the um, tip that's lying eight feet uh, across. And as you get closer, you start to see that chiseled into the faces of this uh, tip, there appear to be markings, and they are alien and familiar at the same time. They are familiar in the sense that they feel runic in quality, but they are alien in the sense that they were clearly carved by a very different culture. So even though you don't know the meaning of those, uh, of, of the of the symbols that you see on the top and the side, um, there's uh, clearly a, a singular meaning to each symbol the way that you might interpret your runes. This is the runic alphabet I do not know. But perhaps at one time there was magic in this structure. You mean before it was broken? Perhaps the breaking destroyed the magic or dispelled it. I would add one additional detail, which is to say that as you are actually looking at the um, jutting obelisk, uh, it's 
four or five feet out from from uh, where you're actually standing, uh, tall, and there's like a core almost, uh, a, a, a singular hole that goes down the center, and uh, it's it's crystalline. It, there's there's almost like a oh, shit. Uh, some sort of a like a wand core almost to this obelisk and you you can see that it's bre- broken and fragments are nowhere to be seen this could have been broken a year ago a decade ago a century ago it's impossible to tell but this it, it does appear to be sitting there uh my right eye will flash with that bright light blue and i will cast uh detect magic Ooh. and i would like to see what if anything appears magic if anything blows at all See what I can see. Um, are you casting it? Casting it, or are you? Uh, yeah, yeah. I'm uh, as a fear bolt. I can do it uh, once per short rest. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I I know that detect magic also comes as a ritual, so I didn't. No, know yeah, I'm just casting. You just yeah, you yeah. just you just detect magic. Um, and fear bolts are cool. Yeah. Your eye sees. Uh, a matrix of, of, of magical par- particles, but they don't seem to be attracted to anything. They're as still as, as snow frozen in time. And that tells you that because they're not being pulled in any direction and coalescing around magical items, that they are not themselves magical. The Detect Magic spell has indicated that this is a non-magical obelisk. If it ever was magical, you you would guess that the magic has faded. Hmm. Is not magical, at least any longer. Are you telling me we traveled four days for a piece of rock? It does kind of seem like there's no, nowhere for us to take <laughs> shelter here. Someone must have built this here for a reason. There must be something in the area that allowed them to come here. Well, Tashi, back home I used to like to read uh, pamphlets about like history and stuff. Hmm. And anytime you find one of these ancient things, the historians will tell you it was a ritualistic site or it was for a burial. So it's one of those two things. Can't be anything else. Oh. That's what they all say, I promise. Every single one. Well, if it's a burial site and somebody carried the body here for five days, surely they had... Or it could be a ritualistic site for worship. Mm, well. But those are really the only two options. I've read a lot of the pamphlets. So are you saying we traveled here for just a rock? Well, to find a probably never before seen uh, new archaeological discovery, but that's not really relevant to any of us, so... Mm-hmm. Well, the good news is that I hopefully, or hopefully we won't lose another two weeks. The <laughs> challenge is that there is no fuel here, so what we have is what we have. Do we think there's something below here worth digging for, or do we think it's miles of fucking ice? I agree with Tai Shan that this did have to be built. Well, they could have been built centuries, millennia. For some kind of burial, or for a temple, or some kind of religious purpose. Or perhaps beings beyond the stars came down and built it. For a burial, or some kind of religious purpose. <laughs> for like a temple. Um. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't think that it's going to do anything for us. I think we should head towards the mountain. How tall is the... Uh... Is the structure? The structure Remaining. sticking out of the ice is about four, maybe five feet tall, and the um, tip is an additional three, three feet long stone. Pretty, pretty sizable, but perhaps liftable, perhaps turnable, with enough strength. We came all this way. Should we? Try and put it back together, see what happens. Do you have sovereign glue? I don't know what sovereign glue is. You got a horse? Uh, well. Oh, you do have a horse. With you? 
I can turn into That's a good question. If you a turn into a horse or caribou, if I cut your feet off and tried to use them to make glue, when you stopped being a horse, would you still have feet? <laughs> I believe in the mechanical sense, it would disappear. I believe that's how the. So you cannot provide us glue? No, I cannot provide us glue. But then we don't have a horse. With weight and friction, it would be enough to hold the pieces back together. What would? Friction. What? Well, I guess I probably don't understand the concept of friction, but the, <laughs> the heavy weight would would keep the stone in place. We could put it back together, but I don't know if it reactivates the magic and we lose another two weeks. Is that really what we want? Oh, he's not the same kind of stone, is it? It's not. Were there runes on the last one? There were Nothing. markings. There were no, mar- there were no markings oh, on there were no smooth. markings yeah. on the base all towers. It was eerily smooth. It was smooth. totally smooth and it was uh, a um, hexagonal prism. I wrote down that it was hexagonal. Yeah, that's important. I did. I wrote it's very down. important. Let's see if we can flip this over, Mr. I Runier. don't think that's a good idea. There is a core, a magical core to this. I don't know if I want to chance it. I don't want to have traveled five days through an icy tundra. <laughs> On fat water. Thought it was quite good. I mean, it was considering the fact it was fat water. That to get spiced. here. That's all we got. To get here, put a top on a ice rock, and they get blasted back into two weeks. Well, I mean, we'll just die. Uh, two weeks of uh, out here. Because what happens if that happens again? All the rations Barnabas has left, which isn't much. I've been sneaking a peek in his bag. We'll, we'll die. This is true. Perhaps two of us put it back on, the rest of you stay far away. And what happens when you're blasted two weeks in the past? Then we're not together anymore. We lost two of you. I believe I was called to this land for a reason. I don't know what the reason is. But I believe it was fate. Sure, I agree with that. And I think that fate leading us that map ranger. Fate brought us this direction, not that direction. No, your bird brought us this direction, because you said you thought that there was some kind of structure we could live in. This is a structure, is it not? Not that we could live in, so that's only half correct. It's a burial, or a temple, to some kind of god. I'm going to attempt to put the stone We're gonna die. in place. Kashi. I'm gonna walk that direction about please, 100 feet. Please back me up on this, Tashi. We're gonna die. I'm, I'm with Yorni. Like what do you mean you're with Yorni? You got the most sense out of anybody here. Oh, uh, Mr. Yorni, I haven't. Uh, I'm I staying see, in shape. I see Barnabas and Tai Shen thinking about helping, and I run. <laughs> I run about 100 feet away from this tur- this tower, and I watch from a very safe distance. And I sit down in the snow. And I, I just kind of put my head in my hands, and I'm like worried that this is going to be a disaster. Well, how much? Anchor. How much rope do we have? Who has rope? I have fifty feet. I have fifty feet. I have fifty feet. I have zero feet of rope. Um. And I'm also hundred feet away. What? <laughs> what if we attempt to put the structure together, or tie together the ends of rope? Tie the rope around Yornir and Barnabas. And as they put the structure together, if something starts to go wrong, we can pull them out. We can stand back a safe distance and pull them away from it. I'm gonna go out there with, and I can't believe I'm saying this, the smartest person I've met so far, Scrim. And I'm gonna notch my arrow. And one of, and one of you turns into a horrific alien goblin monster and starts eating the rest, I'm gonna shoot you in your head. I look at Scream. I'm 100 feet away. Who's an <laughs> alien goblin monster? <laughs> as far as the concerned. <laughs> <laughs> and this, I'm gonna be honest with you, I like all of you. I really do. I don't want anything to happen to you. And this is why I suggest you stay away. Well, that's just kind of rude. No, it is for your Well, I'm gonna safety. stay right here then. <laughs> Are you thumping your foot? <laughs> I'm gonna stay right here. <laughs> like crazy rabbit. You want me fire. to leave? Well, I'm gonna stay right here. 
Do you want to be tied up by rope too, then? What? No, I don't want to be tied. Oh, we're just Can not I doing she... the rope thing, huh? <laughs> this is not the time for your weird I sexual shit. Oh. We're trying to figure out what's going on with this stone. You walk to the tip and you Gross. put your hands underneath <laughs> the long broken shaft. And <laughs> classic maneuver. Uh, and and you start to lift. You realize uh, you have a good amount of strength, but that you will need. Uh, the assistance of a few good men to, uh, or woman, to uh, get this up high enough to get to the four feet to potentially maneuver into a place where you can erect it. Mr. Yornir, I'm going to give you some leverage and then do what it is that you do. Does it feel like between the two of us we could manage it? Yes. Slowly, but yes. On three. One. Two, three, three. And we'll get it up, and it's awkward, and it almost slips, and then you. Oh, God, oh yeah, that you, bone broth. You worry you might twist something, and then you finally start to get it into a place where it's uh, 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 actually sitting on there, and and and. Balancing it, making sure you don't tip it over I'm the gonna other rage. side. I'm gonna like. I'm gonna like. Oh. I'm gonna get covered in seawater. Um. And uh, yeah, I'm on barnacles, and I'll just okay. It's not sweat; it's seawater just <laughs> dripping off. Uh, barnacles and, uh, are gonna grow uh, out of uh, me. Are your eyes black? No. <laughs> Um, Different iteration. And <laughs> even though it takes five, ten, fifteen minutes, you are able to put the uh, flat end of this tip against the actual uh, obelisk uh, itself and turn it if you want to. Whoa. And it's not it's not like you're rotating it it's just that it's impossible to tell exactly how it should have sat enough Ooh. enough weathering has happened on both edges that um, you're not sure which flat face f- faced which flat face huh. um, but you <laughs> tomb raider style are able to <laughs> twist it a little bit and go okay there are marks on all f- four faces of this obelisk just before it tapers immediately to a point at the top which face is the correct one? And what happens next is up to us? Hmm? And what happens next is up to us? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I will try to examine, now that it's like kind of back on top of each other, I'm going to try to go around all four sides, however we ended up like put, placing it, to see if I can gather any kind of patterns, or does do they seem... Basically, try to find any kind of similar runes, top and bottom, and try to like put them together. Two of the runes match. Two two faces are actually almost identical. It's mm. it's three lines and then a, and then a vertical line like so. Like through them. Um, why don't I get something to draw on? It it, it would be really great if my DM prep was let's make the runes, but like line uh, line line. Uh, them. yes. If I could get some index cards, I'll draw them. <laughs> Uh, you have some. Look for some. No, not yeah. even close. It was a good guess. It was, it was a close guess. <laughs> what did you guess? If I do say I so much, three lines ah, and then a line. Ah, three. No, see, I did one next to it. Three. That's very close. Oh, okay. you bastard! <laughs> Thank, you. Yeah, Thank you. Thank you. All right. So, like a disconnected uh, reverse E, capital E. We're about to find out. Oh, oh, they're squiggly lines. Oh. They say they're squiggly lines. This matches two of the faces. Um, well, together is the connection. Let this rotate so that they match up. I'm not smart enough for this. And so we're gonna rotate it so that those two sides are together, like in the same on the same face. Um, let me ensure that I'm describing this correctly based on what you just said. I think he's saying that they're, those two symbols are identical so on different sides of the feet. If this is a four-dimensional, a four-sided thing, oh. there's two sides have... Oh, 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 okay. Yeah. And that's the top or the bottom? The top. This, the, is, this is the bottom where you can rotate, okay. and this ta- top tapers to a point. So the, the runes that we are talking about are on the point, or on the tip. They're on each face of the. But I'm saying on the tip portion. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. It's yeah. On the, the tip top portion. Half. Exactly right. Yeah. And there are no runes on the bottom portion. Got it. What are the other two runes on the Then bottom? there's a rune that looks like this. Whoa. Okay. 
then. Yeah, I didn't get that one. Can you show it one more time? Sure. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll like, show you. It's like a T, but with like. It's so, like. Yeah. So it's two it's like lines. Ah, okay. And then, a, it's flat and then. Yeah. But it like hooks. It's like the house from Super yeah, Mario Yeah, it looks World. like this guy. So. With the Yoshis. Let me just make sure Yoshi's I'm doing this. Yeah, you yeah. With the apples. Yep. Uh, squiggly squigglies. Squiggly boo. And then squiggly boo. And then this guy. Whoa. Oh, it's over like here. Oh. Like so. Fuck. Hmm. And then finally, this guy on the opposite face over here. Oh, okay. Like this. Like this. Things. Okay. Uh, I will rotate it so that the this points the mountains. Faces the mountains. So that this faces the mountains? Yes. Oh, brilliant. Faces the mountains, or when you're looking at it, the mountains are behind it? We'll do faces the mountains first. Oh. oh. Okay. Uh, so when it faces the mountains, then... Oh, actually, here, hold on. Whatever faces the sea. I really should have made an object for this, shouldn't I? What a, what a stupid puzzle to get stuck on. <laughs> <laughs> So and hold, so, are the faces perfectly northwest, east, and south? It's a square, yeah. It's okay. a cube. But like, it's not like like if if is one face facing directly, like straight north. You can turn any of the faces to face north because you can turn the tip of the. Well, top. I mean, the, the the base is presumably also square. Right? Yes. So did, and was it built? the base absolutely is cardinal. Okay, okay perfect. Um, all right, I believe that. There is a directionality here. Thanks to my walking stick, I always know which way is north. <laughs> uh, and so there is. Can, can you just show me the, the three different rooms? Thank you for the follow, Canary. Yeah, the follow. What's your proof? Can you give me a, uh, a note card and I can I can do this for you real quick? I don't have a fourth, uh, fifth note card. Give me a piece of paper, Mike. I oh. need a book. <laughs> so you've got this guy. You've got this guy, and you've got this guy in twofold. Nice. And where's the Where's the water in relation to us, like the sea? Uh, there it. You know that there is uh, sea so south there... of you, and that there is sea west of you. Okay. Is it possible with how the rune is shaped that the green one is facing north, that the mountains are facing east? And that the two squiggly lines are facing west and south. Yes, but only when you are looking at them and seeing the destination. That See, there how, you go. That is how I Look, would like to... Here, now you've got one. Knowing that the mountains are to the east, the expanse is to the north, and the, the sea is both south and west of us. Mm -hmm. I would like to, yes. So green, green card, it, once you once you work out that if these, if these are the coast and the coast, yes. south and west, then this is facing north yep. when you're, looking, when you're at looking at it. And then this is facing east It'll be towards the, west the, towards the mountain mm -hmm. range yes. that you know is there. Mm -hmm. Yes. yes. So you even You've that. now deduced the Drakkar Cairns. So I will will rotate it in place. Tun, tun, tun. And I see my eyes kind of I can kind of see the mountains as I'm looking at the mountain room. Some sort of uh, Tomb Raider sound effect occurs when you finally <laughs> lock into place. <laughs> I didn't even have to cast idea. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, looking at it, you feel like you have have the Eureka that you were looking for. I'm going to smoke my pipe, and then when, when Yuri tells me to do something, I'll... Rotate. <laughs> Rotate, and I'll, I'll, I'll just have, I'll have Barnabas do it as I'm standing back a little bit and looking. And then I'll tell him to stop once it's in, in the place that I think it needs to be. Um, does anything happen? Anything like magical? Or... From the distance behind no, and How's it going? I'd say less time has passed that your detect magic is 10 minutes. Yeah. Yeah. I believe that it's a 10 minute duration. I, I'd say that even once you got it on there, you were kind of keeping your eye out and there's been no magical activity at this site that you can sense. What's going on? You can come I'm, back, it's fine, there's no danger. I'm gonna go out on a limb here and say I think this is simply a signpost. 
letting you know the coast is that way and that way and the mountains are that way and that weird t-shaped hut's back that way you know, hearing queenie's words you all picture yeah it, right now your visibility has been very high it's been an unusually stable and quiet uh week of travel but if you were in a snowstorm and it was visibility zero, you were in a whiteout or something like that, and you finally came across one of these signposts, what a valuable thing to have as a navigational system. What, what did we discover? It's a signpost. Wait, really? That's it? It yeah. is a directional tool. Although there is this gem core to this that seems unnecessary, if that was simply the purpose. I told you. It's an ancient piece of stone, it's a ritual signpost, or it's some kind of religious holy signpost where they do it's maybe a temple structure or something. Signpost? Or signpost. Aerial signpost? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> so is the sea behind us? The sea is, if you're facing north, yes, the sea is behind us and to, to the west. So what is this strange symbol with the the lines going down. That's probably letting us know how to get to the massive temple structure complex. That is a great observation. I mean, I really want it to be a house, but that might just be me thinking that it, it wants it to be a house. I don't know what that is. It does seem to depict some kind of other structure. The others are... Could it be a bridge? Tyshan, make a uh, history check for me. Ooh, maybe a bridge? That's a good guess. Could it be a river? Three, three rivers. Mm. Unlikely. Oh, what if it's a really nice seven? What if it's another signpost? Twist it. Twist it. Twist There's twist something it. tickling twist in the back of your brain. Well, I'll twist it. Oh, Would yeah. you like to use one or two? We're using yeah. two. I remember. Uh, I used to. Okay. Or you were going to use two. Thank you for the twist. Yeah, I really wanted to. I really wanted to. What the hell is that? That was a seven. Oh, okay, so yeah. definitely. Really definitely. Sevens different, different and ones look oh, so oh, similar. Use like, right, 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 right. the fire oh, one. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Use yeah, the fire yeah, yeah. one. <laughs> so nervous. Don't fuck this up. So Two sevens? sevens? It was faded. Wow. It was faded. It's a plus uh, one for history. So eight. So eight. You're, looking, you're looking at this symbol in particular and these other symbols and... There's something very familiar. He, he, your, near, your near is the expert in runes. You've seen him carving on the the, ba- the, the, the railing of the ship and in other rooms of the ship. Uh, you know that he risks runes from time to time. Um, you've never seen runes like this in stone, but it speaks to you, these, these runes. You, you, you want to unlock this memory, but you're going to need some more time to really like think on it. So I guess this means that we're still having to think about maybe going towards the mountain range. We have to make a decision. We can't stay here all day. Believe that this is pointing the shape of this room if the others are a clue implies some kind of building or structure which the mountains do not. Some sort of civilization. Probably the temple complex. So you want to change course? No, Stay I on the same course. I think we would continue north. Well, I meant change course based on the fact that we were thinking the mountains were the yes, next best thing. Yes, yes. Okay, all right, all right. We're on the same page. Don't need to yell. <laughs> I'm speaking into the dirt. Stop yelling! <laughs> Fuck! I don't think I've yelled the entire time I've been here. <laughs> I don't know. You sound a little honorary to me. <laughs> Just saying. Something about these symbols are very familiar to me, but I just can't quite place it. What do you mean? I'm not Somewhere. sure. Why don't you have a cup of calming tea and try again? Oh, that's a great idea. <laughs> I think if anything, uh, Jordan is the one who needs the calming tea. Well? <laughs> no need to yell at Tyshen. <laughs> Were you yelling at me? I thought that was the voice you've always used. This is my only voice. <laughs> are you upset? No, not at all. Oh, phew. Holy shit. (laughs) (laughs) Tell me, me, Taishan, more of this. What is your feeling? What is your Ah, sense of this room? I just know... that I know something. 
about these. They seem so familiar to me, but nothing's quite coming to mind. It's swirling. Uh, it sounds like at the very least, then you think maybe that's the direction we should go. I mean, that sounds like your vote. Am I wrong? <laughs> well, can we take a moment? Let me think about it. Let me see if I can remember. We'll brew uh, a pot of tea. We'll take just a... Uh... No snacks. <laughs> oh, well... <laughs> How do you uh, brew tea in this extreme environment? Um, <laughs> well, you've got plenty of water. Uh, yeah, I would probably try and. Um, well, so I think the last time I did this, I did, I brewed the tea rel- like effectively just through magic, um, but I have. Um, several different ways to create fire just like if you've got a my... fire creating cantrip i'll give that to you you can just hold and 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 yeah so i have fire bolt which is like a fire attack cantrip and then i also have control <laughs> <laughs> it's dragon glass you can't blow it up with fire um couldn't even blow up the shoe with fire so um I have Firebolt and Control Flames. All is I, I would say between the two, you, you, you can genuinely warm things enough to the point where you're able to boil a pot of tea and you're able to create a pot of tea, and you do that. And pretty quickly you're pouring and brewing uh, the tea that you have uh, unlimited amounts of somehow. Uh, I guess we right. probably should have made that a minor magical item. <laughs> and Well, the teapot is a minor magical item. Oh, that's right. Just, yeah. quick, just getting the water hot means that you can... Mm-hmm have oolong or you can have earl gray or you can have black oh, tea or you can have you can have a variety of teas just come out without leaves leaves not required we did handle that magic yeah, item style there you, are. And, you thought of everything uh as you're pouring um you look at uh the can you remind me or can anyone remind me the name of your i think it's nephew the, or niece, niece your Mei niece, Ling. Mei Ling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, the inscription on the side of the um, teapot, hmm. you realize the calligraphy is very sim- similar. The characters are no longer the same, but the nature of the marks and the way that they are, ma- are made into the pot is just like the writing of your um, hometown. And that these runes have a draconic feeling to them. I got it! You guys are gonna laugh about this, but what I should have recognized very quickly is that these are written in an extremely similar depiction to my own draconic etchings. Not my etchings, but etchings of my people. These are Draconic runes. Well, give me a cup of that. <laughs> <laughs> this is no. Oh, he still don't get it. Here you go. But this, it's just that one. It's not the others. It's just the all. All four. Um, you talk amongst okay. yourself uh, right. and can confirm. Um, it looks like this was built by um, perhaps a dragonborn uh, like yourself. Hmm. This is fate. I believe it. Uh, I believe we continue north. It is a better sense than the mountains. Though it's hard to say. Oh, can you... Are there any... Like, Is it similar to the Dr- Draconic language? Or would there be other kind of, like, you know, scripts that might mean a similar word that kind of looks like that, right? More like how, you know, different languages, they might have sort of a character that like it looks sort of similar and they mean the same thing. Um, I primarily mean, primarily mean that etymologically you, you can look at language and you can go back, 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 centuries, centuries, generations, 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 and you can kind of get a sense of like that there was a shared language that may be forgotten to history. And branching and branching and branching and branching, even though this may have been a totally different type of dragonborn or dragon civilization or something along those lines, there it, it has a, a, a draconic feeling to it in the nature of the marks, um, the, like wide marks that 
come down to points almost like a claw like uh uh, uh mm. very very specifically there are there are, uh, don't look too closely at this illustration i'll 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 come up with some more like runic rune, runes that have a draconic feel to them but um generally speaking these uh what taishan is describing in it and as you examine the runes on his on his glass you can see that there's like kind of a similarity to the to the markings that were made into this stone as were his teapot you know i think that the one that means mountains it looks like if there was maybe a dragon turtle born who happened to be a stealth fighter and loved uh, discs of uh of a pizza when you're pointing upwards. I look at I look at Barnabas and I say, to me it just looks like a middle finger. And I flip him off. <laughs> um, now the question is where do we go? My vote's still for the mountains. I mean I, I certainly don't know any better than anyone else, but you you seemed pretty adamant about continuing north. As did you I think we continue north. The only symbol that doesn't seem to reflect just the elements is the one that directs us to the north. But if this is an ancient, useless, ruined religious thing, burial thing... It's a thing, religious signpost, also sign a burial post, chamber. Then who's to say that it's not just some empty, just a ruined city? Made by dragons. That's a great point. There might not be anything north. Just a bunch of useless stones like this. I'm for the I'm for the mountains. Screw me or the toy breaker. Oh, the seriously? Could be just a pile of useless stones. I, I really don't want to pick. I, I mean, I guess I could flip a coin. <laughs> it just seems appropriate. <laughs> I don't know why it came to me. Almost a Written in the weird. Well, I mean, you talk about fate all the time, right? Why not? Ah. Please do. I pull a coin out from the hundred and one that I did not dump in the snow. Mm. I'm going to flip it and let it hit the snow, or the ice, presuming that it will land flat. And uh, the yes side will be the mountain range. The no side will be north. Are we all in agreement? I'm so nervous. I say this out of character. We cool with that? I, mean, I would, yeah. I would like you to range? describe the coin, though, before you, like... Uh, it's a normal gold piece. Okay, okay. This is a normal gold piece. It is not my magic coin okay. that you saw me mm. use. It potentially saw me use in the bar in yeah. our session zero. Uh, so mountain range is yes, north is no. Mountain range it is. Right, that sounds good to me. Are we all right with that? Are yeah, you? I'm hoping we find a cave or something. I'm hoping we find animals. I agree, and hopefully wood too. Maybe a river to fish in. That would be great. Or birds flying around. Mm. You start to make your way, and for the sake of, for the sake of brevity, you uh, turn so angry. and leaving the tip of this monument. Who knows how long it will stand. Uh, you follow the cardinal direction that is east with perhaps a slight northerly uh, action just to, to, to course correct. Um, we'll have to simulate a number of days. But what I will say is over the next five days that it takes you to reach the mountain's edge, every morning the sun comes up over this mountain range. It is very difficult to see. You you wake up and you look and you're surrounded all by this white ice snow, this reflective quality being what it is. Looking up, down, left, right, unless you turn around and let your eyes relax, you very quickly find yourself uh, uh, tearing up. Then afternoon comes, evening, you enjoy a long, uh, short rest. And you continue on the next day again. Walking east in this space, it's challenging in the, in the morning hours to see where you're going. Like you almost have to close your eyes just to continue trudging along and then you have to open them and realize that, oh, you've 
walked a few feet away from the rest of the group. You have to course correct. Oh my gosh, oh, boy. this blinding being what it is. You're 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 feeling like this burning is happening in your eyes. All of you are sharing the same sensation. And there's a, a afternoon and evening where you can relax. It's hard to look at the fire. Um, even uh, you, you just, the, when the smoke hits your eyes, it's especially brutal. It's like uh, your eyes are being sun tanned by the uh, by the snow blindness by the by the very nature of the sunrise itself. And oh, on the morning of the third day, you realize that it's impossible to continue. It's it's uh it, it's so blinding that you 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 just want to keep your eyes shut. And the 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 rest and relaxation that comes from the afternoon and the night is no longer enough to handle this intensity and then you start to feel pain not just from the eyes that uh, where, where, where your eyes are bloodshot and, and 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 feel like they're bleeding and you keep checking and, and oh. looking around it, it's it's uh, you're struggling to even um, comprehend what's happening when you you get hit with this this burning sensation from one direction, this burning sensation from uh, another direction. We need everyone to roll for initiative. Oh my oh. god. Uh, also, before we do that, should we take wooden stuff out of our inventory or worry about that? Uh, if... What out of your inventory? Wood. Because we've been and traveling supplies. for three days. Yes, yes. You should take three days of uh, campfire out so of your has supplies any wood? and wood. three days worth of rations. I, I, I have half a, half a day. I've got two. So really, we only had enough wood then for, unless, unless. Or right. I, any wood? Uh, nope, no wood. So we had enough for two and a half Two and a half nights. Three. Three. So so enough for four. We did? No, we, not, not after no, the four or five No, because I used the bundle to make arrows. Hmm. So now we're out of so wood. So this day is, we'll only have one more day of food, of, of the fat at least. We're gonna have to very quickly, and I know that it's 1240, um, very quickly create a, a battle map. So if we can just clear the area That's and go. it's gonna be completely flat. All, all we literally need is somewhere for you to stand and engage with this thing. Just make like an arena. Be careful of the fire. Oh God, the ah. You can, uh, you here. Go. You can you can put that up. But oh, I'm gonna get these off here. Do we want to roll this up? Yeah. Yeah. Assuming that the ship is now sunk. It's sunk. It's dead. It's gone. Goodbye, for posterity. So long, more. Oh, I'm definitely keeping it for posterity. If we, if we want to cut it up and like put it and hang it somewhere, that could be really sexy. <laughs> Aspect you. Oh, hey. <laughs> yeah, does this work? Is that too small? Is that a good size? <laughs> ring? That's perfect. Perfect. Great. I mean, you can walk beyond the ring. Okay. So it's a flat plane. It's a, it's a flat yeah, plane in all directions. And we'll put this here. What the hell? What in the hell? Is that a snow monster? I hope not. Or I, I hope it is. I forgot what I rolled. I know what I rolled. I rolled pretty well. You want to well. just put me at the end of initiative because I don't remember what I rolled. <laughs> okay. That was higher than me. I'm sure it was because my initiative Mine was, was crazy. Four. Yeah. So I just Why is your initiative so crazy? Because I'm a ranger, but I'm also a Haragon. Oh. What do you add to your initiative? Um. Just just roll again. Feel free. It's called hair trigger. You add your proficiency bonus to oh, your initiative rolls. Oh, that's amazing. pretty good. I dare H A. You want me to roll again? Cool. That I will remember. All right. Let me roll for my own initiative. Ooh, it's a donkey. She's a rabbit folk. All right, um, 20 to 25 or 20 plus? 20. 20 for you, sir. Uh, 15 to 20? 16. 18. 10 to 15? 12. And Barnabas' tail here. Yeah. <laughs> 
and let's pump up the jam. I would say this is really the least, yeah. <laughs> the, the least appropriate battle music. Um, you're all surprised that this glare, this blinding light, this um, uh, uh, radiant uh, elemental, for lack of a word, uh, for lack of a better word, um, it has come upon you. What you thought was a natural phenomenon seems to be uh, actually made manifest in front of you and is stalking you. Uh, it will take a quick surprise attack. Which looks like, who's it near? I'm, I'm, we're using this now, so who's it near? Uh, Barnabas, Taishan, and uh, you are near. Ah, uh, Barnabas, let's go. Oh, fuck. Uh, 21 hit? Oh, uh, yeah, that'll hit. 95 and 9. Yeah. You take 14 points of radiant damage, oh, fuck. and you need to make a constitution saving throw. That's Jeez. not good. <laughs> that is uh, not good. Uh-oh. Uh, uh, 14. Uh, do that. Constant saving throw, you said? Mm hmm. This blinding beam, this ray, kind of like when you see the rays of sunshine come through the snow, um, hits you and you're struck by it. Uh, you can feel your, your flesh singed by Nine. not heat, but by light itself. Nine. Uh, and you are blinded. <laughs> I knew that was coming. Like, what is this thing? <laughs> and now we will begin at the top of the round. Scrim. Um, as a bonus action, I'm going to attempt to Hexblade Curse it. I channel this this inner magic that I have, that I feel innate, and and uh, try to, you know, uh, cast a, an orangey brand on it to see if I can uh, Hexblade Curse it. Okay. As a bonus action. And then if, it, if that works, I will... I don't uh, know how Hexblade Curse works, I mean, so it's just, mechanically it's do I need just, to make it's a just save? A, I just choose a creature. No, it's just I just oh, wanted... okay. I just didn't know if he might not. I might not be able to do it, right? You um, absolutely can. You find that there's there's something physical here, something that it, it's not just a magical entity. There 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 are parts to this thing. It's hard to look at. It's almost well blinding. Um, I I hex place curse. I I actually run through Barnabas's legs as he's like rearing back in in pain and blinding, and I swing the brutal blade at it and attempt to uh, make an attack and on it. Please do. Uh. Come on, big money. Oh boy, 11. Unfortunately, you swing through air and you're not even sure if you could have hit something that, that sucks. is uh, so intangible. Damn. Um, but you feel like you're on the right track. You're in here? Finally had a bad roll. Um, I will, ooh, jeez. Uh, I can't shillelagh. I will, um, what is this thing? And from my hand, I will, uh, cast Fairy Fire. So it'll look like sort of an Aurora Borealis, oh, multicolor flow, fun. and it will, uh, um, <laughs> it will, uh, kind of consume this thing. Hell yeah. And, uh, you know, in case there's anything invisible about it, it'll make it visible. It needs to make a deck saving throw. DC 15. It rolls a natural 16. So it passes. <clears throat> so nothing. And nothing happens. We'll be covering my eyes. Damn. You, you, put, you push out, and, and you, you just like you did with the invisible monster, you assume the fairy fire will almost, like, uh, create an outline of it, or a silhouette, or, or, or some shape like that, and the magic passes through, and... and is you, you've released the magical energy, but you're looking, and it's still just almost impossible to see through the, the space. It's uh, as blinding as it is. All right, it's my turn. Uh, it's its turn, and it's going to uh, take a crack at Scrim. Uh, 22. Yeah, that hits, unfortunately. I'm about to get smoked here. <laughs> <laughs> smoked. Whoa, rolls. Uh, 10 radiant damage to you, sir, and make a constitution saving throw. We'll do it. Uh, this is not an advantage because this is just a con saving throw. That's pretty good. Natural 16. Uh, so, uh, 20 total. 
Uh, you are not blinded. You are able to resist, Beautiful. and and you're seeing uh, through the tears of this. Uh, it's hard, but you are able to sort of look at the co- through the corner of your eye and and, and able to maintain uh, uh, action. However, one of these other beams strikes out, and uh, I'll say Barnabas again, which absolutely is going to hit. Uh, <laughs> That's going to be 10 points of radiant damage, ah! and you need to make an additional... You're already blind. I'm already blind. Though. Okay, so you, you you take the radiant damage. You can feel that you're being sizzled by this strange creature, uh, but you cannot see it anymore. You have completely closed your eyes. Uh, that being said, we're it's going to move in and uh, mm. stay there. Mm. Queenie, what do you got? I'm going to move to the side. Just one. Yeah. Ah! Excuse me, Frosty the Snow Jerk. You don't get to hit my friends. That's my job. Well, I don't hit him. That would be me. Anyway, whatever. And I'm going to fire off an arrow at him. Mm-hmm. That's what I'm going to do. Uh, for 26 to hit. That does Whoa. hit. Great. And because I hit, um, I'm going to open up my bees. And it is no action. I just get to do it on my turn. And they are going to do an additional 1d6 piercing damage nice. on this thing. Because bees. Bees. Um, oh, and for my bonus action, can I use my my honey pot? Remind me with that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what that's there for. Perfect. Thanks. I just forgot about it. Cause. Um, so actions. Thank you for remembering. I'm trying. I'm gonna turn this off, and I'm gonna turn this up. Ooh. Let us go. <laughs> 20 points of damage. Oh, wow. Okay. I rolled um, for my bees and my hunter's mark. I rolled max. That's a lot of damage. You fire forward, and the bees seem to be doing a lot of the work. The arrow passes through, but you can hear it crunch against something hard. Well, you feel like you're looking at just a... Uh, a flurry of snow or a, a whirlwind of snowflakes, but uh, you actually hear uh, uh, the crunch and your, your, your um, uh, arrow clearly hits something and then scatters off. The bees are, are definitely attacking something in this insane uh, uh, tornado of activity. Now you leave my friends alone. You skitter on out of here. You go back to wherever it is you came from. Taishan. Do I perceive that it was like hittable or that there was something there to actually attack? Physically? Absolutely. Okay. That's that's what <sighs> anyone who is no longer not blinded would perceive. Perfect. Uh, I will try and get behind these two. And I might take an opportunity attack. It was like in my all So he's now ten feet away, so he was five oh. feet away. He's out of range. He reaches out with his yeah. light. Yeah, I'll, I'll take it. Yeah. Well, I mean, twenty to hit. I'm okay. rolling like fire right now. I'm yes, sorry. You are. All right. Well, I mean, that would hit if I didn't have the ability to cast shield. Now it doesn't hit. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well. Uh, you you do this with one arm and shield emerges and uh, this blinding beam. You can actually physically see the light smash against this force field that you've produced out of magic, and then you continue on your way. Is it like a fiery okay. force field? Oh, yeah. yeah kind of like, it? I'll leap like back. Yeah, right. yeah, exactly. Oh, yeah, the yeah, flame yeah, goes yeah. up. Yeah. And, yeah. Oh, damn, that's cool. Thank you. <laughs> um, all right. Uh, I go over here, and I'd say um, to both Yornir and Barnabas, um, now, I know this doesn't seem like the time, but would the two of you like a cup of tea? And I'd offer you both tea. Oh my god. I, what, what, what? This is not the time! That's certainly the Marcus. time. Drink it. I'll grab it. Can I use my reaction? Thank you for the follow, Cadmus. Thank you. Welcome to the family. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I grab it if I can with my reaction and drink it. I don't know what is your objective? So here? I so it's just <laughs> just flavorful, but mechanically, I will spend two sorcery points to twin spell the second level spell Dragon's Breath, consume the pepper into the tea, give them the tea to give them both Dragon's Breath as a second level spell attack. 
I see what you're doing. Okay. That was, that was the longest con. That, that was, was so long game. Cool. That's you a know long walk. I mean? No, no, no. <laughs> I just want to make a judgment to allow them to accept the tea. Yeah. I Mechanically, didn't know, I didn't know all if I you were to do casting is like a touch spell on, on them. Do it, but okay. You made yeah. hot pepper drink. You, you hold tea. out. You, Holy shit! You hold out the hot pepper uh, uh, tea, Let's go. and with your reaction-free interaction of object, whatever, I don't care. You are able to. Pull the tea in, uh, you know, Dixie cup style into your into your mouth, <laughs> and you realize you realize how spicy this truly is. Holy and you shit! Start to sweat. Yeah. Uh, both of you enjoy the benefits of that spell. Well played. So you Sealed can cast, man. yeah. So you touch one willing creature and imbue it with the power to spew magical energy from its mouth. However, twin spell allows me to do it to two, um, provided it has one. Both of you have mouths. It's one for Jericho. Well um, cho choose acid, cold, fire, lightning, or poison, so to your discretion. Until the spell ends, the creature can use an action to exhale energy of the chosen type in a 15-foot cone. Each creature in that area must make a dex save throw, taking 3d6 of the chosen type Damn. on a failed save, or half as much on a successful one. Uh, uh, and it's dex 14 for your purposes. All right, thank you. Cone. I thank you. That's, wow. Well that's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, it's at con the conclusion of your turn. Uh, yeah, that would be, that's all I got. You're hit with this blinding, radiant, sizzling light, and, uh, it hurts, but you're still, uh, generous enough soul to offer <laughs> tea to your friends. Barnabas, you're up. Uh, after getting blinded, my anchor is on my back, uh, tied to me. I'm gonna, like... Well, is this something I can kill? Help me, my lover! And you'll hear this uh, horrible, sickening crack as I flush with seawater and I'm covered in barnacles. But for the first time, you're going to see a massive crab claw grow out of my, uh, my arm, transformed into a huge crab claw. And I'm just going to uh, try to snap into it. Damn! Uh, just blindly. Uh, and I'm going to recklessly attack, so that'll make both these attacks just straight. If both of them are just straight, yes. Natural 20. Let's go. And a 17. Uh, uh, Big money. Uh, 17 plus um, 6, so 23. Both of those hit. Uh, and I am going to, uh, so that's 3d6. Not bad. Uh, 3d6, that's 12, uh, 17, uh, uh, 17, 27. Uh, 32 points of uh, slashing damage? Yeah, slashing damage. You feel like you do a tremendous amount of damage to this creature as you uh, uh, you, you actually feel like you're you're grabbing stuff and pulling chunks out of something even though you, you're you, you, perhaps it's actually the fact that you are blind and no longer being scalded by this light uh, that is a benefit because it's almost a relaxing thing in comparison to the like tear-filled eyes that you that you had moments ago. Instead, you're just in the dark, grabbing at things with your claw. You do a significant amount of damage. However, as you snap at it, uh, it, it releases its magical radiant energy <laughs> uh, onto you. And oh, being fuck. in melee ra melee range, <laughs> you take uh, for both attacks a total of five radiant damage. Top of the round, Scrim. Uh, I'm gonna take another swing, the Brutal Blade. Hopefully this time not, uh, you know, sucks so much. Oh, 17? That hits. Oh, yeah. Let's go. Ooh, All right, free. so it'll be... You need a D4? Nope, I'm good, I got plenty of them. Uh, you, you pull your uh, your knife out of magical nowhere and... 3D4 slashing, it'll do an extra two damage because of the... The Coist? Hex Blades curse. Two, three, four, five, six, all twos. Uh, seven, eight, so seven, eight points of damage plus. Well, I think it's actually just 3d4. I don't know if I. Or do I add the four? I think the hex blade gives you a yeah, plus yeah, to yeah, your four. charisma, I think. Uh, it doesn't because seem. You, uh, so plus you, two. So add your dice, then add four, and then add two for the hex blade's curse. So it would be 12 total damage. Yeah. I'd well. cast hex on it for the extra two. Okay. That's hex blade's curse. You cast hex the spell. I don't have hex the spell. Oh, okay. Got it. It's not on my spell list. It should, should be. Yeah. I would I would have seen it. Yeah. Because yeah. I checked my spell list a million times. Anyway, twelve points of damage. You rush forward and you feel like an, an insane person stabbing into the air. But when you Something do, else. you hit. Uh, it's not an invisible creature, but you're you're stabbing into these 
flurry yeah. through snowflakes, yeah, you and him. you're feeling chunks oh, fall off, and at your no, feet, uh, uh, tiny thin too. bones are actually oh, landing at your feet as you are are pushing into the air. Actually, Interesting. You don't want to do anything with your rest of your turn? Yeah. Uh, I don't so want to move. I, um, I don't so think. Uh, no, I think I just want to like maybe move a little bit, but I I mean that's my whole turn. I don't. Your near. Um. So it's a bonus action to cast the thing. Dragon's breath is a bonus action. So I'll say this: this tongue of mine glows with an awesome power. <laughs> its loud roar tells me to defeat you. <laughs> <laughs> Take this, and I will. <laughs> I will <laughs> use my bonus action to uh, dragon's breath it with fire, right? Or can I choose? You can choose. I think. You, I think. For, oh yeah, yeah. Fire's one of them. So yeah. thematically, fire makes the most sense given mm-hmm. that it's a hot pepper, and I'm going to blow flame with this hot chili pepper magic. I'm getting some big Dalsim flame uh, Street Fighter Two action when you do this, and uh, fireball emerges. Uh, roll a hit. Oh, uh, it's a dex save. Oh, it's a dex save. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You told me yep. that. Um, dex fourteen. He fails. Save. He fails. Yep. Uh, so or she. You don't know. Six. All right. That was a G Gundam reference for <laughs> yeah, the it was. rest of you boomers. Domen Kashu. <clears throat> uh, how far away are you when you make this attack? Uh, I'm with I'm in melee range. Uh, eleven points of fire damage. Ooh. No, okay, it does not count, but it does do eleven points of fire damage. That's a lot. Yeah, that ain't bad. And that's only a bonus action, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's fucked up. So have your action. Zisa so crushed this <clears> one. Uh, this this thing's definitely looking uh like a creature more than um, a flurry of uh, unsuspecting radiant snowflakes now. It's starting to come apart. Uh, that being said... So I will use its... Do, wait, is it going to be on my turn? Please, please. Yep, it's still your turn. Okay. Uh, I will, um, seeing that it still has form, it's still hot for me, and I'm going to lean down and pick up some snow, and I'm going to uh, <laughs> cast hail on it. Forming a snowball in my hands, um, and then turning it kind of magical into like a, a, a puck of ice and just chucking it in the yeah. And that is a. AC uh, 16. 16? Boom! Crush it. Uh, so, Big I hit. I deal 1d8 bludgeoning damage. 7 bludgeoning damage. Nice! And it needs to make a con saving throw. DC 15. There's no way. That's right. It gets a ten, a uh, dirty ten. It is stunned until the nice. st- until oh, oh. the Save start money. of its next turn. Oh, oh unfortunate <laughs> lineup. Uh, Great play. Uh, unfortunate lineup. Yeah. Uh, you you whip this uh, uh, hailstone into the air and it lodges into something. Uh, it, it's being held up by a seemingly light. It's hard to see, and then it falls to the ground and the creature enjoys its full turn next. Uh, it's going to. Who's who's bluey? Is it still Barnabas? Barnabas this, this is the most blue. Your near. Your near this is, is Barnabas. Your near just chucked him with this a nice bolt. <laughs> That's true. That's true. All right, uh, Barnabas, we're going to town. Oh. Um, well, natural I, twenty. Oh my oh. god. <laughs> I think I'm dead. I think I, I'm down. I was wrong. Hex is in my spell list. I didn't take it because I can't cast it. I, mean, I have moved every time I cast it. So I didn't take it. I've taken spells that don't have material. Wow. Yeah. I'll probably take That's it later, ridiculous. but I can't take it. Uh, 15 take points it. of radiant damage. Oh my god. You gotta be close to dead. That can't I'm, be good. I have one hit he's point. Looking, he's looking rough. Ooh. On a scale of one to, uh, one to how many do I have? How many do I have? 45. Uh, I'm at a one. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you got fried for like 14, I'm 10. I'm smelling and like a long John Silver. <laughs> 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 I'm, the I, cheddar bay do biscuits not. are done. We've moved to the dessert round. And scrim, natural one. Wow. <laughs> you do not get to pick fun at Long John's. <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah. I the go, Gordon Fisherman is up for grabs, but not Long the John Gordon, Silver. I go to Gen Con for one reason and one reason only. Long John Silver. We get Long John, John Silver on the way. You don't have to go to Gen Con to get Long John Silver. Yes. 
Well, you didn't. No, no. but last this year. Oh yeah, we did. Because I got like oh, the nine-piece chicken box on the way home. Sorry, anyway, it's from Long John Silver, the fish. Yeah, what's restaurant? that? That's my turn. Um, yeah, I'm gonna fight <laughs> <Yep>. him. <laughs> and it was a combined KFC and Long John Silver. And she got the, I got a natural Long John one. Silver chicken. Uh, can I use a uh, twist? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Hell yeah. Twist. Just yeah, one. Kill this son of a bitch. Ooh, I'm gonna use two. Okay. I'm gonna make sure I get them. Well, you have to roll one, then the other. Why? Because it, the, the rules are roll one and then you have to choose whether or not you want to use the second one. Because you have to ultimately then use the second one if you choose not to use the first. Yeah, in Icebound we make wow. you commit the number of twists you're going to use. But you don't roll them both at the same time. You roll one and you say, is this number good enough? Well then why waste two twists? You have to decide both hand. Well then I'm right, only... So let's just use one twist. Let then I'm only going to use one twist. Yeah. Which doesn't make sense. Um, yeah, no, I fail. Whereas both so rolls were before were... Take shame. You got more tea? <laughs> no, the pot's fresh out. <laughs> um, I will, uh, I'll just try and shoot a firebolt over at him. Uh, uh, that's a natural one. I, I can only roll ones and sevens. One, one is when whenever any dice just lands and does <laughs> yeah. fucking nothing, it's always a natural one. Yeah. It's really, really can bizarre. Can I do the icebound rules? Can yeah. I see them? Barnabas, what do you got? Oh, uh, it was at the end of your last turn, make a constitution saving throw. Um, oh. Through blindness? 18. Oh, that's good. Uh, you are no longer blind. Oh. Uh, you got bonus action. I'm going to use my bonus action to, uh, as I... As I, I'll, I'll, I'll be able to see, I'm like, I still don't know what this is, but I feel like my tongue's doing the same thing, <laughs> and I'm going to breathe fire at it. Needs to make a dexterity saving throw for me. Uh, uh, I think it's, I think it's fifteen. Yep, it fails. Oh, uh, I'm going to. Uh, it, it's fourteen, if that matters. Oh, it fail. Oh, really? Fourteen. Okay. Uh, it? con. It rolled an. It, it got a dirty nine. That's dex, fine. dex, fourteen. You got a eleven. Uh, 3d6. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. I always do fire because it's a hot chili pepper. And yeah, that'll be uh, five points of fire damage. <laughs> <laughs> Feeling good? Okay. Feeling strong? And I'm going to be like... You're not on the edge of death. <laughs> <laughs> it's awesome power, is not going? And then, you, going then you go in with the clamps! I'm going to go with the clamps, and I'm going to do... Uh, did you uh, heal it all or you still one? I'm still one. Okay. I'm just, I'm gonna do uh, Reckless, that hits. That hits. So, two snippy snips. Mm -hmm. As I'm going with the claws, the clamps. Okay, not bad. Um, 11, 20, uh, uh, hold on. Wait, 11 uh, plus, uh, is 21, plus uh, 25 points of slashing damage. 25 points. We have a, a really interesting heads up situation because how do you want to do this? You also take radiant damage from being a melee attack. Um, so I, I want it to be it want to be a full seafood feast at Red Lobster. <laughs> just, just take me out. <laughs> just fuck my shit up, fam. I don't even right. know what that means. So <laughs> yeah, you do. <laughs> A torrential rain of cheddar biscuits. I wish I did. <laughs> yeah. I wish I that means. Oh no! Cheddar I'm saying that I will. Everywhere. I will be. I don't <laughs> know if if I just He's go like out killing gutted. him and He's I get just like wild. All of you are it. seeing. All of Steam. you are seeing Barnabas go in with this massive claw arm that you've never seen emerge from. It, it's 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 as though when he emerged from the the sea, he was a different person because he was had been gifted something by his lover, perhaps. This is a sea-like arm, and it is digging into the air and it's getting a little easier to see the the light and the radiance is, is diminishing and he's digging and digging and digging into it and then collapses as the not illusion but the 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 creature that that was floating here flying here uh, becomes no longer magically held together this lattice work suddenly breaks and just like ice uh it falls and crashes down to the ground bones uh these very very thin sheet like bones all collapse around some on top of Bar barnabo some around him uh 
but you can tell that he's not getting up. He's he's used all of himself in order to achieve this victory against this strange, radiant cessity. I'll immediately rush over to him. Same. Do, do you have any? Does he have any potions in his pack? I, I'm just asking you from a medicine. Oh, do you have the wings, by the way? Oh, I what do. do you, what do you have the? Those. He would not have the wings. He chose to manifest a claw and not the wings or oh, some other feature. At this I, um, I do oh. have a health potion in my, apparently, in my... Uh, really? Uh, I would lean down and I would uh, place my hand on, I you know, somewhere on his body <laughs> and it would glow with a uh, with sort of that bright blue. And you would feel kind of the warmth of a campfire as uh, 1d8... It, 1d8 plus my spell casting modifier... Oh, big money. 13, so max healing. Uh, 13 hit points. Oh, shit. Thank you. Can you only manifest one animal thing at a time? Yeah. Okay. That'd be pretty cool if I could be like... Is the claw still out, or does it drop the second you... The oh, the second I go down, then you'll see my... Because rage drops, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah if, you go, yeah. if you go unconscious, yeah. it drops. So my arm would be normal, and then you... <gasps> what happened? Are you all right? You are living. I need a smoke. <laughs> what was that creature? Is you, that, is it, you're looking all around, and he's surrounded by um, almost like mahjong tiles, like these uh, hardened crystals uh, that are opaque and milk-like, uh, that reflect light in an impossible way. Um, the, the, the translucent in one second, and then prismatic in the next, um, with these very thin uh, sort of cuts and engravings, uh, not engravings, um, uh, uh, slivers between them that allow you to see through if, if you so chose. There are dozens of these, uh, similar to bones with cracks and slits, uh, have fallen all around um, where you were hitting it and where the, the, the creature was ultimately felled. And thank you, Kara the One. Karza the One Whoa. for the raid. Whoa. 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 Thank you Whoa. so Whoa. much. Really appreciate it. We appreciate the follow, too, if you yeah. like Dungeons and & Dragons. And go give them a follow. Yeah, really go give them a follow. Yeah, please. show the love. You uh, see Barnabas turn, and you can hear the, the clinking of these um, uh, bony, crystallic pieces uh, that made up this strange, impossible, magical creature. Uh, uh, as he as he shifts and, and, and sits up and lights his pipe and uh, you find yourselves without threat. Is there like a body to this creature or were they just an amalgamation of these modern tiles? Uh, an elemental of uh, radiant light, blinding snow, indistinguishable from a uh, flurry or a uh, 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 tornado of uh, tiny ice particles a manifestation of snow blindness in many ways do we do we is it still like eye bleedingly bright out or is it we get the sense that all of that like horrible trek was from this thing it's still us? it's still bright out but uh with make an arcana check it's a one or seven you take your pick <laughs> 17! Oh, 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 yeah, 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 yeah. You called it! What the hell? You, you switched out! You, you did it! Holy shit! Thank you for that magic for the Wildcats. Soulbinder, Undead, and Karza. Thank you. Good luck! Good luck! Thank you. Welcome. It was written in the tea leaves. Yeah, it was 18. 18. With an 18. Uh... What was your question? I can't even remember. <laughs> yeah. we, got, we got raided, and all of a sudden, um, uh, it, it was uh, do, like, do we? Is it still like I bleed? Like before, you're like, oh, oh it's oh, like oh, your oh, eye oh, bleeding. Yeah. Like, do we get the sense that that was mainly the creature? Is it still like um, really you horrible? make the connection that this creature uh, feeds on people who are being susceptible? Or are, are, are being overcome by natural snow blindness. It shows up to finish the business of what is a natural phenomenon. When your cornea are literally getting burned from the sun because it's being hit by light in all directions for such an extended period of time, it'll predator uh, and, and eventually dissolve the, the creatures that it fought. This time it bit off too much that it, that, that, that it could chew, but you uh, definitely feel like, yeah, this, this creature 
showed up because we were being blinded. It's still bright out, but uh, it was an amplification, a magnification of that effect. Hmm. I'd like to collect some of the tiles. Yeah, I was going to ask how like how brittle they feel. Like, is it like glass or is it more like bone? Where it's it's like very much like bone. Okay. They they or crystal. They seem very sturdy. You don't think that you could break one just doing this. Um, cool. And they do have these uh, very thin slits in them, uh, as if you could makeshift them into uh, eyewear. Oh, oh, I see what you're going for. Scrim has no fucking clue, yeah. but I see what you're going for. All right. Yeah. Um, Are there ten of those? <laughs> what? Are there ten of the tiles? There, there are like tons, right? Oh. How many are there? Uh, I would say there are three or four dozen at least. You can make a couple Bayrans. Is that the <laughs> Yeah, Bayrans. Oh, Rain. Oh, Rain. <laughs> <laughs> There is like eyewear that has this. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm gonna collect a few. Um, Queenie, perhaps arrowheads, if you fashion them. Mm. Yeah, I don't really have the space to carry anything on me for now, but. I could carry. I could carry a lot. I've got extra space. And I'm out of wood. As could I. We're all out of wood, unfortunately. Be honest, yeah, if you don't arrows. mind taking some for me, I can use them eventually. I will collect two big handfuls, uh, so two slots, however many that would be. Um, I would do the same. Yeah, yep. whatever's left over. I mean, I would just you know pick up as much as we can. Okay, I, I would say much. I would say you could carry two per small per one uh, slot. Oh, two things per small slot. Yeah. Okay. Is there enough for? There's enough, well, I'm gonna take four then. Yeah, I mean, because if I'm just saying, like, if there's I'm not enough for us all well. to pick them all up, then I'll just let it all. Let no, there's be. plenty. There's if there's 30, two dozen, you know, yeah, twenty to thirty. Do I want to make it count against inventory? I think it's a meaningfully enough important artifact that I'm not going to make it an inventory slot. Now that I'm thinking about it out loud, and we've actually are like here, this isn't something. This is like your your undershirt. Like it's a pair of goggles. Like where you can just slip into any any crevice or what have you. Don't worry about it. You now have five pairs of goggles that will protect you from snow blindness and this predator moving forward should you wear them during bright conditions. I was more referring to the extra for Queenie's arrowheads. Oh, so pieces of, of arrows, whatever, yeah. the feathers or whatever she wants to use them for. She just doesn't have the space to carry them. Oh. So we were going to help out. So we for the purposes the of using them as goggles, what I said still remains. Okay. For the purposes of turning them into arrowheads... Do, do what you want. I, I would say that those would count against your inventory, and it would I'll be... I'll grab two big handfuls yeah. of yep. shards. It, so it would be what I, it would be for, what I yeah. ruled before I started having that revelation, because I want to make sure you keep these goggles on you. Okay. Thank um, you, Iggy Panda Cam, for the gifted sub. Hey, thank you, thank you. For three gifted subs. Thank you so much for this. Yeah, thank you so three much. Three gifted subs to Unbelievable. Tempest, Karza, and Thank Cats. you. Thank you oh, thank that's you. amazing. Thank you. Wow. So if You're I need so to grab nice. an extra dozen or so, let me know. I just don't know how many like total there are. I'm happy to. I have extra space. But it's only two. It's two per slot. So yeah. That two per slot. Okay. Yeah. I mean they're. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. Got it. <laughs> so yeah, I'll, I'm I'm gonna collect four. Yeah, me too. I have four. Two per slot. Well, I can pick up. Four. Eleven, twelve, if they exist, Tiles. and you'll use them all. I'm happy to take all twelve. I mean, I'm I'm okay right now. I have like 37 arrows. I could elemental too, bone arrows. I'd ra- yeah, right. It's just I'd like hell cool. Nine. You know what I mean? I'll take 12 then. And you then if you have to get rid of my arrow, an elemental is. bone arrow into like a dragon skull. <laughs> I'm gonna write down well, an not elemental dragon. bone arrow. It's my people. Yeah. But. Elemental bones, and I can always just ditch That's... what I don't use. Yeah, yeah, can, yeah, I'm thinking of like uh, radiant use. light arrows from Legend of Zelda. Oh, yeah. Ocarina of yeah. Time. Yeah. 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 Fuck yeah. The Let's light go. arrows. Yeah, yeah. So good. Um, we're also completely out of wood, though. It's like a part of this. Yeah. And we're out of food after. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's great because there's two more days before you reach the mountain. Oh. And that, well, I won't starve for at least another five. <laughs> Um, and that is where uh, we will start to conclude this session, is that you walk the rest of your, your day's travel after this encounter with this strange creature. You have an evening with perhaps a campfire. Yes? No? Maybe so? Well, we don't have any We don't have any wood. So unless we want to burn one of us. Oh, everyone needs to make a constitution saving throw. <laughs> I'll shoot fire blasts past everyone's face while we can stay awake. 
Thank you for the gifted sub, Karzai. Thank you for the gifted uh, sub, uh, RP. A natural 20, because I'm just on fire when I'm not yeah, attacking. Yeah, that's outrageous. Uh, uh, so I, have, I, I would like to, can I get a twist? You automatically yeah. succeed. Yeah. Oh, that's right. Just sitting. I'm, uh, I got the I got the okay. whole fish bowl. I failed. What are we what are we rolling? This is con? You should uh, yeah, you don't know we that. twist it? Con, no, yeah. I'm good. Okay. Fifteen. Con save. Con save. Natural twenty. I wow. Fail. What what's your number? Uh seven. Seven. You fail. You're the only creature of this party who after the walking and the cold and the I'm bitterness. Sorry, eight. It is uh the DC was ten. <laughs> Uh, you finally start so to can't. succumb to the weathering that you're experiencing each day. You're exhausted. Okay. Oh, but you would be as well, wouldn't you? From the, or is that not part of the the death? Or you never had to make a death save, so would it not be an issue? You never had to make a death save, but let me just double check. I didn't know if that. I can't remember That's if that was was exhausted was a part of the right? But I'm not oh. sure. No, oh, do we I, get exhaustions from I, death I don't saves? remember. No, no, I know that that's true in some brutal campaigns where just making the death save means that you wake up exhausted, but I know that not... the death save would roll over, but you didn't have to make any. Oh, yeah. So that's... That's not a thing. Okay. okay. So you're not exhausted. Uh, Queenie is, and you wake up the morning of the next day, again, having only enjoyed the benefits of a short rest. Jeez. So short rest. Yikes. Wow. Well, I might use some. I should probably. I'm gonna use all my dice. dice. I'm gonna use all my head dice. However you want to do it. I don't think I have that many. You only have three. Oh, that's even worse than I thought. Yeah, let's let me try at least use. And we're not regaining any of them. Right, right. But I I don't like. I don't want to. No, you might as well. I want to risk it. You know, 100 percent be a four. We're like half health here. After one hit. Okay, so that's a three plus four. Plus four is seven. Oh, not bad. So I'll use another one. You gotta remember what the dragon oh, said nice. to us is this land's not Seven like built for plus the weak. 11 yeah. is 18. So we're just getting preyed on in our weakest moments. Okay, alright, I'm good. I'm good, 18. Puts me back to full. So everyone will arrive. I guess as good as I can be. I just, I feel like I'm not getting any rest. I don't know why. I feel off. I'm okay. It's been a tough trek, though. We're out of everything. Yeah, it's going to be a little sparse, I guess. <laughs> so just the mountains. How far are we from the, the mountains? You look like it looks like you will reach the base of the mountains today. Are they forested? Any trees? They are not. Oh my god! <laughs> I I'm beginning to think we made a. Unfortunate coin flip. <laughs> make make an intelligence throw for me. Who me? Uh, Scrim. What? I'm re- I'm as dumb as a rock. <laughs> You're the idea guy. You are the idea. Uh, guy. okay. Well, I rolled a ten, so intelligence, like just straight intelligence, would be a eleven. You start to think about your time. It's in, not every read. <laughs> you start to think about your time in the bucket. Yep. Uh, uh, as watch, as lookout for this trek, this journey, as you were uh, in the ship, and you're like, how far have we traveled? How far north do we need to travel? Uh, starting to put together a picture of, like, it's been this hard, and it's only been six days. You were at sea for months. Two or three weeks you floated across along the coast of Drakkar going at a caravel ship's speed. It could be many hundreds of miles north before you reach the northwestern tip, the other side of this journey, maybe edging towards a thousand miles. And you've traveled 40, 50 miles of that journey. So this thought has just occurred to me. Yeah. <laughs> I uh, randomly just <laughs> blurt this out uh, at, at, to the rest of the group as if I'm going insane. <laughs> How do you deliver it? Um, you don't have to RP this. I, I, we're not going to RP this. For simplicity's <laughs> sake. I hate to break it to you. I don't know why I just had this thought, but we've traveled, what, 40, 50 miles? I think it's thousands of miles to go north. If there's no trees on this mountain, we might just die. We have to do something. We have to figure something out. I don't know why this, I'm thinking of this. Maybe it's 
my sudden realization of mortality. I'm slowly losing it. Hold it together, we will be fine. We can find food, we can find shelter. At least in the mountains, we can block ourselves from the wind. Tornier, can you please stop yelling at Scrim? He's having a really hard time. <laughs> Even the bottle comes <laughs> in time, you, know. you walk another few hours in silence, um, letting Scrim's words sort of rotate around in your mind, getting distracted by another thought or idea, and then coming back around to it again. Uh, when the imposing shape of these mountains um, seem to thrust upward from the the flat of this ice and into the into the sky, now even more intimidating than ever. And on the side of this first verticality that you you spy, there is a shape. Uh, not only does there seem to be a complete cairn in front of you, with additional runic information. But there appears to be a door the size of a house. A giant rim and on both sides what appeared to be columns but broken, slashed, crushed away. You can actually see a tremendous amount of rubble right there at the floor uh, uh, a face of what does in fact appear to be some sort of dragonborn like uh, uh, majestic face but cut in half, broken shattered on both sides of this broken face and then behind where this door would be it's not a door at all it's just an arch in the jagged cliff face of rock of this mountain slate and staring up at this it feels like another desperate dead end another place where hope can be lost where you can get no rest where you can get no food where you find no salvation it's looking grim and that is where we'll end tonight's session. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, Tune in next, next, next month when we all just died. I'm officially depressed. We all just yeah. died. Thanks for playing, oh, everybody. Oh, we're not done, though. Oh, well, oh, we're almost done. Oh, and we'll be done next oh, month. Yeah. <laughs> we're not done. I thought that boat had me, man. I thought the boat had to you, too. Yeah. Uh, like, to be honest, really I think we fucked up. Uh, so I just north. realized that I have augury now. Ooh. And I didn't realize that at the beginning of the session. Like when we were making the choice I would have done. Yeah. That. Oh, you could have prepped it. I could have like yeah, yeah, I could have I could have well, What does augury do? I, it's like wheel or well. I could have been like when yeah, sense if we go north. Of wheel like uh, potentially gives you like some a brief would feeling north about be good, yes or no. Yeah. yeah. Could be good and bad, or no answer. We, there's also a chance of no answer. Listen to a fucking Chloe coin flip. You can blame uh, Chad for that one. Welcome, Soulbinder. Uh, says loved it, guys. I'm going live for the night. Enjoyed the bit I was here for. Well, well enjoy. For Have a great stream. Oh, hey. Hey. Enjoy your stream. That's awesome. Uh, so, uh, some quick announcements before we cut over to Avengers Shell. Uh, what do we have? We are back with Edge of Midnight on Tuesday. 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 Yep. Then we'll be at PAX Unplugged the uh, next weekend, yeah. which is a, a tabletop convention in Philly. So if you're going to be there, come, come find say us. hi. We're yeah. going to do like a, an official meetup. Um, and then the following Saturday, we have Beneath Dark Wings, our monthly Saturday session where we play all day long. Yep. yep. Uh, join our Discord if you're new. We hang out there between sessions. There's a lot of fun chat. Uh, it's a lot of fun. Um, to catch up on all of our previous content, check out our YouTube channel. Uh, we have a Patreon where you can kind of join us and get a ton of cool exclusive rewards, some patron exclusive hangouts, and a bunch of other cool homebrew stuff. And uh, is that it? I think Sounds so. Sounds live. Yeah. We'll be back with this campaign next month, January 14th. 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 
Um, and so if you're going to head out, good night. We love you. But otherwise, stick around for Adventures in Show where we decompress and chat about the session. So yeah. we're going to cut it right now. Woo!